Black kids call me a cracker, white kids call me a beaner. Ain't lunch in school alone cause I didn't fit in with either. They told me that I can't rap, did you forget your ethnicity? But looking back from now, they couldn't see what God had planned for me. Let me get it, let me put it down. One time for anybody out there following their dreams. Anybody in the city we can do jobs so they can get to bigger, better things. You can't see that, I was at a quarter. Every day and night, go to every trick or right, go to every bit of main just to hit them with the bay. When I stick it to the people that told me that I couldn't, yeah. After all of the years, the young old people were found. I finally learned that it's okay that I'm not white or brown. And though the people looking sideways drive me crazy, you can't take my pride from me. I'm cool with the way God made me, yeah. But the way you react, I can tell that you hatred and tech. You call me dirty, uneducated, illegal, and fat. We're just taught to black lives matter. And I said Latinos do too. And they told me, check your white privilege, boy, this is not about you. We gonna make it. We gonna make it. I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it. Ooh, we gonna make it. Ooh, we gonna make it. God had it not by my side. Ain't no way that you can fade it. Listen, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 down. you, you, you can't hold me down. You can hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 down. You, you, you can't hold me down. Got grandpa that was German, got grandpa that's a Mexican, but don't you say that round and get correct we American. Family multicolored from the darker to the fairer skin, and though we share the same blood blows my mind, they still think less of him. They confess with the self-hate, got the shit for the wounds to the cut deep, so when other people say we got with that I ate, man it's our own hearts that are too weak, sick of federate flats in the back plate, feel like the tenth when I seen this week, man that's the type of thing that made me go crazy, uh, how can this be in America? Still get misidentified, some think that I speak Arabic Heard it all before, from cowl head down to a terrorist The butt of all your jokes, I got my hand up on a bomb trigger But sometimes it get brutal, boy, you just a stupid sin Your ignorance astounds me so much that I can't even get mad But then I think about my cousins who don't have the same privilege I have Like if things are this bad for me, how much worse is it than for them With no white side for them to lean on, gotta give it up to Jesus in the end We gonna make it gonna make it i kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it Ooh, we gonna make it god had it not by my side ain't no way that you can fade it listen you can't hold me down you can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 down. you 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 can't hold me down you can hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 down. you 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 can't hold me down I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah Switch up, never been a mix up Blessings in my hand, I don't wanna miss some Everybody eat, I be on your team Lions to grow weak, we you nothing's missing God, I let you surrender What I'm trying to prove You die for my freedom You ain't worried about nothing So I won't worry about nothing Yeah, 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 yeah I ain't gonna miss the things you got for me There's beauty in the mess you were hard to be Why I be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah I'm away If my faith ever frees up I know you'll be the flame Never would 
Welcome to the Birds of Prey Series 6 presented by the Goose House. I'm the one known as Veggie and joining me on this incredible day of Valorant is the one, the only, it's KaiCast. How are you my friend? I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. Really, really excited to get into this amazing Valorant that we're about to witness. Um, up next we have Rafe versus Kat Kluben. Uh, I believe I could pronounce that correctly. We've got two incredible teams. Yeah, Kat Kluben is an interesting name. I must be must be German uh, but yeah so we're having a uh, best of three guys to decide each map um, in this matchup uh, coming up we're gonna have Bind picked by Rafe, Fracture pit picked by Kat Kuban and Haven as the decider. Veggie looking at Rafe versus Kat Kuban on paper which team are you like favoring towards at the moment? I mean I've, I've, I've got to put my cards on the table I've, I'm, I'm a Rafe fan I'm just going to put my hands up in the air right now. I, I, I'm, I'm going to admit it. It's, it's potentially going to be Wraith that, that come through here. Um, but you never know. We are going to a best of three, like you said, where there's going to be well three different maps. Is that how best of threes works? If we get to that stage, as you said, Bind, Fracture and Haven. If we get to that third one, Haven's definitely going to be fun. I, I'm a big Haven fan as well, but excited yeah. to see what, what Wraith can bring through in Fracture. We know it's a very good map for them. Um, and Cat Club and someone I don't think either of us have really had the, the experience of seeing before, so we'll get to what, what are you expecting from them? I was looking at the ranks before we get access to all the uh, behind the scenes using production stuff, um, and I was looking at the ranks and it seems very, very even on paper. I'm expecting them to bring a lot of um, just spark really um coming out and just make a bit of aggression um in this matchup uh Rafe are an established team in the birds of prey um series we've been having uh they competed last uh series and they did very very well uh brought in a new player um amy one um who is ascendant three um and we all know ranks have gone down in valorant um as of the update so it is a bit annoying that you know you were once diamond two, like such myself, and you're going down to gold three. Uh, so the ranks at the moment, obviously, they're probably immortal sort of level. Um, so bringing in Amy one can really boost a wraith. So I think to combat that, Clap Kuban has to come out as the aggressors, has to cause a bit of upset here. Um, so yeah, yeah, nice. I'm, I'm expecting. I was. I'm expecting a lot from Wraith. Having Eco as their coach is someone that's definitely going to come in and make sure those fundamentals are right there with, with both kind of work with eco and projects before and you know the kind of depth of knowledge that they bring whether it's strats down to anti-strat so cat club and definitely going to have a challenge on their hands on that one but we'll, we'll get to see so for today if we, we move away from just this game it is three matches that we're going to be getting three best of threes and then when we go into day two tomorrow is when the the it comes to its climax of sorts, right? That's when everyone's going to be competing for those spots and contenders, which is ultimately what this for avoids you having to play in the Swiss formats of the, the grueling one to three, four days that, that happen through the contenders. So these teams have a lot to play for, right, Kai? If, if you're in a position yeah. you want to be coming out of this top level and making sure that you don't need to go through the Swiss contenders. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, the format is absolutely fantastic, um, as you highlighted. Um, from looking from previous uh, Birds of Prey, um, just the, my favourites at the moment for team compositions um, and team rosters is Ranked Demons. So they came second last in the Birds of Prey season five. Um, and the team that came first, AEX, uh, won at Nova, aren't actually playing in this series. So for me, Ranked Demons has got to be the favourites here. And also Proxima GG. They have the exact same roster as last uh, CZs. And for me, they performed really, really well. And I'm expecting them to go even further this time around. Uh, we do have a couple of substitutions in from other teams. Uh, for example, Mouse Plays are debuting uh, debuting two t uh, players such as uh, Catacombs and Maya Frags. Uh, we also have uh, in on the Mouse Plays team, Kays and Locke who are players to look out for, uh, Kays being the IGL for Mouse Plays and Locke being an absolutely exceptional fragger. Um, and, I mean, we keep on having uh, to highlight Wraith as well because, I mean, bringing in Amy One can only bolster their team. Echo mm -hmm. is a fantastic coach and analyst um, and Egg is an absolute... I'm just looking at the team lineup, I remember my notes. Egg is just a stand-up player that you've highlighted yourself, Edgy. You mm -hmm. know more about Wraith than I do. 
why are they so good? So I was going to say, you've literally just stolen all my notes. Yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so Wraith, Wraith is a fantastic, fantastic outfit that's on this one. Like you said, Egg is a phenomenal IGL. Um, and I'm, I'm expecting big things for, for those mid-play calls. Um, it's, it's, it's the tactics, right? I, I had the opportunity to sit one-on-one with Eco and understand exactly what goes through the, the team's mind. And throughout that whole interview, it was very much stressed on Egg has a lot of control and actually inputs a lot into how the match fits up. So they might have a set tactic to to take a main on Fracture, for example. But if like a couple things go differently, they're able to adapt, overcome, and then completely move into a different sort of game plan that they have. And they have that all broken down, much like you would expect most teams to be doing. But I feel like Wraith bring that extra level for it. But someone I'm looking forward to seeing as we go through as well and is control. As you mentioned, a really good team, recently picked up by Control, I should say, playing in Project Queens before and now looking to re-cement themselves. It's, it's someone that's definitely definitely on the lineup card. Yeah, so they're also playing with a sub, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and for me, one of their standout players is Bichu, who's just been a phenomenal mm-hmm. player throughout uh, their whole conception as a team. Uh, so for me, I highlight, just want to highlight that player. Um, and we're going into map bands, I believe. Yes, we are. So, perfect. Map selection, as we can see. Uh, Cat Klubin Band Ascent, Wraith Band Pearl, Cat Klubin Picked Bind, and Wraith Picked Fracture, Cat Klubin Band Split, Wraith Band Lotus, and then, as the result, Decider is on Haven. On all maps, we have uh, defenders are Cat Klubin for the first half, which means Wraith will be attacking every single map. What are your thoughts on this, Veggie? Well, I think if you're going in as defenders on every side of the map, You've, you've got to be confident in that as your strength, right? It's, it's something that if you want to openly be starting on this, you want to be building up so that when you go into attack, you've got as little work to do as possible. And especially when you know some teams are going to be very regimented and are able to adapt, that defence needs to be extra strong so that you don't allow little holes to appear in your defence and allow Wraith to pick through it. So Cat Club are going to have to do work to make sure that they just work as a full unit and don't allow gaps for that to be exploited. But on the side of Wraith, attacking first on every map, you want to use that to kind of destroy your opposition's mental, right? For when yeah. they go on to attack, that they're not already thinking through that and they don't have as much mental strength as you would like. And that, that makes it so much easier for you as a defender when it flips onto that side, that the attack mm. might not be as sturdy. What, what's, what's your take on the, the full defence side? Uh, being a defender is really hard, um, especially when you have a uh, Wraith who, as we you've highlighted very well, Egg is a very exceptional player at adapting to different situations. Uh, she can do exactly what she wants, when she wants. And for me, uh, Valorant is all about adaptation, just building up momentum with your team and to have that IGL um, leading your team going into the attacking side for all of these maps can help quite a lot. Haven, we know, is an attacking side of the map because there's three sites, suppose the defenders are uh, more, and yeah, your defence is less likely to hold. Fracture is a very, very interesting one. It pushes the defenders to be a bit more aggressive as you really do not want to get pinched on both um, sites. You sort of have to gain control of either a main, B main, arcade or dish and try and make a play on the defending side rather than let the um, attackers play you. On Bind, it's a difficult one because you've got chokehold points and because the map uh, changes, you have to um, focus a lot on the externalities or uh, extremities, sorry, I should rather say, of the map. So that's showers and that is also long where the teleportation is. Um, you really have to focus on those because those are the key areas, especially with the ultimate orbs. You can build momentum, you can snowball the map. Um, so for me, I want to see Wraith take these extremities on the attack and i want cat Klubin to try and t- offer a bit of resistance to uh Rayfair. yeah so let's let's narrow down just on to bind what is your what's your kind of takeaway what is your your, your advised compositions what or what are you expecting to see from both of these teams i i, I know one of your answers is going to be a, a guy with blue hair but we're going to try and avoid that for now kai before we, <laughs> we, before we delve into the the yoro lore that we are we're creating and fully adored by um because I, I feel like teams aren't fully accepting of that yeah and i understand we're we're forward thinkers we're path and trendsetters but not everyone's going to follow along that that yoro show so what, what are you expecting to see 
Well, not everyone's brave enough to embrace the Euro, as you mentioned. Uh, and what I do not want to see, we all know, is Reina. Um, I would be very, very surprised if either Rafe or Kat Gubin, both teams who are very focused on teamwork, um, pick Reina because it's just not an agent you can use in a team setting. Um, for me, Smokes, it's Omen on this map is very, very uh, powerful. Brim is always just a consistent choice. Um, he is just always there with his three smokes. They last absolutely forever. The stim could also work very nicely to gain a bit of a boost to get these extremities. Um, you could mix up with the Viper, but I think it's a lot weaker now on Bind. I think you either have to go with Omen or Brim. Um, I would, would like to see a Sky, the Flashes, mm -hmm. going into Hooker, the Dog as well, clearing showers, just gaining information for the defenders and the attackers. Clearing corners is just a must. Um, and then if we're looking at Sentinel, you could go towards a Sage. It's very heavily picked in ranked, mainly because of, of its ease, but I'd like to see a Cypher or a Kill drop. isn't available in this tournament so we're not going to be getting to see any deadlock plays not that many teams are probably going to be bringing in deadlock i feel that it's not going to disturb that meta too much but i think we'll likely see a lot of killjoy plays the, the turret gets you that information the nano swarm and alarm bot can can provide a lot especially on on your defense for both of these maps so yeah i pretty much agree with that but i, I want to see rain i want to see you get angry so i'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm down with that one player I would not mind being picked up here is actually Chamber. I think the uh, okay. alarm bot um, put in here, Spice, is actually really incredible. I think that just shuts down all opportunities of flanking. I also I love how Chamber can control uh, the extremities with the teleportation. If you have a good um, operator, um, then you just lock it down pretty much immediately unless uh, the other team is just outperforming and flowing with confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually wouldn't mind a chamber being picked here um, at all. Um, so yeah, that's okay. if that goes into the uh, ether and gets picked up by one of these two teams, I'll be quite surprised and actually quite okay. happy. So that's that's your wild card, your wild card yeah. to go with the chamber. Okay, yeah, I, I can see that. There's certainly, the, the individual TPs brought a lot of different plays to it. It's not as viable as it once was, but there's definitely maps that is viable on bind. I, I can see that working. I think predominantly you're going to see chamber on your. Uh, Lotus maps, um, but yeah. be interesting. Chamber is an agent that many teams fear for for very good reason, especially especially with that operator on the ultimate. For me, I'm expecting to see some jet. I think that's probably yeah. who everyone's going to be going with on that duelist. The the cloud burst, the, the sort of dashes is it, very effective. And if you've got a good jet, you can take away that that chamber need for the the operator player. Right, looking down sort of B main. Are standing in the tower so i think i think we'll get a lot of jet i think that's going to be the case on every map we play though right let's be yeah let's be fair um but let's let's start talking about fracture everyone's least favorite map it seems so, <laughs> although I, I, I do quite like fracture as well I, I won't lie but what's what's your favorite composition on this if you're are you talking someone like neon maybe for for julius um, I mean, Neon can be very, very useful, um, especially if you want to um, have a, a pinch onto site, uh, try and trap the defenders. Um, one player that's always got agents got to be picked is Brim. Ultimate, the smokes is a must. Um, Omen can't quite do it, just two smokes. You could put your Aster in um, if you need that with the Viper, but I think Brim is a must. Um, if we're in Duelist, if we're speaking about Neon, um, I think very, very popular. Um, if you're doing a bit of a alternate composition but i mean if we're talking about a mask we have to go with breach um yeah. and yeah jet or neil yeah of course and you, you often get your your skies and fades mixed in amongst that composition as well so there's much less a much less pick and the darts not really being as viable through a lot of the tight angles that comes through um but yeah neon i, I like neon and on fracture it's very much the wall can can be useful obviously we've seen that kind of come through from optic early doors and it's kind of been accepted by a lot more teams now right but i think teams are starting to adopt into how they can face up against the neon but i feel like, i feel like you need to have be like a movement king if you're <laughs> a movement queen even if you're playing on neon right it's very much like a, a very different game that you're playing compared to most duelists you need to be moving fast you need to be able to clear angles like really quickly and use your your sort of 
glides across the floor effectively, um, and as well as your stuns to combo up with teams. I think Ray's also someone that's going to be very useful if you combo that up with the Breach, like you said, um, stuns and then grenade combo. Everyone loves that, right? Everyone loves a, yeah. a combination kill. Well, unless you're on the receiving end. You're not, you're not having it then. Um, I've been on the receiving end with many like raised combinations with Fade, locking in, even with Deadlock nowadays with the uh, little trap and you're crouching down, you get hit by the raised nade. It is not fun. But as we look into this, we've got a hover on five Yoru's. I would <laughs> love if they played Yoru roulette. I would absolutely love it. Yeah, but I feel like this, Kevin, we've been in this, we've been in this situation before. It's very much just teasing of what what could be but never will be and you know Eco's just trying to get her hopes up here i i know for a fact that i slid in the dms earlier and was like yo you're going to be played and it was a resounding most likely no. not <laughs> <laughs> no veggie we're playing to win here uh definitely yoru oh they they're really uh teasing us here with the full reign of picks let's ignore what Ray are doing they're trying to uh throw me off my game uh, and head over to Cat Cuban instead. We've got a Viper and a Brim, and even a Chamber. We've got the Wild Kill pick that I want, and Egg is even hovering Chamber. So what are the thoughts on this veggie right now? Yeah, I like it. The nice nice lineup shift, like you said. We highlighted the, the sky for info gathering, especially around Main. You, you can flash that down, find out if someone's there really early doors. Brim, you were spot on, best controller on this map without doubt. And I mean, yeah, I mean, both teams picking up Chamber. It's a it's a match for match right now, playing the exact same agents. This is when it really comes down to who is the better team on the fundamentals, right? It's no longer about what agents you've picked. You're both settled in at the exact same thing. So it's now down to how the team is. You know what I absolutely love was really satisfying. All the agents match up one for one. There wasn't any like, discrepancies in where they were placed. It was the exact same placing in both of the team lineups. And I absolutely love that. That was Top 10 satisfying moments for TGH right there. Um, but we are, I'm completely surprised. No jet in both com in both comps. No, we've settled for the raise, so we're going to be seeing some some lovely satchel plays, which is always good, especially if you're going to be attacking on to be outside of hookah. You can just satchel back site, fast entry, make it worth it, and get that intel. But here we're going to, we're going to be starting off the game now. Two players setting up on A for Cat Clubbing and three over on B looking to sort of see what's going on there, whereas we've got a nice little default to start off this pistol round for Wraith. Yeah, looking like the chamber for Wraith here, going to tackle one of these extremities in showers and looking to more towards getting a B hit. Both teams stacking up towards B. Maybe they just know each other so well. They've got a very, very dangerous crossfire in Hooker here. Skyflash goes long, anticipated by Wraith, is hiding behind a box, not giving any information away, and Dinosa could cause so it gets into a trap right now going to get his head taken off gets one unable to get another one and it's traded out immediately by amy yep one for one trades but a little bit of space being taken up on a here but no call to rotate for cat club and just waiting knowing that it's not been fully sent down on b site and that spike is now starting to make its way up to long the timing could be everything here if cat club and pop round, they have the spike but one shot goes through and another one toe picking up two big kills and that's b site free but the site has now been attacked on a as the players start to move away but the sound has been made and the call is to stick to a yeah, they do not know that B is completely free, and she takes the head off Egg right there. The IGL goes down, the chamber goes down now in a 2 versus 2 situation. One person is on low HP for Wraith, take this TP over towards B. They got the, uh, they identify that B is free, now in a 1 versus 2. Clack Goomin have turned this around, Grim is on low HP, 25 HP, and a dream. Bomb does go down, going to try and reposition here, catch these plays out, smoke goes out, onto CT here. Yeah, it's going to be a slow retake, you have to imagine, for Cat Club and wait it out. But nope, they just decide to push through together. The shot's going, comboed from Toe, looking for more, but doesn't get it as Cheese picks up the final kill of the round, and it takes the pistol round 1-0. Yeah, one o two cat Cuban here. Rafe unfortunately not able to get a win, even though they had a man advantage at that point. Uh, but cheeky little TP from Chamber there. Uh, but they just did not identify that B was three. They decided that there must have been a B stack because there was no information on A whatsoever. No sounds, nothing giving over to Rafe and Cat Cuban played that to perfection there. Yeah, it was well played. Unfortunate that Rafe didn't decide to commit to B sort of 
early on after they picked up those kills, it would have been a, a free site, and they took the fight over onto A, which ultimately is where that one fell apart. The demise just committing to the fights that they didn't have to, but obviously information is king, and that's the information that they didn't have. But first shot is a, a danger shot from Rina there, managing to TP away as Denazia gets ready to satchel through, jumps over looking for a kill, but pushes away and now clears out lamps instead and some firing shots from bins takes down cheese and Rina's just gonna have to come away and wait for the team as they do start to come in and take bodies they do have a flank here with the viper and the vase does get caught out by the vase nade there a flank comes in missed shots now identify where this player is he's the lurk shall do not come out and the bomb hasn't even gone down brim is just tucking into a corner hoping to get a chance to kill someone hoping the chance to win this round for their team Unfortunately, they are giving absolutely nothing away. Cat Cuban playing this very, very well, taking space back, got the kills, and that's all they need. That's all they want right at this point in time. Yeah, Wraith just starting to play this one a little bit slower. Amy's going to go and meet up with their teammate, make sure you don't give any one versus ones, which is not the fights you want to be taking, especially when you've got such a big gun disadvantage. But the peak comes through, and it's a double peak. The swing as Toe and Amy start to think about coming in. The smokes go up, start to push through this, coming down, but Rina Sat gets the shot onto Amy, and now all down to toe, in a really hard place. Behind this smoke, Cat Clubbing ready to descend the chaos through, can anything happen? One kill comes through, looking for the next, the classic isn't enough to get the job done, as Amy picks up a 3k for the round, and a really solid start for Cat Clubbing here. This is just some classic Valorant, Cat Clubbing wins the pistol round, and just kind of Tidies it up very, very neatly um, in the second round there with the advanced weaponry. A lovely replay, a lovely shot with the Marshall. Um, little no scope. Uh, that's one of the advantages of Marshall, is just the accuracy of the no scope can play into the hands very well. Chamber looking like a little. Oh, not a TP up there. Um, <laughs> option to get insight. Yeah. I was excited about that. I was like, oh, they're going to try a uh, little sneaker, sneaky little thing. But opting is to do a B stack here. Chamber tucking into a corner. It has the TP there to enable a little getaway, but this push out long could prove a thorn in the side of Wraith, but they're just going to clean it up with one, unable to get anything else. Splash Skyflash is going to come out, but this is literally one for one right now, and Relina gets a headshot onto the Viper in on the A main. Yeah, catches out. The sort of flank that could have been in there and forces Cat Club to stay around on B as the ascent comes on to A. Knowing that there's less players on here, it's all down to Chamber in heaven, tagged up, spotted in that position. Plant finally down, which allows the rest of the team to come in. Clack Clubin upgrading onto the Vandal, the Flash at the ready to try and get any information on where these players could be, and obviously blind them completely if they push through. Arena deciding to take some steps. Bins gets one kill, but Cheese and Ninsky doubling up to keep this at two apiece now with Egg picking up on to Rina. It's just back and forth Kai. Egg picking up another one, looking for that last player. Cheese taps the spike. Can they find much? No, they find an early grave as Egg picks up the kill and Wraith on the board, but losing three of those Vandals. It's going to be difficult coming into this next round. Yeah, they really will not be happy with the amount of economy damage that just took hold there for Wraith. Um, unfortunately, they just yeah, three players died. Really, really nice play from Clack Cuban. Opting to play together. Um, even if you have advanced weapon, you can't aim at two places at once unless you have some insane spray uh, control. Um, and for me, that was just really, really nicely played. Just for Clack Cuban identifying that they're probably not going to win this round, but just instead choosing to put as much economic damage into the side of both as possible. Um, although we can still see that they, both teams have bought up all um, rifles here having a couple of light shields but i mean fanatic proven that light shields is not a necessary loss uh this satchel into uh showers not showers sorry lamps very very effective at clearing space and instead the extremities taken by that movement could prove difficulties in raid holding the site yeah and amy picks up one but doesn't have the info that there's another one there but has the foresight to look back and consider that there might be these nades going to come in and force rena back ever so slightly does a little bit of space damage more than any actual impact but that's what you need to do control where these players are able to push into but it's all going the way of cat clubbing here picking up some kills 
and this is a three versus two. The ult comes down onto Spike to try and stop the defuse. As Amy swings, he gets one, but the defuse is now coming in. They have to push out of the smoke, but the ult's going to be enough to stop them pushing through. And they get back on the board, 3-1, a brilliant answer back for Cat Clubbing. Really nice play from them. The, the fact that they, that they took showers the without any um, gunfights allowed them to take control and retake A site very, very effectively, forcing Wraith just to go back into A main and Lamps and just kind of like constricting the space that they took. And the post plant situation was not ideal. And Cat Clubbing identifying that and just playing that very, very nicely. And of course, the Brim Ultimate. Um, denying the push, um, or actually forcing players to push, and the team holding the smoke, just a really nice overall team play from Cat Cooper. Yeah, so if, if you're Wraith in this position, you're you're three one down. You've lost the pistol oh, and the uh, sort of anti eco after it. What is it? What is it you think maybe needs to to change after this sort of pistol round? What would you like to see them do instead? They've been going very fast. They've been committing to a site uh, a lot. They need to keep a bit more slow. And I mean, this. Uh, oh my gosh, so much utility. My headphones just completely died there with what was all I've going on. Spray down. I was expecting Clack Goobin just to have an absolute bloodbath um, and Ray just to completely fall there. But instead, the utility usage was absolutely perfect. They picked up a couple of rifles here. They got the bomb plant down, and that was the main objective for this round. They just needed to get the bomb plant down for their economy. Yeah, I mean, I've took, took three, well, two players down with them as well. Starting to look to get the weapon upgrades, and that's another one down, but Cheese cleans up at the end, and finally gets this one through. It's 4-1 now for Cat Clubin, but, I mean, a little bit better for Wraith. You start to see them get the plant down, like you said, in this sort of eco round that you're... That's, that's got to be your main objective, to, to get as much money back as possible, and obviously taking out some players, which stops Cat Clubin's economy starting to really build up. You see their going to struggle a little bit to full buy into this, but Reno is going to be using that tour de force instead of a Vandal, so I mean, take that as you will, right? Yeah, expecting to see some absolutely great things from Reno here with a tour de force, such an overpowered weapon. Uh, they do need, I think, just to get space over on the map, and that is exactly what they're doing, but this could prove so difficult as Cat Clubman are looking to get so much space here down A main, could force um, Amy um, into a difficult situation. The lineup's happening right now and not expecting it, but gets one. That's all that she can do, and that's all she needs to do. Get one, identify where these players are coming from, and give their team information. Yeah, it's a really big push, and Cat Club been making sure that they're set up for these trades so that if a player does go down, it's not for nothing and it's equaled up immediately. But still, three players left on A site. And nobody really here to, to prevent anything coming down on B. Denadia jumping in <laughs> to the grenades, but does get the heal back up just to shield the damage now as the plant comes in. And that's now going to force the rest of Cat Clubbing to start to send onto this. The dog coming in, trying to find out where everyone is. Pr Prowler's at the ready. He's been, takes out G's, one of the big players so far in this game. Flash comes in from the escape, gets one and does pick up the kill as well and Rina taking out bins. This is all going down very quickly. The flash is going to give you information that goes there as the defuse starts to be tapped. Can Egg stop this? Just one. Unfortunately, we're not yet able to get the second. TP's away. Taps him a bit. The bomb is going to be held here. Pose out fake and unfortunately Egg has the shots to that matters and that is now two on the board for Wraith. That is absolutely huge. For Wraith. You love to see that egg coming in clutch in a very big moment. The TP very close and narrow, but it done the trick. Just hiding, playing the peekaboo behind that little box is enough to get the job done as that smoke withers away at the perfect timing. And then Minsky just not able to hold it for long enough before Egg takes the head off. Absolutely fantastic play. I was, for a second, I thought that Egg had accidentally mucked up there and the TP wasn't going to come out as she expected, but just able to get away with her life there and play the time to perfection. It's Tim here, Dinister, waiting for the dog to clear the corner. We know the chamber has played before, so Rena's play and Rena's identification from Wraith to get that utility out, but Amy with the quick flank, the chamber teleport, uh, not teleport, the chamber trap is going to identify the... Uh, the flank, the sky is going to hold it with the uh, flash, and Amy on side of Wraith, able to pick up the first in this round, but Egg able to hold the flank, gets one, gets two, this IGL is putting in work for their team. Yeah, it was an absolute huge position, and it basically seals the round up, Cat Clubbing only left with Ninsky alive, has 
the Sheriff in hand, which we all know can do absolute works in the right player, but today is not that day as Amy finishes that one up. Five left alive, a flawless victory. Much more impressive from Wraith. This is what we were this is what we were hyping up at the start. We, we expected a lot from Wraith. And I mean I won't lie, we were a little bit disappointed at the start. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. A little bit disappointed with the slow <laughs> start, but but feeling their way into the game now, and that is exactly what's coming through. Have four ults at the ready as well. And that's that's gonna be huge. You've got the Vipers pit, you've got the showstopper. It's this this could be the turning point, Kai. Yeah, as, as much as we like to highlight the good stuff, we also do have to highlight the bad stuff. And we were a bit disappointed, but they have turned it around really, really nicely. The fake flash here from Pat Hoover allows him to take so much space. But Egg opening up the scoreboard for in this round. Look how much space Amy had taken. The dog AO identified two here. Ultimate comes out. Sky um, not able to get anything with the flash. And Dinister able to get uh, one kill onto Amy. Both race ults popped there. And unfortunately, only one was able to come to fruition. Maybe um, Amy was watching Ryan there play uh, using Ray's ult. Yep, the only show stopper right there was the end of Cat Clubbing is me and your mama having to hold down on to B. I don't think my mum would do a very good job of holding down this B site, but we'll have to see what this Brim player does. Gets one, but not able to get another as it's all now down to Cheese. Has had some very huge moments, but it's so low HP, you cannot imagine this going in any different way apart from a Wraith victory. But there's a possibility. Has the Vipers pit on and has two snake bites available if they were to Toxins use those and utilize them to prevent any pushes from different angles. But hits the tap, tries to force a bait push out, but the flash is ready and it does connect, but not able to get the shots on afterwards. Here's the first snake bite coming in to try and push one away. But Bins is set up beside that wall and takes cheese out and that is four apiece. Yeah, unfortunately, nothing doing there for Cap Kuban. Uh, four piece, as we said, Faith doing very, very well to get back into this game. Uh, they were, as we mentioned, were not doing well, and they've just taken up the speed. They've allowed um, uh, Cap Kuban to push and punish them for doing so. A lot of ultimates being invested into this round. The Brim ultimate in conjunction with the Rays ultimate was perfection for Ray, uh, Wraith. Identifying where the players are using the utility. I think they even stimmed the Sky Dog to get there a bit quicker and punish the players for pushing up Sands. And now as we look, we got a stack towards A, leaving the Viper alone on B. Yeah, it's an interesting one. This is what we, we've seen the last couple of times, but just not... Forcing through as much on A, letting the space be taken. Is Egg just creeping up into Shower's control, looking to see if there's any players there? And there is players sat, but very close together, waiting to trade with each other. You see Ninsky and me and your mama just holding tight, waiting for that trade to come through. Information is now given that Amy and Egg are here, but she's all alone with this judge. Has to be the executioner on this site if they want to prevent this. Yes, they do. The judge is such a powerful weapon um, in the hands of the right player. And um, especially with that Viper Ultimate, you could use it in conjunction with that. The right judge gets the headshot here, opens up the scoreboard uh, in this round. Raising pushes the Viper all the way back, allows uh, Denisha to take space here. Um, I'm just apologize if I'm saying that name wrong. Uh, one of the casters can't ever say the names right. Um, and as I say that, Raze takes the head off Cheese, but does take a bit of damage with him. Another judge in hand. Amy able to get killed with the judge, and that the other Amy shutting down the judge pace. Raze um, getting killed there. Oh, the flash. So unfortunate. Azuna starts to clean up here, looking for the next, but the reload comes in at the wrong time, and Toe is able to clean that one up and take this. And put Wraith in the lead for the first time on this series. And that, that was just chaotic and messy at the end. The flash yeah. was almost so unfortunate. And then the reload is just not the way you want it to happen. But Amy picking up a big double kill there and to thankfully staying alive for the team. Honestly, I was, I was just a bit lost in the source there. I was just looking at what was happening. So much going on in Wraith, as you mentioned. Able to get the round win and miss the chaos. Um, I love the setup at the moment. What they're doing really nicely is taking space, playing a bit slower, um, and not allowing Cat Cleveland to take the space that they want and contesting a bit more than they used to. Egg, obviously, the IGL has adapted, as we uh, mentioned in the pre-show of this uh, broadcast, uh, that Egg 
has the acceptability to adapt very well to what their opponents are doing, and they've showcased this very, very nicely. Yeah, continuing to play this sort of default side, not in allowing the rest of the teams to come through, but Egg is taken down with that operator from Nina, not allowing anything to come here. And just a lot of patient play here. No one fully wanting to come into any fights that they don't have to yet. Identifying that there's a few players still on B, knowing this setup from the early rounds that you've got the Sky and the Rays pushing on B long, holding down. But Rina sat here watching this angle with the operator, ready to pounce on anybody that may choose to challenge this angle. And it's not trial. one that you want to see. But those smokes shut that down effectively. The flash now coming in, just going to take more away. And Ganazia tries the double satchels again, but is going to be taken down and they have to look for more as the Seekers takes away their vision. A predictable play predicted by Rina and the operator punishes punishes very nicely. The flank comes out, nade comes out, so much utility being used, and unfortunately it looks like the kill's going in favour of remaining. Wraith right now, but now a one versus two. Can Amy one touch? Gets one, gets two, lovely oh. spray down, 4k on the board for Amy, and that is a sit down on the board for Wraith. Oh my days, Amy, that is huge to get that advantage. You want to be going in to your defence on a high. And I mean, what better way to do it than start to win the half, right? It was looking so abysmal and Amy's just so calm and collected there to pick up that 2k and see the round out. And the time out now being called. So what's what's been discussed, Guy? I'm going to go to you as an analyst. What, what, what What's been said in this situation? I think if you're clap you've got to say, right, guys, we're taking way too much space. They've adapted very nicely to what we've been doing. Uh, they've played a lot slower. So just keep on doing what you're doing. But just remember that <laughs> it's, it's a hard one because they've been doing really nicely. They've taken extremities. They've played utility very well. On the last um, round, they took a B uh, long very nicely with the Sky Dog race pushed out and the flank came through. Unfortunately, Amy with the Viper just shutting it down, really, with the shots. Um, I think there's a bit of miscommunication there. You've got to play the objective and not the kills for Clap Cuban. I think they're a bit too focused on the kills at the moment. We said we wanted them to be aggressive, but I think it's just a bit too aggressive at the moment, uh, especially with the Wraith that has come out to play today. Uh, so for me, I think they need to hold back a bit, play sight a lot more, and just hold the crossfires, especially with the explosiveness of this race um, from Wraith, um, Nazdia. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, hopefully that's right. Um, has been doing exceptionally well with the satchel. So I think you just have to play a bit back and anticipate that and punish them for being um, a bit uh, disjointed if they're using the satchels to get onto site and just get the man advantage. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the fact that Cat Clubin have gone back to this B pressure with the, the sky flash and the smoke's long if they choose to. They don't have this, this smoke on long this time, however, the flash is enough to get the intel and you see that follow-up flash coming in. And Rina not able to get the shot this time as Amy picks up the kill on to Chamber and that is huge as Egg capitalises on Cheese being tucked in as well. And that's going to open up some space, but Amy's here already to collect that Vandal and look for the fights. The smoke is going to be enough to stop the vision, but not going to fully stop anything. The dog coming in, it stuns up the flash as well as the maid to try and push out bins, which it does. Amy picks up three kills so far and the, the reload once again coming in, stopping at the 4k, but Denazdia is there to pick that one up and put Wraith into one and a half. And I'm going to stress once again that Cat Clubin need to, to finish this off strong. They need mm. to get this next round coming up. And you really, if you're Cat Clubin, want to be winning this map in this best of three series. Fracture is one of Wraith's best maps, hand down. And it's going to be very tough to get back into it if you let them start to run away with this. And yeah, as you had it, 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 Rafe was absolutely exceptional in Fracture. So yeah, as, again, as you, I'm just reiterating what you said there. <laughs> Clap could be really unique this round. 7-5 isn't a massive difference play. at all. Rina opting instead to go long here. Does get flashed here. The Viper Wall cuts off the angle and forces them to teleport back. The Operator has been identified. Rafe is still choosing to pu push this site though. A bit confusing, but look how much space Clap could have taken down a Chowers. What's yeah, so here? much knowledge gained from that that nobody is going to be pushing on A. They're going to start to head on to A main just to confirm that, but it allows sort of all the space to be denied on to B here, but the grenade now coming in still has the satchels to be used and chooses to drop on site instead. 
that's just forcing Cheese to take this running gun fights. It's not going to work for their advantage as Denazia picks up the first kill. Me and your mama trying to use the molly to deny anything, but the Viper's Pit finally committed in here. Been available for a while, but Amy doesn't need to use it when she's able to just take the heads off of everybody so cleanly. And Amy on Cat Club and not able to find Toe that time, but Ninsky looking to follow that one up. Pushing into Toe in that angle is not the one. Me and your mama now, Kai, can they be the difference maker? Potentially bomb fortune, the head is taken off the sky and now one versus five. This brim is left all alone and nothing is doing a flawless round coming out of wave, ending this half extremely strong. I think that was six rounds in a row. Um, if I'm not missing maybe even seven rounds in a row for Wraith. Just proving yes. Look at that green streak. Oh. That is that is the opposite of my rank games right now. That is <laughs> that is what you want to see if you're Wraith in this position. Full green. Looking strong and the momentum fully in their favour. The mental side has to be strong for them right now as well, right? Amy1 is absolute frag and the new pick for this roster. Showing what they can bring to the table and definitely a, a very valuable choice. A very, very valuable choice. Amy, just 17 kills. Uh, just, <laughs> it's absolutely mind-blowing, especially with a Viper. You'd be expecting, like... Your race be getting so many kills, but Viper to 17 kills and 9 deaths. Absolutely exceptional performance from them. Um, looking into this defensive side for Wraith, so let's see what is doing. A very similar setup um, that uh, Wraith had on the attack for Pat Kluben. And it, instead of opting to go over the tra uh, truck, they're opting to go straight towards Labs and kills going in favour of Wraith. The nade from Wraith here proving just so, so useful. Now in a 2 versus 4 situation, what can Pat Kluben do? Man, I didn't even see that nade getting used. That was a, a classic right-click battle that ends in race favour. Like you said, two versus four. It's really not looking too winnable, but both on full HP, but so are Wraith now coming in with that heal onto Tenazia and Ben's using the, the dog to try and get as much information. Identifies one position. Nade and Flash now available. That's going to give out more intel. It's Toll peaks and takes the brim and now she's all alone in this corner. Flash not classic now and falls to the grave as Wraith pick up the pistol and start to really extend this lead. Unfortunately for Clackie, it wasn't a 9-3 side, so the curse does not come into fruition here. It is looking like a very dominant display. I mean, this lamp's hold from uh, Denashia was absolutely incredible. The raise nade stopped the cavalry, if you could say, coming in clutch. Um, and assisting the raise uh, satchels. Um, so unfortunately, I mean, just absolutely incredible utility play. And of course, Amy just shutting it down as well. 18 kills now, only one, so maybe a slow bound for them, but still doing absolutely exceptionally well. Amy and the rest of Wraith looking towards uh, B long here, leaving two players on A. As I mentioned before in the pre-show, uh, the extremities of this map are so, so vital now with the changes that Riot came out with. It's a very interesting push into Shivers here, but it's going to catch Egg, but she manages to TP away and the stem coming in just to make sure Toe can get away as well. Smoke in, but now Sight clean inside, it looks for one, looks for two and finds it, but the grenade is enough to capitalise after the death. Trying to pick up that frenzy to make sure that there's some bullets, but Egg is still close, waiting for the push out. They know the players are there, they've seen them all. All the information has been taken and that allows for the call to come out for the rest of the team to join. And you've just got everyone waiting in the flank just in case they decide to reposition. Yeah, I mean, Amy once sh has shown us what she can do with an exceptional spray down and leaving her teammates to deal with the push onto A. Clark Cooper just hoping to get an overpeak from Wraith here, but they are too trained not to do so. They are playing this exceptionally well, left. not peeking unnecessary corners and just playing time. They've only got 24 seconds on the clock right now, and that's not enough to rotate, especially with the TP on the up uh, down the main. The nade comes out, the shot from Egg. This team play is absolutely exceptional. The flash comes out, no time, nothing doing, and unfortunately that will be the 10th round. Double digits now for Wraith. Yeah, they've really cemented themselves in. Maybe they just didn't have the best of warm-ups coming into this matchup, and you've seen that coming in at the start, but Wraith so dominant now, really living up to that hype that we had expected for them, and they've got a lot of weapon power and gun power able to take into this next round, which is going to be huge for Cat Clubbing. They need to be picking up this rifle round. If they don't, you have to feel like it's 
bind is just slipping away from them, right? But let's see what they can bring to it. Playing in to what looks to be set up to be a B push, but Wraith fully prepared for this with Brim raising Sky set round at this corner. The flash coming in to get until doesn't pick anything up and now starts to push down long. Amy one waiting for the peak round and the head is going to be taken from Ninsky. And damage done on to Amy as well. This is a bad start if you're in Cat Club and Shoes. Yeah, I mean, with Amy playing the way she is, there's really nothing that Cat Club can do to combat this. The assists and the teamwork uh, from Wraith have been absolutely exceptional. Uh, Egg is just holding down A side all by herself right now. That's all they need on A side, A -side apparently, oh, especially with the Chamber Headhunter gets one, gets two. These shots have been crisp. And now a man, double man, about oh, another headshot. She's. Playing with fire right now, and she is winning. He comes out, unfortunately, One finally shot down by Nikanja. Able to capitalize, able to get the trade. Heads get, get taken off. Trades coming left, right, center, and Clap Cuban have no one left in the map. And that will be the, the defuse for Wraith. This team is absolutely cracked, and you know what? They're scrambling at Cat Cluburn right now. They don't know what's going on. Fully being fried, and you have to say it's all down to Egg. I mean, yeah, Egg just on that absolute domination <laughs> in that van right there, holding up Ace, allowing the team to take so much space on B, saying, guys, look, go on to B, have some fun on B, have a bit of exploration, I'm going to lock down Ace Height for you guys, just using my abilities as my agent, and yeah, absolutely exceptional play from Egg. So, time out now being utilised by Cat Clubbing, identifying that things aren't going their way, they're one round away potentially from Wraith being on to match point and they I, I don't know it feels tough for them right now you feel like maybe hopes disappearing ever so slightly but you can never give up in this situation yes it's a best of three so if you lose this map listen dust it off and go again for Fracture but when you know that Fracture is so strong for Wraith maybe that's going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with but I feel like maybe they just need to commit to site a little bit faster They've been doing some slow, methodical sort of default pushes like we've seen from Wraith on their attacking half, but we've yet to see that full raw aggression of just full sending it onto the site, and that, that might be the difference maker. Yeah, potentially. With Amy playing the way she is, I just really do not see a way for Clack Cuban to dominate. I previously said it in the last uh, timeout, and it was highlighted uh, in chat there, just saying, Kai's discussion, If Amy, basically, if Amy won, he keep doing that, Wraith wins, and that is pretty much true as of right now. When a player is uh, just flowing with confidence, there's little you can do to shut down unless you all just stand there and just hold her and try and just in some way overpower her. But even then, her spray downs in this match have destroyed. been absolutely exceptional. Dog comes out here trying to take some space here, punishes the chamber, who's obviously not in set to TP away, but just holds angle, let the stun effect wear off, and they still got the space long. Yeah, you have to feel it. The TP is something you fully expect, but egg-wise enough to know it's not being pushed. They have their own player there to prevent anything happening, and now dodges the flash. The second flash ready to come in. Not connecting fully, and the TP has to come in now, but Rina is sat waiting on the TP and does take the head and collects that operator. And that's the start that Cat Club had wanted. Yes, they've lost one player, but they still have four alive. And the, sp the spike now planted, so it's in their favour. They have the tools to win this round up. No ultimates fully able to be utilised, but space and players set up to prevent this coming through here. And you feel that Benz is going to walk right around into the op shot. It does fall for it, but then as they are now, equalising that one back up. Ninsky pushed away. The grenade, the paint shells, just going to cause more space and deciding to opt to join with their teammate. Showstopper invested, double satch a lot. But nobody falling into it is toe. It picks up Rina as well. But the round is all but over. The time shouldn't be in their favour as me and your mama swings for one. Looks for the next. And does get it in the end as the round comes to an end. Cat Clubbing back on the board, but I've lost all five players. Uh, I mean, that was exceptionally close right there. Um, <coughs> sorry. Excuse me. Uh, very, very close. A couple of missed shots there. Unfortunately, not able to see the whole body of the Brim defusing there, but able to get the kill. Finally, it was going to be very, very close. That shot from Amy onto the other Amy. I mean, check the PC. And then Rina as well with the Guardian in hand. 
absolutely exceptional plays from these both of these players on both teams have been absolutely exceptional the shots other than that just little clip right there have been just perfect much better than what i could do much better than what many of us could do and that shot the crouch the peak the head oh my god that was absolute perfection right there yeah, egg just following with that operator in hand that's going to force the viper's bit to be invested on the b no op chamber able to hold that down now so just need to look for other ways to hold it but the tp now taken and invested over onto a site but there's players here waiting they know the viper's pit should be enough to hold players off and cheese is now identified by toe on this a site plant now coming down brim all invested to prevent the plant and that just opens up a little bit more time for Wraith to get into positions and try and counter this attack. There is a possibility that Kaxman does TP out here trying to get a big onto timing onto B. Amy with one onto Denasia shuts down the base. Standing. Amy gets three kills. The spray is an absolutely phenomenal but Amy the Viper what can she do here? Gets one, gets two, gets three. Oh, oh my god. Can she defuse in time? No. She identifies where the person is in hooker. Might get pinched here through CT. Can she play the timing? Can she get the kill? Spotted. Eight foots left in the Phantom. Forcing the player out hooker. But Brim is holding so well. Has that open hand as well. Amy. This is illegal. There is no way that this should be happening. Amy 1 is on an absolute warpath and does find the Brim. Gets the kill. And will have enough time to defuse. Someone call the police because... There has been a crime committed, an international war crime, and Amy... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, just flabbergasted right now. What? That was perfection in every inch of play from Amy. Patient in tube to allow the plant go to town, and then able to peek around and pick up the kills as nobody's going to be expecting it. And in the play, just to isolate both fights and not fall for a pinch. It's huge, and that puts Wraith on match point, and you have to be in... I mean, if I, I'm not a gambler, but if I was, you know you, you know who I'm going to put my money on on this you one right now, right? Play, let's play. I, I'm just absolutely flabbergasted right now. I'm shocked how... That's like, if that happened to me, like, I am... I would be so demoralised, like... That's absolutely unbelievable from Amy right there. She's on 25 kills. If you take two of the top players from Cat Club and added their kills combined, you're only just equaling Amy's kills total. Egg here with the um, quarter force in hand. Unfortunately, missed shots and gets punished by the Blaze Ultimate. Spray does come here from, at, from toe. Three on the board. Can it be an ace for them? A back to back ace for Wraith players. Could this be possible? Yeah, picking up the judge, knowing that they're playing close angles. They have spike control, so if anyone wants to push through it, they're going to have to take these fights into lamps. But it's not coming quite yet as Rina opted up here with the Tour de Force. And anyone picking up yet another kill, and it's all coming down to Rina in this big moment. Can they find the four players left alive? You'd have to fancy not to. As the positions are just too strong for me. They know where the spike is, they have the control and they're just patient. They don't need to take the fight, but they do take one, and then Bins peeks Defender around, gets win. the shots through the, the wall and able to pick that one up. 1-0 one on the series for Wraith, and I mean, Kai, you have to you have to praise how they started that one off. It was, they, they didn't do too well in the first couple of rounds, and then, I mean, just went on an absolute rampage, and I, I want to say destroyed, but I feel like that's a bit harsh, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, the scoreboard suggests that Wraith absolutely destroyed uh, Kat Klubin there. Uh, but I mean, each individual round, it was very, very close. It would have been an extra round if not for Amy just clutching mm -hmm. up multiple rounds, one after the other. She was, I mean, I don't think there's any dispute that she's our MVP of this match here. Um, she was on form, spray downs, clutches, 1v5s, nothing this woman could not do uh, to just boost their team and lead from the front there. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah, if it wasn't for Amy, it would have been a much closer game. Destroyed. <sighs> Unfortunately, as we, we kind of do have to say, it took over a 13-5 scoreline, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, unfortunately so from, for Kat Kubin there. Yep, but like you said, it was, although the scoreline doesn't fully reflect it, a lot of the rounds could have swung in that different favour.
And I mean, Cat Club would have to take the positives from that. They can't allow themselves to get too down in the dumps and make sure that when they go into this fracture, that it's a completely different map. It's, yes, it's the same team you're playing, but some fundamentals that you were doing were working out correctly. And unfortunately, like I said, the gunfights just weren't fully collecting. But I'm, I'm excited to see Fracture and I hope you are too. Yeah, I'm really excited to see Fracture. We've been picking up Wraith all day um, on this map. So excited to see what they can do. And I think we're going to cut to a short break and we'll see you guys shortly after. Switch on 
another bite Let them lick the ice cream out the supper time I might freeze them in the cold come winter time I might go ahead and go sleep them in the night Said I like it on my own, no wanna intertwine It's a little vibe Shawty switch on a baby like the season Quite a lick, now she married to the visa No zip, I just look in your opinion Sneakers, all the boys want a picture two, 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 four cars, I make rich look richer rich Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. I'm still Veggie. I'm still joined by Kai. We are getting set for map two of this first best of three here today on the Birds of Prey series six. And we're still with Wraith and Kat Klubin. We've just seen Wraith put on a very strong display once he got started on Bind. And now they'll be looking to take that into Fracture. Kai, talk to me. What are you expecting? 
I'm expecting a lot of aggressive players coming out of Thatcher. Defenders are forced to push out the uh, sites that they are often told to hold due to the fact that they just do not want to get pinched whatsoever on this map because the attacks can come from both sides and the defenders only coming from the CT side um, in the middle of the map. It is very, very hard to hold site if you are just sitting on site because you have to look at so many different angles and the sites are so so open um especially um yeah just especially when it's dish and uh, main you are looking at a very very difficult hold if you're just sat on site so i'm expecting the defenders to be very aggressive we saw on bind clap kuban cat kuban um were very aggressive on the extremities both teams were in fact in they're very proactive in taking space so i'm expecting a lot of aggressive players proactive players from both teams which should uh, give us a very very exciting game and yep. as we head into the agent selection, Veggie, which agents are you expecting to be picked here? Well, likely we have up, we, we have these breaches, which has been locked in. The Brem, as you highlighted on the, the start of the show, is a very good pick. Neon coming in also highlighted this. I, I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if we do see a Yoro coming through. I, I don't think we will, but it's a very valuable pick. We've seen teams like Navi start to try and play through and not have so much success, but it's definitely something that, if utilised correctly, can be can be done. And I mean, I'm living proof of that as a Silver 2 player, that <laughs> Yoru can be very much played on Fracture. But bringing it back to more serious note, Cat Clubin bringing in here on the Killjoy, which is a very common pick for your Sentinel on this map. I'm expecting to see Egg play that for Wraith. You've got the Neon for the walls, your Brimstone as we highlighted, the Controller, and Kale coming in as your sort of initiator and flasher that's going to be able to, to shut the enemy team's Killjoy down and make sure that when you enter on site, you have the flashes if you combine especially with Cheesy's flashes that they brought to the table. A very similar comp from Wraith. The only difference is Dinasia opting to use the Rays instead of the Neon. They popped Choose off with the Rays agent. which here to use this was absolutely exceptional. The Satchel plays, uh, we saw they must have got some lineups. They must have practiced that Satchel over Tank on Bind. So I'm sure they've got some lineups for the Satchels on Fracture here, especially coming from Dish where you're already elevated um, up on from site. Um, it allows the Satchel players to come out and very, very effective usage um, with the Satchel players. Rafe, I am expecting some absolutely fantastic players. Echo, the coach, is an absolutely fantastic individual. Very, very clever. And, I mean, the strategies coming out from both teams should lend to an exciting matchup. Yeah, we've, we've seen Fracture quite a lot from Wraith before. So I feel like if you're cat clubbing on this, you're going to be, or you should be well prepared coming into this matchup and knowing fully what to expect. And I'm interested to see if this lineup that they've picked is fully to counteract that. Like we've, we've highlighted the, the Neon that can bring a lot of aggressive pace and really change up things whenever they want. You know, those dashes and the rapid feet that you can get on that can really allow, allow for a fast rotate. So definitely one to watch for Amy over there. But meanwhile, I've seen Egg cook up absolute storms on this map. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm expecting once again. I'm expecting a big performance from Egg here, just controlling exactly how the game is going to be played out. As Wraith start this attack up, we're already seeing Egg sitting on the opposite side of spawn, and the rest of the players just feeling this out to see where the first so a line of attack from these defenders, so to speak, is going to come, and it's going to be in this A main choke point. You see the rapid use of abilities to try and get any information and stop anybody pushing up close. Utility going back and forth, Flash comes out, the trades are coming out as well, shots going left, right, centre, the aftershot coming into fruition there, giving Wraith a disadvantage on the uh, man of the uh, Gat Kuban gets a man advantage due to the aftershot there, lovely hold, the kill the turret putting in a lot of damage into Egg there, now with 89 HP, Smokes comes out, allows Wraith to get on site, allows him to push through very silently then, They're going through this whole site very cautiously, just checking all the corners, the Neon Nano Swarms able to do a bit of chip damage here. Amy with the quick bank as well. Bomb plant finally coming Fire down. Planted. And this is a really tight pinch up here that Cat Club and have on to Wraith. Egg is tucked in this little corner, but you have to feel it's going to be checked. Go, 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 go. And it is Enemy by right. everyone in the team. And it's Amy that picks up the kill. The dash is on to say and picks up Toe to pick the defuse up through as well. 1 0. It's the, the same start that we've seen on to Bind. And Cat Club would have to be feeling good with that. They, they lost so many in a row previously. Coming in, mental reset, new map, start afresh, and really implement how they want to be playing this. I mean, they've obviously done their homework here. The aftershock, the breach stuns, a very classic player, I must say. But Amy with the neon 
are just absolutely phenomenal players. Shots are hitting right now. Headshots only. Um, now they can buy up obviously within Valorant if you win the first round you do get a bit of a bit of a boost uh, if you win a round you get more money than the losing team and that allows them to buy spectres and full shields and um, we will be heading into a tech pause here it isn't a Valorant uh, broadcast if there isn't at least one tech issue um, so yeah Veggie looking into this first round it's not much to go on how would you address the second round if you were Rafe? Well I'd like you say it's, it's only a pistol so there's not too much analytical kind of work mm. to be done on it. It was very much a play out and see how the rest of it's going. I think for this matchup, we're going to see very similar to how Bain played out. Wraith will be playing it patient and trying to allow Egg to understand how Cat Clubin are going to approach the map. And then once they get that understanding, is exactly how you see the game flip on its head previously. It was just a, a moment of figuring out what Cat Clubin are bringing, what, what they're sort of tactics are so to speak and then what they can do to, to challenge that so I think this round for Wraith you're expecting not a lot you're just wanting them to feel out the opposition once again understand what's going to be happening on their defense and just use this as a full throwaway information gather and then play that in especially into your next buy up round on the next with the neon pick coming out of Kat Klubin here you're Kind of expecting a lot of fast players, a lot of push, especially because it's fractured. You're pushing out with your defenders. Again, reiterating myself here, you just do not want to get pinched whatsoever. Um, so, would it be efficient for Rafe, because on bind, especially when they held back, allowed Cat Cooper to get space, and then we took it with utility? A uh, round that comes to mind is when they use the Brim and Ray's ultimate to get control of stands, punishing the two players for pushing that area. Would it be useful for Rave to, instead of doing a very, very fast attack in what they did in the pistol round, to hold back a bit, let the Neon push and punish the um, speed gap um, and punish the Neon for pushing out and able to get the mana advantage and then in the late, later stages of the round, um, use the mana advantage to their um, benefit. Yeah, I think that's definitely a viable option. I think if you're aiming on this Neon, you, you need to balance that aggression quite well as a as you, you highlighted, Fracture is very much a map where you want to take as much space away from the attackers as possible because otherwise you're just going to get caught in these choke points, so to speak. So you do need to be challenging those points. But with Neon, like yes, you have your wall and your pace to get away from fights, but you're kind of trapped. Like, you don't have a lot of abilities that help you in those situations, right? Apart from like, your concussed, you don't, you're not able to stall as much as possible. You have to be sort of stimming it up with other players. So I feel like Amy not going to be fully aggressive onto all these sites. We'll be using that for fast rotates. So Wraith could easily just counteract that, like you said, by sitting back, allowing the push to come through. And that, that might be what, what they do. And that's probably what I'd do for the first couple of rounds. Wait and see if that push comes through. And then just take take the head off and, like you said, play with that agent advantage. Um, looking at the current setup right now, we have Killjoy alone up onto that sort of like dish arcade area. Um, obviously, in this map, it's a very, diff very, very different to what any of the other maps on uh, Valentar. You've got the defender spawning in the middle, the attackers able to go onto um, up or down on the map um, from the main map viewpoint. Um, they've got this sort of fanatic setup where they just left Alpha Air, aka Egg here, by themselves on this dish arcade area. Um, and it proved very, very effective as it allowed the control space because Killjoy can control so much space with their utility. Um, how would you combat this if you're Captain ca Cuban? Oh, that's a good question. And this is probably why I'm not a pro player. Um, <laughs> I think, listen, you, you know there's going to be pinches coming in from both sides. And if mm. you start to identify that Egg's playing alone on that other side for quite an extensive period of time, it, it very much would be worth pushing out of A and B from Dish and be sort of dice respectively to, to just get that clutch up and then you take that one player out and once again you're then coming back down to, to ha having an agent advantage where you spoke about Wraith maybe playing it slow to take that one the pace could actually work in Cat Clubin's favour if they mm. aggress and take that player out and start to identify that Egg is sort of alone and doesn't have too much to do but like you said the turret available to give info on where that push comes from as well as the nano swarms and alarm bot, but that shouldn't really be utilised right at the start. It's mostly going to be the turret just to make sure that her back is covered and she's not going to get backstabbed. Yeah, uh, it's, as we said here, the neon has to be very, very careful because you can get 
punished very, very effectively if you're going into the wrong side. Um, obviously, you do not know uh, where the attackers are positioned, so coming into the team uh, play where you can have a bit of information from outside the KO knife very, very effective at identifying where players are and shutting down the use of their abilities, um, enabling to kill them a bit more effectively and giving your team a bit of an advantage uh, when coming into the duels. So a bit of a team play could come into this. Um, I'm hoping so because obviously Valorant is a very heavy team-based game. And for Kat Kluben to claw back to do the reverse sweep or um, get back into these series, they do need to be a bit more team play and play together. I've now, got a big question we... for you, Kai. Go first, go before it. you continue, I've got a big question. Okay. How do you when when you're having breakfast? If you if you're eating eggs, <laughs> what 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 are you having? Well, what's your what's your go to? I, I'm I... A, I'll, I like scrambled eggs. All right, so it depends. What, so I will have like if if I find a meal I like, I'll just have it non-stop until I stop having it, until I stop liking it. But it just make myself so sick of eating the same thing. I just just hate it after that. So I used to have these breakfast burritos where it was like scrambled eggs in a wrap with sausages, bacon, um, and basically just fill them up with cheese and stuff. So it was like high, high calorie stuff. And that was absolutely bliss. Absolutely loved that. I'm a fan of all eggs other than poached. Don't know why. Oh, okay. Just never really... I like poached egg. I quite like a poached really? egg. Yeah, I used to have a toaster that poached eggs and made toast at the same time. It was... It was probably oh, the peak, peak of my life, to be honest. I won't lie. <laughs> it, it was great. You could just put the two slices of toast in. You you put the little. It was it was a frying pan, I suppose, but it, it poached them more than actually frying them. It was like done with water rather than anything else. Oh. It, was, it was honestly fantastic. If you're if you're into toasting eggs, I would definitely recommend <laughs> looking at that. I'm not going to say the brand or anything because we're not sponsored by them, but it's 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 worth a look out. You know these these little kitchen contraptions that can make your life. Ever so slightly, especially when it comes to to cooking eggs. I mean, have you seen the chopper thing uh, from the ads? Like, because when you're cutting onions, obviously, a you cry um, because of the onions, obviously, and it's just so difficult to do the last bit. So, like the chopper um, from those old ad campaigns on TVs was actually actually really useful. I um, <laughs> absolutely love it. Um, so, definitely recommend getting one of those. But obviously, I don't want to name a brand because I, mean, I you know sponsorships give us money first. Um, if we're going to yeah, sponsor we'll, a brand here. We will sell out, but not, not today. <laughs> eventually, eventually, we will sell out. <laughs> uh, but guys, if you are wondering if you can get involved with these sort of competitions, head over to the Goose House Discord. We do run customs, we run weekly skirmishes, so even if you do not have a team, you can play in a weekly skirmish and your game might get casted. So if you have a really sick play, you can get and that's from cast um, by one of our insanely talented people, not myself included in that one. Um, so, yeah, if you want a clip, and oh, heading back into the game, finally, let's go. Uh, but yeah, make sure you do join the Discord if you want to get involved with the community. Heading into the second round after the P10, hoping a bit more of a aggressive gunfight right now, but very, very passive from both teams. Nothing giving towards the defense, and nothing giving towards the attackers right now. Yep. You've had a long time to wait here, so they're going to be extra patient and deny us any fun, fast-paced attacks on this round at least. But teams just thinking about what they can do. You see all five players sat up by dice on B here. Collecting the orbs, start to farm them up and then make their way back across the A. And you have to feel that this is going to be a priority and it's not something that we've really spoke about a lot is prioritising what ults you get online. There is four orbs available on the map, so it's wise to sort of play for as many of them as possible and get whatever you can online you know if you can get that rolling thunder online as much as possible then by all means do it if you can get the lockdown which is where a lot of teams prioritize then perfect but as we're seeing wraith very much trying to focus on getting that rolling thunder on so they can clear the site and you'd have to anticipate the satchel on afterwards and there's the satchels coming in taking top control of the plant coming in interesting plant spot as well Denazia up top now that's going to leave the rest of them sat on this just waiting and you have to imagine that they have an interesting plan to take this one out and Dynastia does take out Amy and picks up a Spectre with that but the Diffuse is starting to come in and this is where we start to see what Wraith have cooking to try and deny the Diffuse. Trying to deny the Diffuse, Nanoswarm comes out, Stun comes out, so much utility being invested in this round by Wraith here, another Nanoswarm as well denying the Diffuse. 
just further. Time is ticking down, but there is enough. They have halved it. The Molotov comes out, but they are going to hold it, and they are going to get the six man win just about. Unfortunately for Wraith there, the timing was just not quite there, and the spray down, the kills not going in Wraith's favor as well. So the economy firmly towards Cat Klubin right now. Yeah, I really like that kind of cheeky. It's, it's almost like the perfect play on a on an eco, right? You you invest one player onto site and then almost all four just sit back and play lineups. It's like the ultimate nerd's fantasy of how to play Valorant. Just sit back, look at a pixel and hit the timing. And unfortunately for Wraith, the timing on here. the Brim Molly is just not going to be right this time. And it does see the round fall. But it's a good start. Here's that pace we were talking that could come in from Neon to try and push Egg away. And that's exactly what it does. But in doing so, A has been fully relinquished and control what could be theirs if Wraith decide to push on this faster. And here they do the shots coming in, trying to determine on the smoke, but not going to be connecting as Toe gets that plant down now as well. Wraith do do their due diligence. A uh, bit of a tongue twister that one there. Uh, but because of the fact that there was so much pressure towards the dish arcade area, uh, they had to still check the corners and um, even though there was so much pressure. Kills going left, right, center, Wraith with a lovely spray down with Egg getting two kills, Amy getting one, maintaining the momentum she's had. Neon dashing onto site but gets shut down by Toe there. A classic in hand for Cheese, nothing doing. Aftershot push, pushes them out into the open, drops down here, gets stunned up and gets their head taken off. Only one fatality on the board for Wraith in that round, and that is the first round for Wraith. Yeah, that was very well played, and it really comes down to how the previous round that was executed. You know, you got the plant, you got some weapons taken away, and it shuts down what Cat Clubbing can do on that first buy in round because they don't have the weapons to take it. You've seen Breach left all alone with a classic, and in a one versus four in a classic, you really aren't going to be, if you're not going to be able to do much, let's be fair, unless. Unless you utilise those right clicks in the one versus one fights, then maybe something, but not on this occasion, not today, and not in that fight. And Wraith starting to get their way back into this. Could have had a little bit more success on the anti eco but now we start to see what they can do is they commit almost everyone across the A, just leaving Egg here to luck over on the back of me. Flash comes out, Wraith's satchel on top of sight. So much damage onto Amy here, left on 37 HP. Just walking straight through all of that killjoy utility here and Cat Kuvin opting now just to play retake, play a bit more passive and that goes into the hands of one, two kills for uh, Cat Kuvin, trades back and forth but man advantage right now, Wraith has the players they want in this post part situation, they have the killjoy and they have the brim, brim with ultimate right now, going to choose to use it killjoy on a massive massive flank. Yeah, that's going to get one, one down. Remaining. Pushes back a little bit more of the eye and Egg picking up a kill as well. And it's all down to Rina on this killjoy. The time is not in their favour at all. Has to push through. The toe stands strong and ties this game up. It's two apiece and Wraith bringing the heat to the table. Bringing the heat, especially with the Brim Ultimate there. Just frying the KO on site. Absolutely nowhere to go other than heaven there. Um, so yeah, really, really nice play. I love the aggression and the plays together with Cat Klubin. They were really, really proactive on this beam. Aim. They're going to do it again. They've got the setup uh, with the breach, the KO, and the neon KO. Obviously, with the knife uh, nullifies the opponent's utilities. Breach stuns them up, and neon just obviously can spray them down, take advantage of the dash, um, and it looks like they're doing the exact same thing, hopping the ultimate as well. But this KO knife takes away the ultimate. And Amy now left in a precarious situation. KO. Holding this angle right now, trying to take space on B main, able to get this corner hold, one, get two, Stinger doing absolute work and Toe able to get the trade here, Amy gets a kill onto Bins, now Wraith in a precarious situation, 3 versus 2 situation, Grim does not have the ultimate to play with. Yeah, and Evando being picked up here from Amy as well, this ult really proving it's worth the plan, not able to get down, trying to stick it, but Amy finally picks up that kill onto Toe, Answers back to take out Egg as well, and Cat Clubbin answer back and get themselves once again in the lead. 3 2 to them, and it was a really good response from them, Kai. That's, you have to feel like sometimes maybe the mental maybe slipped away from them. I'm not saying it did in the previous map, but definitely answered back here and shown what they have to make for it. Everyone needs a warm up, warm up map. Everyone just needs that one map to get into the flow of Valorant. Realize, right, brain turn on, we're playing Valorant, this is the time. 
for me to lose ELO, but for these exceptional players to win and compete in this incredible tournament. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's a bit of a warm up match, a bit of sound glitch there, but all good. Um, now, this push out, very, very slow push, uh, changing the pace right now, and Egg punishes that, gets kill, gets out, plays alive, exceptional heads up play from them. Yeah, it gets away with the life as Amy flicks around trying to catch that one, but not going to be wise to it this time as now this A hit comes in. But Killjoy set up the utilities there to try and defend that. Showstopper invested, but not able to find anyone. And the turret's just chipping away at Denazia's life. Fires into the smoke, but it does not connect. Thrown Thunder as well invested, allows Amy to jump onto site, but the shots come through and they are good for this Cat Cloven team. Bringing it to 3 2, it's now 2 apiece as Ben's answers back with two huge kills. And it's all going to come down to breach. Can Amy1 clutch up like they have done so many times on the previous map? The team are waiting, the shots do not connect. And Cat Club and extend their lead to 2 now, it's 4 2, and they're starting to feel good. Let's not forget, Rafe came back from a 4-2 situation. They played exceptionally well, so they're not out of it just yet. And they do have another whole side to go. Defenders switch over to attackers, attackers switch over to defenders. Unfortunately, Amy won, just getting caught out there. And the play from Cat Cliburn, not playing together there. They played very exceptionally well. They just went one, two, three, let's swing out here. They didn't play like closely together, is what I meant, but they played together as a teamwork, which is very nice to see. Um, and they are looking to pull this A push again, opting to leave their kill on to B, um, play very, very passive on one side, play very, very passive, oh, sorry, very, very aggressive on the other side. Really nice to see this exceptional teamwork, and we have Wraith trying to be, trying to get a slight advantage, trying to catch one person out, shot goes through, not connecting, nothing doing right now. He'll go to early city spots Molly. players and Brim uses their UTC favor and they shut down that push. In the lockdown, it now invested, which is actually false information making Cat Cloven think a push could come on to B, but in fact it's coming on to A. But Amy and Ninsky wise to it to pick up a 2k, get the spike down and looking for the third. The classics coming in. Bins wins that time as Denasia holds on for dear life, looking to take this fight, but the smoke makes this very challenging. Drops the Vandal to the player with more health. Wise take as they're just going to try and peek out of here with the Boombot to try and get information. But not sure that Ninsky's beside and the rest of it's taken out. Cat Clubin once again 5-2 with four players left alive. This is exactly what you want to see if you're in their shoes right now. This is exactly what you do want to see. As you said, Wraith opting to go for a bit of a timeout here. We gather their thoughts, stop the momentum um, from Cat Clubin. We know Valorant is a momentum-based game. Um, Echo opting now to choose this time to speak to their players. What thoughts do you reckon are going through their head right now? I think they're wanting to just figure out, well, obviously, what's going wrong and how they can counteract that. They need to make sure they're slowing themselves down. They're not, not losing the mental game because Valorant is actually very much a mental game because it will throw off your shots, it will throw off your strategy. And just regroup on on how they come. We've not really seen too many B hits. It's all been focused over to A. Whether or not that's conditioned or not to make Cat Clubin expect that a lot over that side. But as I highlighted before, Wraith are very big fans of Fracture. So they will have multiple strategies on how to come back into this. And it'll be down to Eco here just saying, look, let's move away from this one and start to digress into, into these other tactics. And as timeout comes out... We're going to see Wraith, hopefully with a new breath of fresh air, rejuvenate what's happening right now. They've been shut down in these rifle rounds so far. They had three nice uh, plays in the third and fourth round. But unfortunately, I mean, for Wraith, Cat Cleveland have just found so many answers to the questions proposed by Wraith. Egg has been exceptional, but choosing to support um, a bit more with bins in this arcade area. Taking so much space here, the push out of a dish is going to find nothing other than a turret. But the turret is found. <laughs> the, big, <laughs> the big key impact of this is, but that is information gathered nonetheless. As you know, Egg will be playing over here. Yes, Wraith will get information from it as well that players could be potentially seeking round, but sitting in this tucked position, ready for the trade, the flash coming in. It's going to blind up, but waiting to swing. but. Look, Amy not revealing the position, the players 
only believe that one is here with the second tucked so tight and Amy gradually getting closer like a tiger stalking their prey two of them coming close it's not going to be checked and does get both players and is able to run and sprint back to site smokes down both Amy's getting kills in this round four versus two situation that has been done before by Rafe to get this clutch situations but now in a one versus two can Amy clutch up yet again for their team they did 1v5 this is a one versus two spray coming through. Unfortunately, none of the shots connecting, getting caught out yet again on that stair position. And near the KO from Cat Cuban, able to catch up, giving the uh, ultimate orb over to their kill drive, allowing the momentum to be built further. 6 2 now in favor of Cat Cuban. Yeah, that lockdown really prevented Amy One from being able to do too much. Trapped in that corner has to either just relinquish full site space and if they do that you're probably getting caught as you're trying to run down into main and get shot taken out so really stuck literally in between a rock and a hard place or in this case lockdown and a staircase but Wraith looking to start answering back once again on to shoddy bye and you have to feel that the map is slowly starting to slip away from them Cat Clubin looking to win this round and then put themselves into an advantage where you've won the half and once you've won the half you start to really build up more points to win in the map. Uh, yes, the camera spots out a couple of players. Oh, what is one player here in the form of the Killjoy shuts them down? Denisha able to set her up onto your side. This site is completely free for Wraith. But remember, Captain Boomin has so much uh, ultimates to use here. Brim in does have the ultimate as well for Wraith. And as we in a 5 versus 5 post fight situation right now, Molotov does not quite get into the situation. They want to trace coming left by center. Shots down Amy, one, two kills. This is so, so impactful. This could actually come off for Wraith here. Catch moving now in a difficult situation. Smokes here, playing into the hand. Two, gets oh. one, gets two. Lovely shots from them. And that will be the third bounce right on the board for Wraith. No more deaths. Yeah, that was a really nice answer. We, we, we literally just spoke about how B hasn't really been a site that's been hit in that conditions Cat Clubbing to anticipate a lot coming through from A. And Wraith really taking advantage of that and playing that well in a round where, I mean, you should not be winning when you're on those eco rounds. And they turn it into their advantage and really pick it up. And you have to say it's all down to Amy 1. I don't know why they're called Amy 1, because at this point they should just be called the Amy. <laughs> like it's or Amy 5k something you know it's, like, it's insane Amy's just absolutely cracked and does the job that round gets Wraith back into it and try to make sure that they can take as little damage as possible going into the the next half for them I do want to highlight the Cat Club and Amy the neon player is on 12 kills so this could be a battle of who keeps the name here uh, the, the Amy uh, neon Amy is just uh, giving an answer to the domination that Amy one had with the Viper here. Denisha has taken so much space onto a site here. A plant will come down. Smokes will be evaporated soon enough. And the KO splash. Perfect timing there. Yeah, she's looking to map that up as well with the flash, but then just catalyzes and takes the hit out. Toe picking up Rina as well, and the players for Cat Clubbing falling like dominoes. Neon's wall goes up, pushing through, and Ninsky is going to remaining. fall as well. And it's all down to me and your mama. Not this time. Amy1 picks up the kill, and it's 6 4. Wraith feeling, co feeling confident, feeling like they're back into it, and four players left alive shows that they're starting to get into this matchup. And remember, with four players alive, the economy slowly starts building. We're looking at it right now, 7.4k on two players. The lowest one is on 3,000, which is above the highest one on Clack Ruben. So, Rafe really looking to snowball this effect of the economy. With Valorant, you have so many different symbol effects. You have the ultimates, you have the economy, you just have overall confidence. So, the snowballing can be really, really dangerous if you are uh, against it. And Wraith really using it to their advantage right now. Flash comes out, allows the Wraith to take space. He's done it as well. But look at where this killjoy is as well. He's taking so much space and got such a nice hold. One kill coming out from Amy1 right now, opening up the scoreboard in this round. Spray through the smoke, nothing connecting. Bomb pump is down. Lovely sight take. Yeah, they get it down, five players left alive to hold this post-plant position as well. And you have to feel like, once again, we've seen the post-plants that this race team have come up with, sitting back and holding up for lineups, and this time just holding tight on the fights. Neon's all is invested, Showstopper coming in here as well to try and shut that one down, but they both miss. 
and finally get taken down. Rolling Thunder and Bestie. This is the Overwatch round of dreams as Amy1 tries to deny anything coming through. Cheese picks up the kill and it's all down to the Brimalt to stop this as well. Hellfire burning up. Cheese and then Toe getting the final kill on Ninsky there as well, just walking in at the end. The time was too low and at that point you just die. 6-5. And I've said it every round for the last four rounds now, Kai, but Wraith finally coming back in. The economy is huge for them. Yes, Cat Cloven can buy into this one, but you've got a Spectre and a Guardian coming in, so not a full buy for them. Talk yeah. to me, what what was what are Cat Cloven doing wrong now? It's a sloppy play, like that Ninsky uh care just walking into the Brim Ultimate, allowing a bit more economy damage. I know it doesn't really have any effect now, this is the last round, but if this was early on, you're giving a bit more economy over to the enemy team. You don't want to do that, you want to die to the a spike uh um, yeah, and that's it's not happening right now. Vince gets one, gets two. Um, Lovely shots. Two heads are just connecting right now. Whether or not it's Amy, whether or not it's Egg, it's Vince as well stepping up. They can do what their team has been doing. Four kills on the board, and me and your mama left in a just impossible situation. Ben's absolutely insane work for the team there. Swung, doubled on both sides and takes out everybody. 4k on the board. And Toe is positioned perfectly for this Brim Swing when it comes through. But not going to get the shots down now. And it's a, an impossible task. is now going to slightly less impossible. But the time ticking down is making this challenge even harder. The alarm bot triggering the stun coming in. And you're just trapped on main. You're going to swing round, get a kill. But it doesn't matter as it's far too late. And it's six apiece going in at half time, tied up, and it's all to play for. It really is. Cat Cuban just falling short there. They had such a lovely lead, 6 2, and then Rafe doing exceptionally well. Whatever Echo said in that uh, timeout just boosted their team. Vince obviously here with a 4K, lovely shots coming out of them. Um, just really nice to see that when one of their players needs to be stepped up and play exceptionally well. They are doing just that. The kill differential isn't absolutely um, like out of the world. Unfortunately, Rina just only on two kills right now, um, especially on the defending side. You're expecting that Killjoy to have a bit more impact than what they've been doing. Seven assists, though, so not too bad. Uh, but I would like to see Rina just step up a bit more. Let's see if that's going to come in. We, we do have, obviously, the, the switch of halves, which means Amy on this Neon should be able to find a lot more impact on the attack, as that's that's what, what a duelist does best rather than the defence. And you see the stun's coming out trying to take tower control, but it's going to be shut down by Bins looking really strong from that last half. The classic doing work, but me and your mama takes out Bins now. And this is a four versus four. Plant is down. Tower control has been gained, and they just need to shut down this flying because Rena just has to tuck away, ensuring that the life is played for and stay alive to make sure nothing stage. is catalyzed. But Ray Egg, I should say, sorry, takes out one, pushes on to site, and as there has the satchel to try and push anyone away. The aftershock prevents anyone peeking around. The defuse coming in, it's just going to be stuck as Egg has what it takes. The kills come in, and it's seven six and. Wraith convert the pistol. Very similar vein, vibes to bind. Just really, really solid retake there. I could not see anything wrong there. The aftershock denying the push out of heaven, uh, denying the, the denial of defuse there. Um, Amy one just doing exceptional work. Green nice take though from uh, Pat Gubin. Not going to like say anything wrong about that. They really nice take, but they just negated. Uh, uh, heaven there and that's what was their downfall they did not punish the players in heaven the tight space you could use your breach you could use your monotops from killjoy and ko and it just did not happen but this friendly here gets the headshot but toe shots down with a headshot of their own opening up the kills and that is a man advantage to Wraith. Yeah, that aftershock is going to allow Raze to be picking up closer right here. to the showstopper and just dashes away as they know there is players coming all four committed onto the site and you've only got two or three ready to shut it down a little bit of spray through the wall connects on some shots that does give up amy one's position but chip damage is done nonetheless and that's just going to slow cat clubbing down ever so more slowing them down no sounds giving over to the defenders here but i mean sight and toe gets the head of ninsky there 
has two rounds on the poop to record this round. Gets for another one, three kills now. Spray down this crossfire is absolutely lovely. Amy once finishes off the round with a lovely spray down with the bulldog. Any weapon in Amy one's hands is brutal. Yeah, they're playing really well here, waiting for their teammates to swing with them. Knowing <laughs> when not to peek, you see Egg with the spectre there. Could have committed to the spray down, but instead opts to play for their life, take the spectre into the next round and allow Amy one to swing on top of tower with the bulldog and clean that one up. And 8-6 now, it's not fully over for Kat Klubin now as they start to come in with the rifles in their hands. A couple half shields being bought in as they invested the, the frenzies and such into the previous round. So that does cost them ever so slightly, but we've seen from previous experience that half shields can still come in very useful. Yes, half shields, the fanatic economy strategy uh, can be absolutely exceptional. Uh, this round here, this whole half is speaking of a complete... Uh, change up in the pace of the game. It was very, very fast in the first half where Wraith was defending and Cat Cuban was attacking. Oh, sorry, other way around. Cat Cuban was defending and Wraith was attacking. And the explosiveness of Cat Cuban punishing bins here. Bomb plant going to go down. This position from Amy could be so detrimental to Wraith's uh, momentum right now. Okay. Yeah, I like this. They've got the plant down, have five alive, have the smokes available to prevent Denazia pushing out of here with too much aggression. Dinsky has the flashes online, so when the call comes through, the teams have entered, that will come on and just shut anything down. The egg coming in and picking up one, looking for the player holding back. That's the lineup gone. Doubles dead, as she says, but Amy, this Neon still alive. The last player on has the wall to go up the defuse. It's starting to be tapped. Egg is going to hold it as sprays come down. Almost misses, but does pick up and doesn't get it quite halfway. So Amy one's going to have to tap this through and just bait out a shot if possible, but. It's a battle of Amy's, it's a battle of the match, the shots do finally connect, but the round is over and that sees everybody fall. Unfortunately, Amy 1 does get the kill, but Amy does get the round win for their team. 15 kills, these Amy's are leading right now. Guys, if you want to be good at Valorant, just call yourself Amy. You'll just get 5 yeah. kills each round, you'll be absolutely exceptional no matter what agent you're going to play. The spray down as shown in that clip right there, the bullets will just go to the head of the opponent. So just call yourself Amy and you'll pop off. It's just an Amy diff. It's Amy's world and we are just living in it right now. Both Amy's to be at this point in time, but yep. Amy one proving exceptional, uh, just consistently good for Wraith. 8-7, this is the matchup we wanted. We wanted a tight game on Fracture. We thought Wraith would run away with it, especially with the momentum carried on from Bind. But, I mean, Clack Cleveland showing why they deserve to go around further right now. And Wraith having the answers for the questions proposed by Clack Cleveland as well. Yeah, I like this slow sort of push through. Eh? They're not fully committing into what could be the, the typical aggression that you get with Neon, the adaption to not fully commit. The smoke's coming in, the stun's going up, stops anyone pushing off a tower. And that's just going to allow a little bit of sight to come in. Amy once again just stopping anybody pushing through these extremities and the, the choke holds that are available for Wraith and just has to, to sit and take fights with the teammate. The double flash comes in, the swing coming through but not connecting as Egg picks up one but Ninsky's there to take out two and Amy one shuts that one keeping us in this three versus three guys it's, it's literally tit for tat answer for answer as this match continues to be what we expected it to be in such a good one as Bins picks up the kill one enemy remaining I mean your mama's slaying has the ult online Amy one can answer through, has to push out of this to find the kill, and does get one. Can they identify the last player? Taps the spike. You know, trying to get damage through, but the, the nano swarms are enough. 9 Ooh. HP gets the kill, and the diffuser has plenty of time as Wraith go two points to the advantage. Clutch. Really, really nice heads up play from Amy1 right there. The spray through, the nano swarms are just not working right uh, uh, I think the timing there was slightly off um, probably shouldn't have used it immediately uh, one after the other Bim ultimate forcing the player out me and your mama unfortunately getting killed there and the 9 HP Rena not doing anything um, I mean if we look at the kills Amy 1 has been exceptional so far yeah I'm unbelievable the questions that are being asked is who is Amy one and we're certainly getting those answers provided to us but Cat Clubin very much still within a shout here playing into that aggression once again but 
the stun's going to be enough just to stop it for momentarily purposes, but now on site, Ben's can do a lot. Just put this one down and does get one kill. Looks for another. Looks for two and only gets one as Egg sweeps that last one away. And Egg picks up Rena as well. It's all down to Cheese. One versus five in an unlikely position. It does take out one with them, but the defending race side, 10 to the good now, three away from taking this match. Yeah, I mean, Rave really, really solid hold. Egg doing really nice to support their teammates, getting one, two kills onto the side. Uh, one kill does go in favour of Kat Klubin, as shown, uh, but nothing too serious. The economy is not going to be that damaged on the side of Rave, especially with four ultimates in their pocket right now. I'm expecting these to be used immediately just because it allows them to regain it as often as possible um and as we look at their setup right now captain going to go for a bit of an aggressive push this stun on to be hoping to punish this player here and unfortunately for amy they does punish them gets their head taken clean off not the raised ultimate but instead the phantom of the killjoy yeah that's not what you want to see as a an eon player when you're popping that ultimate you do not want to be walking straight into a stun and dying immediately it's a a wasted opportunity in that point but not to the the peril of Cat Clubin as they invest their own thunder deep into spawn to try and take the fights in as much space as possible. But Wraith are going to come out on top with two kills, leaving Cat Clubin only two left to defend this spike that's been planted. Three right now, those kills have been going in favour for Cat Clubin. Mortif as well plays on low HP. This is very doable for this Brimstone right now. Egg. Pushing up on the HP, gets the kill, gets the 11th final on the board. This IGL is leading their team right now. Absolutely exceptional place from them. Yeah, Wraith really proving their worth once again. A little bit of slow starters, but once they feel their way into this game, really proving why they are a dominant force at this moment in time. And really someone that we would be looking at to go far in this tournament if they progress past this cat club inside that are causing them some problems and... But, I mean, Wraith are just coming back, snapping back with the answers currently. 7-11, lovely store, but even lovelier scoreline for Wraith right now. Three ultimates still on board for them. Brimstone and the Killjoy ultimate, even the KO ultimate, it's just so, so powerful. Um, especially on Fracture with the retake ability you can have um, with all those agents right there. Kill KO Knights being traded out from both teams there, nullifying and identifying a couple of players from Cat Gluben. Killjoy left on A site, giving up the space they took onto main here and said rotating towards B. This could be a bit of a misplay and opens up a bit of an opportunity for Cat Gluben. Yeah, but you have the alarm bot set up over on A, which will give the information once it comes through. The space will be provided onto sites. We've seen the race retakes before though. And that all will give the information through. The smoke's come in, it denies it, but the lockdown now invested. Try and push Cat Clubin off site, but it's not going to be before the spike is planted. Amy having to use those fast powers to get away in time and will just about escape. The site is now in the hands of Wraith. Obviously, one the player has been picked up. The spike getting tapped. The smoke dissipates as the trades come in and Toll equalising this one. Three apiece. The stun's going to stop Cheese from pushing out, but has a flash available. Grim ult popping down and that's enough for Cat Clubin to get the kill. Eight back in it and they finally answer back with a round of their own. Drink some water, reload your mags and let's Lovely, back lovely site hold from Cat Clubin there. Ultimates invested very nicely. Wraith unfortunately wasting a bit of the ultimate. Uh, all three of the ultimates previously mentioned have now been used up and unfortunately you did not convert to a round win. Uh, Amy with the dash onto dish, absolutely exceptional heads up play opting instead to choose to give their team a bit of an advantage when the retake will eventually come in as it doesn't allow them doesn't uh, doesn't put them in one area just for the retake to the retakers to look at that area Denisio opting to go for a fast play here gets caught out this is exactly what we highlighted your disconnect to the rest of your team but this lovely pinch uh, from Ray this heads up play the shots come through that was over within a couple of seconds. My mind is going a thousand miles per hour right now. Three versus two situation right now. Quite firm in the hands of Wraith. Two versus two. Two versus one right now. Amy doing exceptionally well. Flashes. Lean skill. Now left in an almost impossible situation. Yeah, but Wraith down to a little bit low health on Amy 1. But that has never stopped her before. Is that 
form is going to cause damage, but Amy one doesn't care. Stands strong, picks up the kill, and puts Wraith on that to match in series point. And they're going to be feeling confident with that. I like the little distraction from Denazia to push down off of main, and then the rest of the team just come in and say, haha, just kidding, here we are. Time to kill y'all, as the focus was slightly elsewhere. And that is, that's what Wraith do. They punish at these points, and you see Amy one once again picking up a huge 4K, and Wraith have to be feeling good. You have to, Eco's doing a great job with this. I, exceptional strategies there. I mean, you're utilizing Amy to that first one. Now, 24 kills this year as well, taking space, changing the strategies up. This is exactly what we want to see adaptability, momentum in favor of Wraith. They've been playing it exceptionally well, proving to us why they need to go in advance to the next round. Toyos gets flashed out there. Now, choosing to go behind cover, but Finn's there to back up his teammate down in this. An underground area. This team play from Wraith has been absolutely exceptional, playing off each other, supporting each other. This is what you need. This is what a Valorant team should be like. Yeah, very well organized, ready for the answers. Nano Swarm just going to stop the push coming in, but Cheese gets the wall bang on to Wraith, which allows this site now to be taken. No more utility from Killjoy can be used to stop this, but. What can Wraith do in this retake? There is still four players left alive, but Ninsky very well set up to shut this flag down. Can't take the shots to get one. And wise just to push away and not take a fight. They don't need to and do not need to lose that advantage as the lockdown pushes Wraith further back from the site. And once again, just counting a lot more time down for Cat Club and getting closer to win another round. Flash comes out, retake Farney on as the Kildra ultimate just dissipate. Kills going in favour of right now. Ben's opening up with a lovely spray down. Stun gets both of the players onto site here, but the counter stun as well comes back. As we mentioned before, this is hit for Tat. Kills going left by centre. One versus two situation right now. There is no time to defuse, unfortunately. And that is a night found on the board for Cat Blue denying the series just yet. Yeah, pushing it back and taking their hopes ever so slightly closer to taking this one into overtime. And then what they would be hoping into the next match which if we were to go into map three it would be haven so we've potentially got that look to look forward to if cat clubin can get themselves back into this and keep momentum away from wraith yeah i mean i think if we're looking at the scope right now you know just unfortunately not having a good day it happens in valorant sometimes you're just not feeling it sometimes you're not having a good day it happens to the best of us and unfortunately it's happening to Rena right now but looking into Wraith setup onto the defense they've got the breach stun ready for the players to pounce onto this opportunity but clap given heads up display they know Wraith loves to push and they are just hoping to punish them Yep, can they find the answers? That's a nice, patient play from Egg. Knows the turret's going to be there to take contact. So doesn't need to peek into it. And now, just slowly waiting through as the rest of the players for Cat Clubin start to aggress onto B. Get this ult closer for Kale. Prioritising that one to stop any utility when the sights do come in. The knife going to give info that Egg is up in tower. And that shuts down. The Killjoy utility and makes this push a little bit easier. Yes, kill KO very, very useful at nullifying Killjoy's ability just for a short amount of time, obviously, unless you have the KO ultimate, which Wraith do. Tucked into the spot right now, the base. There we get one, able to get two with a spray through the wall. Egg as well, able to get kill onto their counterpart. And now in a two versus five situation, Grim and KO left to save this series for Cat Clubin. Time is their sixth enemy. Ultimate comes out, misses as a little Ryan Ultimate, but Amy. Gets the kill onto the KO now in a 1 versus 5, and that is all she wrote. Amy with a spray down, Amy with the round win, Amy with the series win as well for Ray. Yeah, you have to say, Kai, that was very impressive for me. Cat Clubbing once again taking it very close. Every round was, it could have, it was like a seesaw, it could have went either way, right? And that's that's what we like to see from these matches. And you have to commend Wraith progressing onto the next round, and Cat Clubbing fall into the losers bracket. And I mean, I'm going to ask you who your MVP is, but I, I, I fear that we already know the answer. So, I mean, go on, yeah. tell me. I think it's just got to be Amy one. Um, <laughs> absolutely no discussion here. Top of the leaderboard, clutching up every single round pretty much. One versus five on bind. The double spray down to close out the series as well. The utility usage was there. Bear in mind, this wasn't even a Judas. It was a Viper and a Breach mm -hmm. as well. 
uh, just popping off and just assisting their teammates in any way they can. So not only was the kills, it was the team play as well for me, for anyone to get the MVP in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. And if, if we have to highlight people over on the side of Cat Clubbing, I, I feel like the opposite Amy done a really good yeah. job on that. That neon, especially on the defense, which isn't something you often see at that point of view. So it'll be interesting to keep a track on them, how they can progress in the, the later stages. But it's it's impressive, you've got to say, Cat Clubbing doing a very good job of a race side that we thought were, were going to be very dominant. Yeah, we highlighted Rafe Echo, exceptional coach. Amy won um, just coming in just for new to this team we might add and just like we said but if Amy wants there to bolster the team in the flanking ability they can go further than what they did in Birds of Prey series 5 um, and that is looking like it's going to come out. Um, Egg as well that IGL plays clutched up every single, pretty much every single round with the calls with the teamwork um, not micromanaging your teams but adapting and playing a bit of macro. Thank you guys for watching we'll go to a break and we'll see you shortly.
I'ma give it to you G straight And I'm out beat slay, I'm not a human being Ballin' like Kareem, sippin' on codeine I lean with it, rock with it, got coke dreams Boom, back, boom in the trap When trap meets house, you get a trap house Got two stacks, throw it at a strip dancer Big booty hoe, said she from Atlanta Black kids call me a cracker, white kids call me a beaner Ate lunch in school alone cause I didn't fit in with either They told me that I can't ride, did you forget your ethnicity? But looking back from now they couldn't see what God had planned for me Let me get it, let me put it down, one time for anybody out there following their dreams Anybody in the city we can do jobs so they can get to bigger better things You can't see that, I was at a put in Every day and night, go to every trick or right, go to every bit of main Just to hit them with the fade when I stick it to the people that I told me that I couldn't, yeah After all of the years of young old people I finally learned that it's okay that I'm not white or brown And though the people looking sideways drive me crazy You can't take my pride from me I'm cool with the way God made me, yeah But the way you react, I can tell that you hatred and tech You call me dirty, uneducated, illegal, and fat We're just taught to black lives matter And I said Latinos do too And they told me, check your white privilege Boy, this is not about you We gonna make it, ooh, we gonna make it I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it, ooh Gonna make it Got that and not by my side Ain't no way that you can fade it Listen You can't hold me down You can't hold me down You, you, you can't hold me down You, 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 you down. You, you, you can't hold me down You can't hold me down You, you, you can't hold me down You, 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 you down. You, you, you can't hold me down Got grand I need a playboy Super Smash Game Boy Send a dick Not just some LA boy When he hit this But the kid he make noise Need a playboy That's my dope boy Make that cake Flip me upside down And he knows that with that face Yeah Crunch like po' boy John Barley Turn me inside out When he cleaning out that plate Got my back Got a gas You fill up the tank Yeah Most swings You can handle that Call me a saint Yeah Got me kneeling on the floor Trying to think Yeah Not just some 
Welcome back to the Birds of Prey series six. I am joined by. Oh, it's, it's not Kai anymore. Snow, welcome. How are you? Yo, what's happening, G? <laughs> what's 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 the fit all about? We're supposed to come on all all nice, all smart, and look. You like said you winner. said we had to come on dressing nice. You didn't say we had to come on dressing smart. That's all I'm saying. Man's got the Jordan cap. I got the hoodie on. I got the vest. I'm looking clean. I don't know what I, you know. You're done though. Like what? <laughs> okay, enough of that. Enough of the character. I'm too hot in this, bro. It's not it's not the right weather to be wearing this clothes. <laughs> but I don't know, Veggie. How's it been going? I'm excited to be joining you again. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to keep it going. It's been a good good start so far. We had a really good showing from Wraith, who progressed into the next round. But today, well, not, not just today, but the matchup that we're going to be seeing is Mouse Plays versus Scullies, which is two teams that are also expected to do quite well. Is What what, what are we going to see? Talk to me. What? what? I'm not a genie in what? a lamp, bro. Like, what are you saying to <laughs> me? Like, what, are you like, what, to break the future out here? I yeah, mean, that's exactly what. I can tell you about the maps we're going to see. Uh, yeah, and I mean, first map we're going to see is Split, which I'm excited about, to be fair. I mean, his mouse plays his pick. It's a map that I'm quite familiar with. I mean, I would hope most of us are, considering there's like seven maps in Valorant, so it's not really difficult to remember. But, yep. I mean, mouse plays as a team, we know they have some skills. I think me and you have casted this team before, Veggie. Yeah, we have, yeah. They've had a, a, different, a slightly different roster this time. What is, we'll talk about Split. We'll start with Split. Yeah. What what do you like seeing on Split? People shooting other people in the head. I mean, the same thing I like about the rest of Valorant. Sorry, I'm griefing you. You weren't expecting this, were you? I'm a wild card today, Veggie. I've had an energy drink. I've had a Red Bull. I'm, I'm cracked out on energy right now. But <laughs> you ask what I like about Split. Split, it's very interesting to me. I, I wonder whether teams will go towards this sage that a lot of teams seem to... 
either run or not run. Normally, if you're not running the Viper, you will run the Sage. I'm looking at the VLR stats for Scullies right now. 100% win rate on split, and they do run that Sage. So especially if that's something that they're used to fighting over that mid control, used to holding that pressure themselves, it will be something that we can look towards in this map as they carry on to, to kind of continue their dominance on this map. Okay, nice. So we, we, we have an expectations now that <clears throat> Scullies could potentially be coming in and winning this, which is interesting that you say it is picked out by mouse mm. players who will be starting this on defence. So maybe they'll be feeling confident that they can come and win this. Mouse players have ple previously played on split today. I believe they won that one up was 13-7 in the first matchup. So obviously a map that they're confident on themselves. So we'll have to see what they can bring through to it. You mentioned Rays has been your go to Julius, is there anyone else that you kind of think is a viable option? I mean, depends. If you've got Kang Kang on your team, you're probably picking Jet. Like, you, <laughs> yeah. you're, pro you're probably going for that over the Rays. But no, Rays is a, is a very good agent for, for Split. I feel like a lot of pressure can be made with that nade. Also, just very good defensively because there's so many chokes. But I mm -hmm. do see a lot of scope for an agent like Jet, if you want to run that double duelist, you essentially run the Bash brothers. Well, they're not really brothers, but uh, it rhymes with B, so, you know, we're going with it. But they just sprint onto site. They play hyper-aggressive. They have something like a sky that leads them into these angles, lets them win these duels out, and you can play a super fast-paced style of play because Split can lend itself to aggression from the defense as well. You can see a lot of mid-plays, raise up some really nice double satchels. And a little trick that I learned very recently, Veggie, is that Sky's Flash travels the exact same speed as a Ray's Satcheling. So you can pretty much always insta-pop Flash by just Sky flashing slightly behind the Ray's and just popping it as soon as Ray's is about to land. Is that, that how you've been claiming up your ranked games, is it? Yeah, just been cheesing, you know. Find a raise one trick, make them smurf down for a radiant, and then um, find myself in in in, in Platilo looking to get to diamond. I mean, you know, Veggie, just because you're stuck in bronze, it's okay. You Listen, know, we don't, one day... we don't need these personal shots, okay? We're we're here to talk about some really skilled players. We don't need to lower the tone with my rank. Nobody nobody needs to know where I'm at. The, the questions weren't asked. I'm just gonna we're gonna, gonna gloss over that. Sentinels. Killjoy yeah. or Sage or both? Why not both? What, what? Why, <laughs> why not both? Okay, I mean, the thing is, there's scope for every every Sentinel on this map. I feel like Chamber, if you're feeling really, really uh, hyphy, because you get those early picks out, you have that TP, you can look to play off of that on the, your defensive side. And Lurks through mid can be useful on split. If you play hyper-aggressive on your executes, you can open up a lot of mid pressure. Chamber can look to play off of that, look to maybe flank and, and watch the flank off of other people. I think there's scope for all agents here. I feel like most likely we're going to be seeing Sage pick from both teams. Maybe Sage Killjoy to just try lock down that defensive half. Because what we've seen in Split actually is before the map was changed, it was a very defense heavy map. But since mm -hmm. it's changed, especially in pro play and the Ascension Leagues, we've seen more people winning on attack and attack rounds than we have on defense. Yeah, it's just, it's the, the scales have started to tip slightly into that more attacking side. I think a lot of that comes down to the, the compositions, like you say, that gets played. We see a lot of mm. these double duelists now, as, as well as a lot of double controllers coming across. Viper starting to make a, a slight mm. impact over on to this map, so that could be something that we do see. But in fact, it doesn't look like we will as we see Scully's playing off on to Omen. I don't know what that that typing on Split was there. It was Spluid. I think we're maybe changing the name slightly, but <clears throat> Astra. Welsh. It's Welsh. <laughs> Fair, understandable. We, we don't judge. Um, Astra coming in from Mouse Plays. I like this pick. Um, every time an Astra is played, you know someone's feeling confident in their ability to do that. Double Duelist with Phoenix and Ray's always going to be fast, thick, and aggressive. And Catacombs, the new pick for Mouse Plays playing on mm. that sentinel role of Cypher. Ooh. And that Phoenix interests me. I am surprised to see the Astra linked with a Sage. I feel like most of the times the reason Astra is such a strong agent on split is in conjunction with Killjoy. The combos that you can make with the, the doubling down of utility can mean that those two can hold a single site and Astra doesn't even have to be on the site. Astra can just set up the stars so that Killjoy can play off of them and you can just stall for so long. I feel like with a Sage, it's a little bit different. You know, you don't have the presence of those mollies. Yes, you still have the slows, but at the end of the day, if these teams play aggressive very early, 
the thing I don't like about Sage on split is the fact that if teams just put pressure to breaking the wall, instantly all of that map presence mid is just gone because they just wait mm -hmm. out those 30 seconds. They just wait for you to waste both of your slows and then you're just you're just a person with a gun. You have no util anymore. I mean, that's 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 how you play Valorant, right? That's, that's, that's your key analytical points is shoot people head, plant spike, win round. I mean, you don't even need to plant the spike, to be fair. Just sprint W key into their spawn, play the EDG style, see how many people you can kill. I mean, if you're EDG, you just forget the bomb in spawn. But on this pistol round, they do seem to have the bomb. And what they do have is an omen setting up for a flash, and I like this very much. Yeah, nice play up into heaven. The flash doesn't connect, but the camera is taking it. That's a little bit of information taken away from the side of mouse plays here, but... The footsteps making all the noise, and there goes that stage wall to stop anyone pushing through. The stun coming up allows for a push through, and Martha does get the first kill of this matchup, and Catacombs falls as Rika just waiting for anyone else to flank round as this plant now does come in. Spike planted. They know there's one on the flank. Kazamaro gonna have to back away, but it's a 1v2 for this omen here. Peeking both sides, Rika taken down as the retake is starting to happen, but Martha just so good already on three kills for this round. And two players left alone from mouse plays. This round is looking nigh unwinnable. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a very tough situation, like you said, the jump peeking from both parties, just enough to get the information as they start to push on from most players, but player not going to find anything as that stun denies everything else. It's all down to Kazmaru and she's going to be taken out as Spicy Muffin puts the final bullet into the skull and Scully's open themselves up 1-0 and start to feel confident with the rest that's coming on. And now since second round, we're kind of expecting Scullies to, to sweep this one. I'm not expecting a big buy from Mouse Plays, maybe a little bit of util, maybe a few sheriffs if they want to go for picks. But it, it allows me to elaborate a little bit more on why I don't like Sage on split. You see that situation there? Sage is normally going to go armor and wall. You wall off mid. If the enemy team has no presence, no pressure towards mid, you've just wasted 400 credits on an ability that isn't mm -hmm. going to do anything. And we see here that... This team of Scullies are just pressuring towards A and the wall's not going to matter and I feel like Sage can have that useful utility if you save it for a retake or something but this default just wall up on mid is you hemorrhaging money. Yeah and it's put down despite all the pressure that is now on A site like you said it's throwing money burning it away but it's done nonetheless and Catacombs is starting to search for some value but Rika is going to be there to find that first kill and once again, in a really tough position, it's what you expect coming in on one of these really poor buy rounds where you're, you're sat with your pistols against the enemy team that has sort of full Spectres coming in. And Lisa tries to get one, but Kazmaru shuts that one down, and now Spectre picked up. Can they find the answers as the flash comes in? But Martha is just mowing bodies down just now, gets the paint sales back online, but falls down as Kazmaru on for the race if they were to win this round. But the swing could be everything as time is ticking all the way down the snow. The stun's coming in and that's going to be enough for Bobby to take it to 2-0. No time at all, but they what did get a done? nice couple of kills there, damaging the economy a little bit. But we saw there that a little bit of money saved, so some rifles are going to come out actually from the side of Scullies. And around, we expected to go the way of Scullies. I feel like we expected it to be a bit more one-sided, but Kazamaru... There's a lot of damage on that round. Gets a nice 3k. I'm interested to see how this first buy is going to go. Scully's just opting for some Sheriff. So I'm thinking maybe we see a hyper-aggressive play. They're stacked outside B. Just to kind of push the tempo a bit. Yeah, and you have been seeing this push coming in from most players every round. But it's not had any success as the attacks have been completely elsewhere. And this wall finally getting some value. But it's just taken down so quickly like that. And it allows the rest of mid-production just to come on its way yeah. is slightly stalled thanks to the slow orb as well but you have to feel soon that this aggression will hit its peak yeah and it's like i said all they have to do wait 30 seconds wall's not going to be there slow's not going to be there the stall's not going to really have mattered they've already got the mid pressure and they seem to be moving towards heaven now as orbs thrown back and forth util is there raise gets a kill with the grenade not something that's too uncommon on this map as Maya have a big task to do. Martha finds one, grenade's gonna come in, pushes them away, and they found their way onto B site. 
Yeah, they were stalled there for, for quite a moment in time, but patient play, ready to take advantage of when they needed. They've now picked up Vandal in the hands of Martha, and we've seen what she can do so far with Spectres and Classics, so definitely not something that you want to be doing ever so easily. The spike now committed in as well. Mouse players have to try and find their way back onto this site. Looking for the concussion on backside. That's going to stun it up. One on Rika, who's very low health, but the ult invested in the showstopper. Will take it, Kazmaru, and now it's all down to this Astra who's sneaking it around site, but Det's taken care of, and it's Scully's converting around that should never really have been theirs. Yeah, Scully's... It's that hyper-aggression. They just push forward. Martha lands some really, really crack shots, feeling themselves right now, 9 and 1 at the moment. And I feel like now is kind of where mouse players needs to assess what they want to do mid. Because I feel like if you're sage walling up, the reason why you want to do that is you want to funnel and you want to fight. They break the wall, all of a sudden they're having to go into a really small angle. Yes, you can slow them with the slow orbs, but it's really good for just being able to pick and choose your own fights. And right now mouse plays is kind of using it as just a stall to buy themselves more time. But Valorant has 1 minute 40 on the clock. You've got so much time that stalling doesn't really matter too often. Yeah, unless you've got masses of utilities, that stall time is just not going to be enough. It's, we're starting to see this A hit coming in once again. The blind comboed up with the Omen Flash as well is enough to get Martha on sight, but it's dealt with by Lissu and Catacombs having to fight at the back. But cool. Doing well, and Yabu picking up, picking up the Stinger, the best gun in the game from what I've heard. It's definitely one that that does bop as Kazumaru holding that Sheriff. Maybe he can get some high impact frags. A three on three and rifles that are able to be picked up on sight if they can hold it, but Rika says no, rips the head clean off of Kazumaru. It looks like they're just gonna send it towards A. Or is it the bait and switch? Oh, the conga line is heading towards B now, but cover going out. Can Gundam make something happen with just a Bucky and a Dream? Gets the first one. Spam through the smoke by Spicy. 25 seconds left, so time is of the essence here. And yeah, the but control. Situation. Control is very much there. You have the site popped down. Yes, you only have a bucket, but 14 seconds pops up, gets another kill, and gets the third as well. The bucket does the job, Snow. That's what you love to see. And I feel like. It's yes, always the way. You, you lose the rounds that you should win, and then you end up winning the round that you should lose. And Mouse plays there. I mean, I feel like it's just off the back of Gundam alone. This is a really nice play. Stays in that aftershock for the maximum time they can before they start to take damage. Peaks up perfectly. They're able to find that kill and give themselves a round. But I feel like what they have to do right now is figure out a way to shut Martha down. Martha is just constantly able to find these opening picks. And yes, they were shut down in that last round, and we saw how good it was for Mouse Plays. Yep, and the Odin being brought in here as well, trying to be that answer. But once again, A site is where it's going. I like that satchel just to break the util of the Cypher player. And mm. it's just smarter not committing into the double satchel, just able to, to use it to break and make a pathway onto site. And here comes Bobby using that wall to stop anyone that could push through from screens, but it is quickly destroyed as it has to be these days with how little ammunition you get. And now Mouse Play is looking for the retake. It's a one versus one trade up top. And Gundam using these guns to their advantage to bring this closer. And all three members on site. This isn't looking great for Scullies. Mouse Play should win this one out with some nice trades, but Bobby gets one, Martha gets another, and just like that, the tides have turned, but Catagomes wants this one to work out as a fight from Elbow does not happen, and Rika clutches that round out for their team. Yep, Scully's really starting to build up a lead here, not just round-wise, but economically as well. You're starting to see some of the bank balances going ever so up. Obviously, you've got the two at the bottom, Lissu and Spicy Muffin, struggling a bit, but you look at Martha, 3,900 in the bank after mm -hmm. being able to fully invest in. And Mouse plays dwindling down to, to whatever they can scrape. They're at the bottom of the barrel at the minute, and they need to be finding these answers quickly so on how to combat onto this map. It is their pick, and they need to make sure that it doesn't run away from them. And it's been such an aggressive 
first five rounds from Scully's and Mouse Place hasn't been able to find a way to stop them. We've just seen so much aggression. And there we see that Sage all broken. 400 credits down the drain. Can you tell I don't like Sage very much? <laughs> as we're going to see Scully speaking out of the site. Catacombs gets one. The Spicy Muffin found their way through. The Res is there as well. And just like that, a play that could have worked out for Mouse Plays goes all in the favour of Scully's. I know exactly where you are. And yeah, the ult coming bold man mode activated uploading to let them know exactly where this mouse plays team is. No one can be hidden as they all are trapped up in heaven. And it could be judgment day as Martha peeks Aww. around, tries to get one, but Maya swings and returns and picks off the head. Here we go. Here's the post plant snow. Can they do it? Spicy Muffin says no. Tap is going to be there. The spam as well. Peek out from the Abu, but it isn't enough. There's going to be no time. There's going to be no weaponry for it. Five to one already for Scullies. And I feel like now you know what Scullies' play is going to be. You put that wall up mid, someone's going to spray it down. I feel like be ready for that. You've had these first few rounds to see that they're going to play hyper aggressive. They're going to look to fight you. Look to play some of these crossfires. Maybe peek off of this this util that they're using to clear out mid. And play a little bit safer as well. I feel like Martha is pretty much getting 1v1s for free. Mouse mm -hmm. players needs to do a better job of setting up crossfires. Yeah, it's the way they're isolating the fights onto A site with only from what historically where they've left catacombs alone there. It's Raze has been able to fully take advantage of that and Satchel over onto site. You've got the flashes up onto heaven to make sure no one can crossfire down that way as well. But I feel like A has just been so free for Scullies, and that's why you're, it looks like we're starting to see them set up. I know spawns literally just started, but if you look at where people are directional facing, it looks like they're going to head to A, right? And that's yeah. what most players need to start working on how they can defend that a lot better. And I think you're right, the crossfires setups a little bit is definitely there. This stage wall mid, just just bin it off for now. I'm I'm fully you've you've invested me into this. Just bin it <laughs> off. Yeah, I think the thing is, it's got to be utilised. Like, the Sage Wall mid doesn't do anything if they just spray it down. That's why That's why in pro play you saw Viper instead, because the Viper Wall is constantly up. It's constantly pressuring. It's well, obviously not constantly, but, you know, on a rotation, it's always going to be able to get that pressure. You're always going to be able to fight around mid, and there's always the threat of something like a Sky Flash coming through it. Sage Wall doesn't have that same fear. Yes, someone might peek over the top of it, but you know the common angles. You know where they're going to play. So no one really wants to risk that play anymore. And you wait the first 30 seconds of the round. Yes, you've stalled a little bit of time, but Sage has used 400 credits to buy 30 seconds that is mostly just info gathering for both teams anyway. They've uh, baited and switched me as they, they actually <laughs> are heading to mid, mid this time. So that wall could be very useful, but it's invested in a slightly different spot just to block off entrance onto B Heaven and kind of funnel the players that do come up potentially into A should they choose that. But... Then it's just destroyed so quickly again. That seems to be the focus point. And Identify that stage wall and just destroy it. And I want to see mouse plays go aggressive off this. You've got a Phoenix Rage. Your double duelist is on A. Push out. Take some risks here. See if you can find an isolated player. You know there's at least three members there. And here we go. The push out is there. And it is a nice trade off. But now Scullies. They're not even scared of the flank. They know mouse plays aren't going to go. They're not even watching it. Eliminated. And right now Maya... Nice pick there through the smoke. Yeah, and that's going to stop Scully's a little bit. That's your your big impact player gone so far, but we've seen what the rest of this team can do. We've seen Rika pick up some really nice kills. This smoke's going to just shut off any vision for Catacombs unless she pushes out, but wise to stay behind it and wait for the rest of the team. The TP mm. down to backside to clear some angles and Sage slowly working away, ready to get this plant. 30 seconds left. The plant is going to go down. Spike Retake planted. opportunity for the side of mouse plays. The peek out is going to be there, but it's a crossfire. Oh, Rika not able to find that one as Bobby gets two off of a nice little peek from Pillar there. Gundam. See what they can do. Going to peek out on this Bobby. Little bit of damage. Rika coming as well. They're duking back and forth. The TP is there. And just off of that, the swing comes. Rock it. Yabu, what can you do? And only Bobby alone. Defuse starts to happen and Maya, just like that when their team needed it, is able to secure a second round for mouse plays. 
Yeah, and you have to say that the res coming up onto Yabu, absolutely huge. I mean, the showstopper could come online and that shuts down what could have been a dangerous moment. I mean, unless you're Ryan, the showstopper is basically a free kill, right? Mm -hmm. So there, once, once you get that down, you've isolated it into three versus one. The bomb isn't planted to be watched from main, which makes it so much easier. And that just allows Maya to take that fight and pick it up and get themselves back on the board. And I think while we're at it, uh, an interesting play I saw there, which could have not worked out for mouse plays, is they played towards that retake, 4v3. It was a good call. They were able to secure that one out. The Cypher setup, though, it, it's strange if you're playing weak side Cypher, playing backside, but putting your trips almost as if you're looking to defend. Because right now we see two trips on B. Martha's going to run through these, and there's not really going to be much effect to it. As the orc comes through, the rocket's there as well. Spotted catacombs on the side, oh. but the damage isn't enough. One HP, the peak across. Oh, how do you get away with your <laughs> life there, catacombs? That is a uh, top 10 riskiest moments, but managed to survive. The sprays just missing each other through the smoke, and Martha picks up one, looks for the second, but catacombs gets revenge from that all earlier. It takes out Martha now. Mouse plays in a very good position. Three players left alive. Kazumaru able to try and push down onto site, but not fan. expecting the player to be stood just beside the bomb. And Scully's picks that one off nicely. 6 2, really setting a commanding lead. Yeah, a really nice the play there from Scully's. And Mouse plays almost able to pull that one through. I, I love the spam through the smoke. They weren't able to find the shot, so Martha got one when they, they kind of shouldn't have. But this entry. The fact that that didn't kill is insane. I mean, it's proved it here. Always buy up full armor because you're going to need it for raise rockets and such. <laughs> but to, to carry on this point, I feel like if you're playing Cypher weak side, your traps need to be set to deny further space. They're already destroying your trips on the opening because they're contacting up. So instead, put your trips to watch it so that they can't peek through spawn. Put a cam for retake if you want to play retake and Cypher's going to have that useful utility. Whereas this setup kind of means that if Scully's finds their way onto site, Cypher just has their gun and nothing else, but they're not even going to go towards that site on this round as they're looking to go A. Grenade. Yep, take back A, but you've got both duelists sat up here. That satchel just peeks off after the paint shells and does manage to get one after a trade thanks to Bobby and Maya picking up that bucket. It seems to be probably the most high killing gun for mouse players. They love this bucket. It seems to work perfectly. Revive on Martha. It's not something you want to see if you are the mouse players team here trying to take back ramp control, but Rika set up perfectly for it. The swing coming in isn't going to get it. The TP to avoid the suck as well. Very clever. And now they have to deal with this flank control. Rika just causing so many problems. 2v3 now. Maya is in a position where maybe they can make some one enemy remaining. Smoke's available, but Martha gets one. Should be the second very soon. And I like what Mouse Plays did there. They, they were very calm, very succinct in clearing through ramps. I just feel like maybe they didn't have the weaponry that round going forwards. Now they're buying up rifles again. We can look to see if they can make a play happen. I feel like the one benefit that we're looking at here is... Scullies, while they're winning every round, their economy is super low. So one one round from the side of mouse plays should break this economy. Yeah, just about. And they'll have one more after. But if, if mouse plays win this round, the next round after is where it will start to come into effect. So they need to start pushing down the dominoes, like you say. Mouse plays, if they want to get back into it, can't let this one get too far away. Yes, there's only a couple rounds left in this half, but aggression of the start is maybe what exactly they needed to see putting it down the top and going to push it out of it as well not so much expected as the rest of this play is all in mid can gundam find the flank just unfortunate so unlucky such such a nice play as well i love the push through your own smoke but scully's just ready for it there is they're expecting maybe another one they know that mouse plays has to be aggressive it's a 4v2 they just contact up through into sight. Should be simple for them, but maybe, just maybe, we can see a big hole here from the mouse place players. Yeah, there's always a chance, but not really positioned in the best spots to be able to do it. The stun matched up with the paint shells and a slow orb just stops Maya even thinking about peeking onto site as that one comes in. And Spike now planted. 
majority of the players heading back towards main just to watch this from another point mm. and just play off each other. Both Mouse Plays players <clears throat> in Heaven area now dropped down from Catacombs. It's a really tough retake, Snow win. They need to isolate the 1v1s, and Scully's just not giving them any. Yeah, I like this. The ult is going to tell them everything they need to know, but they need to go quickly. These fights need to start happening as Maya peeks out. Bobby gets one, is going to get traded, and it's damage on the board, but Maya doesn't have enough time. I think they're going to have to save. They have to stick the bomb no matter what here, and Spicy Muffin just like that. Clutch is this one out. Yep, an 8-2 now. Timeout called. You've got to imagine most players are really starting to think what they can do. They've, they've tried a, a few different things, but yet to find an answer. And honestly, for me, is something you've highlighted before. It is that aggression at the start. I feel like most players, we've seen them try it a few times, but they haven't got the sight right, if you know what I mean. Like They've tried pushing out of like B, and then the hits came from A, and then it's been the opposite. They just need to get that one call right, but I know it's hard because it's a 50-50, but if they get that right, it could be a completely different round. And that's why mid control is so important because I feel like these sites are very easy to retake, very easy to hold on to if you can have heaven control. And mid control mm -hmm. gives you heaven control most of the time. And right now, Scully's uh, has either just gone hyper aggressive onto site, have just said, okay, we're just going to accept site and look to win our ones and play for the 1v1s, the trade offs of, of, trade -offs of each other. Or they've just spammed down that sage wall and just went through heaven every single time. And mouse plays hasn't really known what to do for it. And I feel like from this mouse play side, you need a bit more aggression because aggression gives you info. You flash out of garage, you flash out of A main, all of a sudden you don't see anyone on your peak. You know that they're not there. You know they have to be on the other side and it lets you manage your resources more effectively. Mm -hmm. So, mouse plays. Not fancied to win this round, although we have seen it before. If they were to go into the next half at 9-3, mm. fancying the fact that they're double duelist, but no initiator, do you see there being a, a potential for a comeback? I think there's always a potential. When one team 9-3 is on the attack half, you know that the other team can do the same thing as well. And it's almost like Scullies was watching the stream. They thought that maybe they'll see some aggression from <laughs> mouse players. They're expecting a set play through on the save round. So, so patient, but Mouse plays also just holding off, playing this one slow. Kind of, kind of feeling out what this Scully side want to do, and Maya going to have this initial fight. This could be big if they find this pick right here. Yeah, sneaky this Astra smoke, if it goes up at the right time, could be perfect. And it is. Gabby yeah, trying to spray through, but Poppy gets the spray back and that shuts everything down and really answers that one back is now straight to mid exactly what you said mid control is going to be vital the flash coming in for heaven to make sure nobody's going to peek through from that as it is left. only kaz maru in a spot to be able to do it but the sheriff is going to be difficult to work with can she get the time in but they would have heard the steps they might have heard the steps from behind, but they're not weary of it. Maya taking these initial fights. There's one on site waiting to play here. Kazamaru's behind them all. This could be high impact. Gets one, gets two. And just like that, a round that Mouse plays very much needed is on the board. Okay, so Caster said, let's see some aggression. Mouse plays say, no aggression. Mouse plays win. But, but... <laughs> No aggression, but risk. Maya, <laughs> normally we would, we would most of the time what they've been doing is taking maybe that initial fight and backing off. Maya commits to that fight on stairs, finds that pick. Same for Kazamaru, swings out rafters and just goes for those duels, which is not something that we had seen from Mouse Plays previously. Previously, they were giving up that space, letting Scullies kind of take what they wanted, but they fought for every inch on this one. Mm-hmm. They're starting to play this one a little bit slower once again. Only Catacombs committed onto A to hold this. Nobody mm. really in heaven. You do have Rays coming up here. Yabu thinking they can hold it down. Has to spray through the box a little bit just to deter and try and force the space to not be taken. Kazimaru's close is hitting in events as well. But Scully's happy just to play this slow, collect the orbs and wait for the push to come in. As Lissu gonna just 
plays for contact. Walking Page through three. here. Yabu just about gets up, but heaven has been gained. Kazamaru gets taken out by Martha, and that was such a key kill for the side of mouse plays that they didn't get. There's online for Maya. He's going to use that slow, but the, the rockets don't care. The satchels mean it doesn't matter. Gundam gets Lissu on the back end. Can maybe look for a res here, but Martha, the sixth sense, Reggie. <laughs> it's just so unfortunate. There's no one on site, so the rocket can't be fired, and ultimately... It's just going to get put into a place where someone's likely to be playing in it. They get they get caught out. And four versus three, you have the weapon raise, but the plant is down. The post plant setup is set there for the swings. They know where these players are going to be coming from, having taken fights over on A side, and they just need to hold and look at breach up in heaven, ready for someone to push through once that stage wall breaks down. Catacombs gets one. It's a 1v3 for Maya now. No information at all. Spicy Muffin clutches. I don't even want. Why am I saying clutches that one out? Spicy Muffin <laughs> gets a very simple kill to finish off the half for Scullies. 9 3. I feel like maybe not quite what I was expecting. This is Mouse Play's map pick, remember? But yep. as I mentioned before, Scully's very confident on this map. 100% win rate. and don't let this one slip away and the worry for me here is i kind of view astra as uh, a controller a initiator kind of sentinel hybrid like has a lot of utility to offer in different settings and I feel like it leans Astra towards more of a defensive role. So right now you've got these two duelists that are looking to enter. Catacombs looking for this initial fight. Rika, the only player here. Can they make something happen? Yabu gets that one. Catacombs gets another. And Mouse Plays wants to push that tempo right back at Scullies. Yeah, and this is the start that Mouse Plays needed at the start of this. But the Boombot going to force Catacombs back and just give a little bit of space in Mike to Clay. Scullies as they try and take Kevin control. The paint shells coming in, making sure no one's sitting close and underneath, but Blasting Catacombs up. still waiting so close. There comes a blast, but it's peaked round by Marsha. They just know, so they just know exactly where these players are. And they're going to take full advantage as Bobby peaks round and takes Catacombs. And now three Player versus standing. two retake, make that a three versus one. And Spicy Muffin has it all to do and finds nothing unfortunately and Kazmanu leading the resilience back four for nine as the pistols are picked up and mentally that's going to be very good for the side of mouse plays you don't want to get that double digits off that pistol round they were able to win that first one and quite cleanly to be honest they they went in super aggressive looked for those opening trades they found them pretty much the same thing that scullies did to them on their pistol round and mouse play showing that they can hit back and can play that same style. Yep, and let's say that's exactly what mouse plays needed. They, were, they couldn't allow it to get to 10, and then after 10, obviously, plus 1 equals 11. That's that's when it starts to, to fall apart from you, and they just need to keep momentum. Is, is, is Listen, it math that's, time? that's as far as my mathematical what's, what's, what's ability What's 11, okay. 11 plus 2? We, we get 13. We we counting up all the rounds as they go. <laughs> <laughs> Why was eleven such a distinct number for you? <laughs> because it's it's difficult. If it's eleven, if it's eleven three, it's it's almost game over, right? Listen, every day is a school day, and when we're out here trying to teach people how to count. Okay, well, you've now learned that after tall. ten comes eleven. If you weren't aware, <laughs> Lisu's about to learn though that you kind of need to be worried when there's three people outside your sight. But Scully's has the read. Four members hovering towards B. And they've made the totem pole. The famed totem pole. Will it work? It's the gunfire as it comes through. And Gundam able to trade out with two. You saw Carmen Corp do it. It had about the same effectiveness in this round right here. Yeah, absolutely none. As Gundam shoots everyone down. And puts another one on the board for Mouse, please. And what's four plus one? Are you adding it up with your fingers? Yeah, I I, I, I need to think about it. <laughs> I think it's fine. Get the calculator out. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Yay, round of applause. I, I didn't Google it, I promise. I, I haven't been cheating.
<laughs> Chat GPT, what is four plus one? <laughs> hey Siri, what's four plus one? <laughs> oh, it answered. <laughs> oh, I have confirmation it is five, if you weren't aware. It is five. Just in case, just in case. <laughs> but five, what comes after that, Veggie? What comes after that is this round that we are in, and it is mouse players looking to try and keep momentum on their side, but the rifles are now in the hands of Scullies and just about gets away with that one. It was the, the battle of the raises, the satchels are everywhere and Martha coming on top as you would expect from this performance so far. And not really too much gain from those players, just two players down. They have three left, the satchels invested and look Gundam on one HP and Kazmaru falls as well. And you feel like this round is definitely over. But it is a round that Mouse plays hadn't got full investment into. Was their bonus? Just looking for damage. I feel like Maya maybe going to try get a bomb plant on B. Looking for some of these individual fights. Scully's playing it super safe. They're just five stacking towards A. Bobby's just <laughs> swinging for info. Not even going to take that fight. Just playing yeah. it really patient because they don't want to lose a single rifle in this round. They don't, but Maya will be determined to take something, but only has a spectre. Three players waiting and ready for this fight. You see Rika looking to push up into the smoke and just reposition so that Maya does get out of here. It's a very much unwinnable situation, and that's exactly what happens. The reposition wins the round. Flawless victory for Scullies. Gets them onto 10. Double digits is always such a huge momentum swing for me. I feel like once you get onto 10, you can taste the 13, and once you can taste the 13, it's... It's done. What does a 13 taste like? Um, um, like a McDonald's breakfast. So very, very bad for you. <laughs> very, very bad for yeah, you. Yeah, but like... It's not good for you at all, but my no, but gosh, you need good. it. <laughs> yeah, especially on like a Saturday, like today, like when you woke up, maybe you've had a heavy Friday night and a McDonald's breakfast, just... Omen, you've got infinite smokes pretty much to back that wall up. Martha having to give up this space. Garage, but Kazamaru may be looking to run it back and send it in onto the site here, but it's a triple stack waiting for them. But will they be able to find an answer? The stun getting ready if anyone decides to push out of the smoke, and that would be the doom that you would not like to see. They run it back invested, but taken out so quickly and that shuts everything down no answers here Rika joining the support of back site and the swing comes in and does find one kill 35 they have to they kind of have to commit now unless they rotate right this second left. and it is a 5v3 I feel like maybe they're just going to try force it through catacombs on a nice lurk they're going to have to start thinking about that on the side of Scully wall comes through flashes there it's so good it's so clean it's so succinct but both players now. Info is there on them, but it's a 2v2, Veggie. Bobby finds that kill. Maya gets another. Bobby with it all to do. Peeks out. Gets a bit of damage. Yabu protecting that bomb plan. Almost with their life. As it's a Sage on Sage battle. And Bobby gets the three clay in a two versus four situation. Scully's manages to get that 11th round. Yeah, it's a Bobby's death clutching up for the team it was very much in the favor of scullies about don't know 30 seconds left to go and then mouse players just turned up and caused absolute chaos off of the back of that phoenix flash and then bobby was like no no wait a minute this isn't how the script's supposed to go i'm winning this one and puts scullies two away from victory on the first map and forces this time out from mouse players they need to come up with something they can't allow scullies to get another round but they feel like they will yeah, it's difficult for them because they played that round almost perfectly. But sometimes just that's that's the way Valorant works. One player's just feeling it. You know, you have these big moments, your yays, your ass passes, these players that can just make these things happen when they shouldn't. And in that round, Scully's, that duo, 
were, were just able to absolutely dominate in a situation that should have been going mouse plays his way. Yeah, and it's interesting. You see the tags coming in from mouse plays over on the A site. Are they thinking about trying a fast play? Maybe some satchels up onto heaven like we've seen before, but Ray's position very different to where that one's going to go, but now deciding to turn it. Every time I think they're going somewhere else, so they just turn around and go elsewhere. Like I'm, I'm just going to stop trying to make analytical calls and just fully focus on gameplay here. Yeah, I mean... Maybe this is why your ranked games haven't been working so well. <laughs> you keep predicting one site, they keep going the other. It's an absolute pain, but painful as that is, it's still not got to feel as bad as this 11th round being on the side of Scully. They want to make it 12. And Mouse plays has barely anything to work with, but they are going to hit fast onto this site. Lisu's the only player here. They have to find this kill as Yabu gets that one. And just like that, site's going to be taken and it gives Mouse Plays an opportunity. Yep, Catacombs searching for more here. Bobby hidden behind this wall, but three players from Mouse Plays pushed up and fighting into the screens. It's an interesting one, but Catacombs with a double tap, taking out Scully's chance of winning back screens. The flash comes in. Doesn't connect as this is falling apart so quickly. This eco round, massive 14 mouse plays here, and that should see them take the six. This Martha just playing back and going to save on to this Phantom. And I think, honestly, I will have to see the economy. I feel like maybe this save gives mouse plays a bit more of an opportunity than Scullies would have liked to see because you now give them all of those rifles. You don't damage their economy. They get out with four members alive and it was on their save. And yeah, we see that. Scullies would have been able to buy next round anyway. Regard oh no, they wouldn't have been. Yeah, so Scullies, already their economy is mm -hmm. kind of weak. I feel like saving one rifle doesn't affect your round that much. But if they're able to get a few more kills onto mouse plays, it can be really damaging to them. Because we see now, they all of a sudden are in the lead in the economy. And if they can grab some momentum, mouse plays could look to start to get a hold of this game because we've already seen their attack half has been so much better than their defense was. Yep. They're really finding the groove on this one. You said it at the start, I was yeah. I was a doubter, but you've managed to to convince me now that anything is achievable. And you know, if that's not motivational for mouse plays, this could be like the, the story of the ages. Mouse plays all but down and out. And here they are fighting to stay in this map and ensure that they go into the next on an advantage but slow start here baiting out some utility over b when the rest of the team playing on a and three members kind of hovered towards mid as it looks like it might be a possible contact play up towards a maybe that last round gave them all the info they need to know it's just this cypher pretty much anchoring all alone and this is going to be a bit cheeky with this bookie Sneak up that little bit closer. And this could make or break the round for Scullies right here. Yep, here it comes. Can they find one? They do. The Gundam answers back quickly before that got out of control. And that should be a site in Mouse Play's side. Catacombs left. playing up, looking to take as much space on Heaven as well and deny anything. But the Bucky is continuing to oh, reign no. supreme in this matchup and almost gets a double. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh no! Veggie! This should have been Mouse Blazer's round! And Scully's! With some buckies! Just manage to make it a three versus one now as Kazamaru. No time, no way to get this bomb on. Gonna look for maybe the kills, and that's gonna be it. Flash comes through from Rika. They're just gonna save these rifles. Where are they? Is a lovely flick there. A nice headshot puts them on to that map point. And just when we thought that Scullies were kind of out for a couple of rounds and Mouse players were going to be able to start making that comeback, these individual plays win out just once again. Yep, I did not realise the Bucky was as goatee as it seems to be in this matchup. I've never seen it used so much and find so much value, but both of these teams seeming to be masters of the shotgun and making them count when it matters. They're making it count. As we head into this round, instant aggression from the side of Scullies. They want this 
second is about to be over. Kazamaru's going to go down, but it's only the ult. Gundam trades that one out. Kazamaru gets another. And while it's aggression from Scullies, it will be kills to the side of Mouse Plays. And now one member left the site, but it is Rika. Has been such a dominant force in this game at times. As the peek out is there, gets one, gets two. And all of a sudden like that, Mouse Plays are left in a one versus two. And just like that, Scullies just manages to pull that one out. Yeah, I mean, that was, was kind of hectic there, right? <laughs> I mean, this this should never happen. This should just not happen. Manages to find three kills there. I, I don't yeah. even know what to say. <laughs> there's, there's not much. There's nothing you can say, let's be honest. You see the Rolling Thunder message right at the very start. You knew it was going to be a chaotic round, but you could never have called it that much. I mean... <laughs> Kazimaru pops and run it back it gets taken away straight away thankfully that was popped just in time which meant a, basically a respawn rebuy into the arena to play back again the, the gunfights go the way of mouse plays they start to push forward and then Rika's there just 3k <laughs> your speechlessness is enough to say it all it's just a chaotic end to what was effectively a very chaotic game I can't even compartmentalize into words the chaos of that last round. <laughs> Mouse plays played around that breach all perfectly. We saw someone peek out to save Kazumaru. Kazumaru then peeks out to save another member, and you're like, yes, the trades are so good, they're playing off of each other. And then Rika, just out of nowhere, gets mm -hmm. not one, not two, but three kills in a position where Mouse plays knew, knew where they were. And I feel like maybe. They were just so eager to get onto site. They had won that fight out. They were like, yes, this is the site. We can get this. We can find our, our way into this game again. And they aren't able to find those kills. And just like that, when Mouse Plays had a glimmer of hope in that last round, Rika just rips it away from them. Yep, absolutely. Now, we'll talk match MVP just really quick. I'll probably highlight Martha, right? Because the Ray's ability to... To satchel and take so much space but i feel like bobby also came up really huge in a lot of moments yeah bobby was so good at just finding it was just so consistent i feel like martha was so so good on the attack off of just finding entries having these three or four kill rounds for like bobby every round you expected if they were in a 1v1 they were going to win that fight out they were always <laughs> able to just consistently find those kills and it mattered so much for the side of Scullies. But we're going to have to see where it heads to in map two because Scullies won that first one out, but you know the side of Mouse Plays aren't going to be happy about it. So make sure you don't go anywhere because we're going to find out how it goes right after this.
give it to you G straight And a mouth beat say I'm not a human being Ballin' like Kareem, sippin' on codeine I lean with it, rock with it, got coke dreams Boom, back, boom in the trap When trap meets house, you get a trap house Got two stacks, throw it at a strip dancer Big booty hoe, said she from Atlanta Black kids call me a cracker, white kids call me a beaner Ain't lunch in school alone cause I didn't fit in with either They told me that I can't rap, did you forget your ethnicity? But looking back from now they couldn't see what God had planned for me Let me get it, let me put it down, one time for anybody out there following their dreams Anybody in the city with a two job so they can get two bigger better things You can't see that, I was at a quarter end Every day and night, go to every trick or right, go to every bit of main Just to hit them with the fade, when I stick it to the people that told me that I couldn't, yeah After all of the years of young OG were found I finally learned that it's okay that I'm not white or brown And though the people looking sideways drive me crazy You can't take my pride from me I'm cool with the way God made me, yeah But the way you react, I can tell that you hatred and tech You call me dirty, uneducated, illegal and fat We're the top to black lives matter And I said Latinos do too And they told me check your white privilege Boy, this is not about you We gonna make it, ooh, we gonna make it I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it, ooh, Gonna make it. God had it not by my side. Ain't no way that you can fade it. Listen, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 down. you, you, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 down. you, you, you can't hold me down. Got grandpa that was German, got grandpa that's a Mexican But don't you say that round and get corrected, we American Family multicolored from the darker to the fairest skin And though we share the same blood blows my mind, they still think less of him They can fit with the self-hate, got the shit from the wounds to the cut deep So when other people say we got retaliate, man it's our own hearts that are too weak Seeking for the red flags in the bad plate, feel like the tenth one I seen this week Man that's the type of thing that made me go crazy, uh, how can this be America? Still get misidentified, some think that I speak Arabic Heard it all before, from cowl head down to a terrorist The butt of all your jokes, I got my hand up on a bomb trick But sometimes it get brutal, boy, you just a stupid sin Your ignorance astounds me so much that I can't even get mad But then I think about my cousins who don't have the same privilege I have Like if things are this bad for me, how much worse is it than for them With no white side for them to lean on, gotta give it up to Jesus in the end We gonna make it gonna make it, I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it, ooh we gonna make it, ooh we gonna make it, God had it not by my side, ain't no way that you can fade it, listen, you can't hold me down, you can't hold me down, you, you, you can't hold me down, you, 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 down. you, you, you can't hold me down, you can't hold me down, you, you, you can't hold me down, you, 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 down. you, you, you can't hold me down. I ain't gonna miss the things you got for me 
There's beauty in the mess you where I ought to be Why be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a life for your problems, I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you, yeah Never been a mix-up Blessings in my hand I don't wanna miss some Everybody eat I be on your team Lions that grow weak We you nothing's missing God, I lay in surrender What I'm trying to prove by having an answer Nothing I could do Your love is forever I'm inside your love Enough with the pressure That's why I don't need no Two, two, threes Yeah, you watching me Shadow on your wings And I've been hiding underneath I can see you lighting my feet Start living cause you died for my freedom You ain't worry about nothing So I won't worry about nothing Yeah, 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 yeah I ain't gonna miss the things you got for me There's beauty in the mess you where I ought to be Why I be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a life for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Days turn to seasons, taking time away If my faith ever frees up, I know you'll be the flame Never would you change your love I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a life for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Welcome back. We are here for map number two of this series between the Scullies and Mulls plays. So you look like you're ready for the snow, funnily enough, um, but are you ready for Fracture? Yeah, man's a bit cold. Last game was frosty, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, when they bring me on these things, they, they don't expect this. They always say, you know what, can you calm down? Can you not do the silly voices? And I'm like, yeah, what are you saying, bro? What are you saying, fam? Yeah, you say I can't put on the bomber jacket, look dope, and do the voices. Not about that. That's what you bring me in for. Um, <laughs> but in terms of that, 
The reason I'm wearing the jacket is because it's cold. It's frosty. You saw how Martha played some of those those clutches last game. Bobby as well. All these players, they're so good in these clutch situations. Rika in that last round. Oh, as soon as they happened, the ice just started like flowing from the skies. And now, heading on to Fracture. A map that is just, with how chaotic and how aggressive both teams were in that first game, I'm expecting the same kind of pace, the same kind of style from both teams, and I am excited for the chaos. Yeah, I feel like you're going to be taking your, your jackets off and putting the sunglasses on, because I feel like it's going to heat up a little bit. It's, it's definitely not going to be frosty. There's going to be no calm moments. This has everything that it could be to be just an absolute brawl. And that, that's, that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting to see both teams probably picking Phoenix again. But maybe a couple Neons. I don't know why you would have more than a couple, but you never know. Um, and then Controllers, I'm hoping we don't see Astra. Cause I, don't, I mean, we had this conversation off here. Like, I don't think it had too much. But you're now going to come and say, yeah, pick Astra. On Fracture, nah. I feel like <laughs> the thing then. is with Fracture, and Boaster actually talked about this in Fnatic, and why Brimstone is such a big pick on it is because mm -hmm. on Fracture, your executes are fast. Your executes need to be swift because it's it can be so easy for defenders to set up little little ratty crossfires, little off angles that they can play off each other. And so Brim kind of negates that because you can hit sites fast, you can hit sites hard, and you can just pretty much overwhelm them through that initial aggression. And it's what Brimstone is pretty much best at. And so I'm expecting to see that as the smoker pick for both of these teams. What I am surprised by is the double duelist from Scully's. I'm not too... I, I, I've i seen the double duelist come out before, but I wasn't expecting it to be on Lissu. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's not... I, I think if we were to have spoke who or what team would expect double duelist from, it would have most definitely been most plays after that last map. But now, completely showing that Scully's have another layer, and it's important to highlight that this is their map pick. So this is something that's obviously been well practiced into this and well versed. And they're going to have some solid ideas of, well, how to attack. And that's what they're going to be starting off on. So we'll get to see what they bring through. They'll be looking to take as big a lead as possible, similar to, to the last map to make sure that it doesn't fall apart. But with these double duelists, you need to make your attacks count. And I mean, what I will say is it offers them a lot more opportunity in terms of picking up this operator. When you get to that defensive half, that jet can look for these aggressive peaks, can look to find those opening picks, which can be so, so good on Fracture, especially for this defense side, because it's so hard to split your resources between four of these entrances. And I, I'm interested to see how this setup is going to go, actually, because we see this cut side of mouse players playing four towards A, and just that Killjoy alone on B looking to anchor that one down. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's Pistol, so maybe they're wanting to take a little bit of aggression off the bat, but that will be answered by a lot of push coming in from Scully's here, looking to come up and to be peeking through onto dice and nading up onto tower to make sure no one's going to peek there. And this Killjoy is going to come under all the pressure in the world, but the players have been called in, the rotates are now starting to catch up, and this is all going to central through from Generator. Spike planted. Mouse plays on a retake situation. They have that sofa. It's a, an agent we saw work really well for EG as they've already found the one kill. Make that two. Yabu looking to push the pace here early, but Scully's does not want that to happen. Moving forwards onto site, Lisu. Both these players actually in tower. And there's still utility to stall them out. Defuse is going to start happening and the aggression needs to be there too as Bobby's taken out. And just like that, Mouse Plays makes a statement in this opening round. Yep. Strike first and keeping three alive. It's not really relevant how many are alive at the start of the end of Pistol, but it means that you've won the fights better than you have on previous rounds. Well, obviously the previous maps in this case. But they'll be looking strong and they'll be hoping that they can now take the two advantage, especially being on defence here. The pressure is on Scully's to be attacking this strongly. And as you've highlighted, Mouse plays very happy with how this is going. And it is obviously only that first round. We're going to see that that famed Bucky that got a few rounds out for Mouse plays in that last game. See if they can make use of that again. It's Martha not leading the charge on this one. We see Bobby actually on that Killjoy. 
being that entry killjoy looking for a pick there. Not able to find anything, but does gather some info. They know it's a weak behold at the moment. But look at your mini maps. There's a flank coming through from the north side of the map. It gives them so much knowledge. The timing could be absolutely everything on this snow. Do they catch it? It's been spotted, and that's just going to be enough to run the back from both parties onto Seaside Catacombs, opening up the kills onto Lissu. And that's going to start allowing a little bit more pressure to be taken as Maya also catches out Martha, trying to get a little bit too much down. The Catacombs find another one, but the plant's down. Plant's down, but the retake is fast, and the retake is aggressive. <laughs> One versus five, not able to really do much there. Rika finds the one kill. And this is going to be the second round. Super clean, super succinct. Mouse plays really putting their foot down after that last game. And it's good to see that the mental isn't affected. Yeah, but this is this is a buy round now coming in from Scully's. This is where the damage starts to be done. But as you said, Mouse plays feeling good. Four left alive as well. It's key to highlight it on this point. That's a lot of guns and a lot of money being kept in circuit for the rest of these games to go through. Scullies have to just make sure they don't start to lose this one and drop into the bonus as they start to look into A. This could be fast. This could be the, the, the pace that I've been expecting. Moving forwards now. They have to be careful for some of these sneaky angles because once again, we mentioned it before, save for mouse plays, just the bonus playing here. So the weapon is going to, weapon advantage is on the side of Scullies. And it looks like they want to go fast as Martha's already found one kill. Rotates are coming through, but Lissu's already out onto site. Doesn't manage to find another one, it's two kills over for mouse plays. They are holding this site, they're keeping the line. Bomb can't go down just yet. And they seem to have stopped the onslaught so far. And the Aries spam is enough to stop anything. The second attempt out to get the plant does come in. The shock dart being employed to try and push it off, but it's not going to be enough. The second one now coming in. Rolling Thunder pushed back to stop anyone in mouse plays getting any space. And it's enough just to buy some time. So a little bit. Scully's two players left alive, having to reposition. Only three left for mouse plays though. And Scully's went into it. It's a nice shot. Catacombs picks up one as well. And they swing round. And Maya, mouse plays, get the third round. Okay, did like production get this wrong or something? Or the map man's the other way around? Because we saw <laughs> Scully's absolutely slaughter on the mouse plays split map pick. And now mouse plays are making Scully's look a bit silly so far in these opening rounds. And it's. You know, we look at this replay here, look at this aggression as they're just so willing to take these fights. That confidence has not been knocked at all. Yeah, and I'm thinking on the side of Scully's, what's going wrong, right? That there has to be something that's not been fully utilised. And I, the only thing that's kind of coming to my mind right now is the util usage combo. We've not seen too many... Breach stuns with nades. Yes, we've just seen the paint shell and the stun come through and it, it got a kill that time. But there's not been enough combination play and smart play off the back of a flash dashing on the site and capitalising on it. And you see a blind peak coming through there and Kazuma is able to capitalise, pushes away, uses the aftershock to force anybody in tower away for a second. And it's enough time to buy Yabu in to get two kills. She has the paint shells back online, chucks them down and denies a little bit of the plant for a second. And it's all falling apart here. Scullies, they did half buy on this one, so not around that they were really expecting to win, but they would have liked some damage out of it. And I feel like in combination of what you said, that utility isn't having the same effectiveness as we saw on Split. Also, this double duelist aren't really managing to link up together. Like we see Lisu going in alone, separate from Martha. I feel like part of the double duelist combo is is you get massive amounts of space from both mm -hmm. of them being able to dash onto site and they take those fights together. But we haven't seen that so far. Yeah, maybe that's exactly what's been needed. I'm expecting to see some flashes, some dashes and some satchels all at once. And that would really capitalise on a lot of space. It blinds your opponents and means you can just run in. Oh. And I love this early, early info all from mouse plays. Gets a little bit of damage done there. Yeah, quite a chunk off of off of the Scully's breach player and that will cause some 
sort of push back, make sure they don't attack too fast. And he's stunned. Yeah. Mostly he's just playing at utility perfect right now. And this is already onto site. Turret gonna go down. Molly's popped as well as the battle is here, and it is going the way of mouse play so far. Can this bomb get put down? They have to take that fight in main. And Scully's with no real info. They end up having to give up the A site. They claimed it. They got rid of it. They're looking to take it back. They don't know what they want to do at the moment. But they are managing to pull rotates back over towards B from Mouse Plays. Yep, and Lissu just holding really tight. Knowing that a huge play could come up if she catches anyone off on the lurk. But not aware that Ray's is so left. close behind. And the spike now making its way back to A. Yabu could find value here. Pikachu gets one. Looks for another. Picks up the jet. An insane flick. Dashes around the corner of that satchel. But decides to link up. They just don't know what to do. Nope, they just do not have the answer. The phone is ringing, but nobody is at home to pick it up. It's going to go to voicemail. And I just don't know. The, the most, most plays, I mean, you have to give the credit to them, right? We've, we've said it just there. Their utility is very much close to perfect. And Yabu is just having an absolute brilliant game. 11 and 1, yeah. I think that just said. Like, you, you can't do much when there's a raise firing, there's a raise firing. And it was a round that could have maybe gone the way of Scully's, but we just didn't see it happen right there. Yabu with a huge play, like you said. Lissy. Let's see if Lissu can do something with these knives. His ability to pop those, maybe Stay find a pick themselves, but mouse plays stacked over towards A. And we've seen a lot of early rotates from this team, so maybe that's where Scully's can look to to possibly find that gap is put a bit of pressure mm. onto one side, rotate back to the other. But committing into here, the stun up top, but Kazimaru is ready and picks up a double kill, but Bobby is going to answer back and take out that breach. But here one comes a site being hit and Martha Spike coming back eight. online. But it's a one versus three and has to dash away, but the Odin... Okay. Okay is the apt response to that. The Odin should never be losing the fight to the Stinger. And now Martha in a good situation here, but the spike in no man's land. Has the phantom still though? Weaponry and time is in their advantage. 50 seconds now. If they can isolate some a 1v1 on one of these players, it could be just what they need. But Yabu, ahead of the game. And I feel like that's a bit cheeky there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I understand it though, because Catacombs... What you it, it's super important because most players there you, you see that and you're like, yep, Race gets that free kill. Let's catacombs go for the peak for a very big reason. They get the ult off of it. Mm -hmm. They get the kill jewel ult now. They have access to that on this round. And while it's such a small thing, it can have such a big impact. Yeah, the space that can be taken back with that is unparalleled to anything, and it's one of the reasons why Killjoy is such a high pick rate. I mean, I think you're, t you're talking almost 100% on majority of maps, and the lockdown is a, a huge factor in that. Let's see. You should run. These contact plays they work so well for Scully's on split, but so did that aggression. Let's see if maybe, maybe they can have a similar kind of thing, but peak help from Yabu, this star player in this game so far, finds another kill, but is alone in tower. And just like that, Scully's has managed to find themselves in such a good situation. But the breach, oh, the fast retake is there. Maya takes one down and the forces are coming. The reinforcements are there. The peaks out from the smoke, though. And Scully's just always finding a way to make these situations work. Yeah, answering back, ended. but Gundam's there once again with this Odin looking for the kills. But Bobby gets Scully's onto the board, tries to get the plant. For the extra money as well and will not get it but scully's finally back on the map and starting to look like they can possess a fight but i mean you just have to say yabu is just absolutely firing and really ensuring that mouse plays keep a dominant lead
12 and 2. Monstrous performance right now. Some of these rounds wouldn't even be won if Yabu was not playing in this game. Mm -hmm. But it is a round back for Scullies. Maybe they can redeem it, get themselves that 6 6 half. They have access to this breach ult now. But they're heading into all of this killjoy utility. But Mouse Plays is completely unaware. They're all on the north side right now. Yeah, Killjoy went uh, a little walk a little bit too far, shutting off that that utility in the take. Not usable, and it could be dangerous. Right but you see Catacombs set up underneath, ready to use this ult. It's the ult you see all the time. It clears out the whole of sight, and that's going to force Air Scullies into all sorts of places and really push them in to where Mouse Plays are set up to catalyze. And two kills coming in so quickly. The third one coming in for Yabu. In this round, you have to feel it's over with both remaining <laughs> players detained, but... Let's who? Wait, what? Let's Wait, take what? it one. <laughs> oh my days, that was almost a control marking moment. Sitting behind everybody, but... Thankfully for most players, it does not come into disadvantage. And it's almost textbook perfect retake. You see there, Killjoy ult comes through. The Brim ult onto site to force players into the Killjoy ult as well. And they just combo that utility so well. Two players are detained. A little bit. A little bit <laughs> sus from Maya right there. But what is... What? <laughs> I'm service, why? Why, why, is, why is Ray's cross-eyed? Why is... <laughs> so close scared me <laughs> scullies did a really good job there of predicting where mouse plays was going to be found their way onto site but mouse plays was so confident in their retake and they just have been this entire half yeah they've, they've had the answers they've had everything that they've needed and this i'm surprised we've not seen a timeout come a lot earlier from scullies they're they haven't really looked like they've been in a place to to pick up the rounds and 7-1's obviously the breaking point. Maybe they thought the comeback was potentially coming on. But the adaptions are going to have to come in now. Shall we see the duelists play together like we've been asking for? Who knows? I, I, I feel like that has to be the solution. Play with the breach, play off the stuns, and entry together, take as much space as possible, and then keep pushing, right? That's something that yeah. we haven't seen too much of, and it's what Fracture really needs is once you take the space, don't just give the space back up. Take as much as possible, and if you've got the raise and jet, you have no reason why you can't take so much more space. Yeah, I feel like that's especially prevalent on this B site. If you're not finding your way towards Jen, if you're not finding your way up through Canteen, you just give so much space back to the defenders. And especially when they've been taking such good control of the north side, it, it's not even been contested by the side of Scullies. Their retakes are so easy because they know there's only two places they can be, and that is site and main. Oh, this could be absolutely vile. From Kazamaru, if any sound is given, if they even touch the orb, she could pop through these doors and just shut everything down. But patiently playing, no sound cues given out on A quite yet. Oh, no. But it's going to start coming now. Oh, and I would have loved to see them just, just get a bit greedy on that. Walk through towards Sands, but we're not going to see it here. As, no more. Except for the retake, Maya finds such a good position on that one. Clearing out that corner. And these retakes are patient. And as I say that, Yavu just wants more kills. Wants to farm those eco frags. Kaza feels like maybe they want, want a little bit of action as well. Yeah, the patient play is stopped. It's half that's been stuck. But the paint shells come in. The bullets go flying. And Scullies get themselves back on the board. The Thrifty coming in. And the timeout coming good. And it was... It looked like a lot of patience there from the side of mouse plays, but then at a certain point they just decided, oh, let's just try kill them. We see Yabu just sending it into main, one versus four, and Kaza pretty much doing the same thing. Bomb was half, they weren't able to play off those fights. It was just a little bit too chaotic from mouse plays in that round, and I thought maybe that round would have been a struggle for Scullies, as, like I said, they didn't really take much of that space, they just accepted sight. <laughs> But they're able to win those fights out when they needed to. Yep, they got the job done, and at the end of the day, that's that's what matters. If you get the get the win, you get the win, and you put points on the board. And ultimately, if you get enough points on the board, you you win the map. That's how this game works. Is this like another counting the veggie <laughs> thing? Is this like 
How to win at Valorant. Kill more enemies than they kill of you. That's Thanks, not how you win. I mean, true. <laughs> you can lose like that. Okay, true. You can. You can. But Scully's taken a bit of my advice and they've already got that opening pick in the round. They don't want to play like Veggie and, uh, and go for these ninja defuses. But Yabu getting one back there. And this retake... It's been so good for mouse players. They're not even worried about trying to stop them taking sight. Nope, the lockdown is going to give it up, but the challenge will be can Scully's hold on to it as the rest Fight of the team all holding down by Generator and Canteen waiting for the right moment to push. None of Scully's deciding to challenge us, just holding up into tower and off of dice waiting for it. The Rolling Thunder is invested now, the set up perfect through and Spicy Muffin gets a kill, so does Martha and this retake slightly falling away but Catacombs picking up a very nice kill and expecting their way through, Kazumu on another one, turn it up, can they get the defuse and stop this Rika doing what they've done best on the previous. Catacombs just like that but is there enough time? Yes, there is. Yeah. Plenty of time. Loads. Two seconds Loads left. Why time. was I even worried? Why was I even worried? But we saw a round there from Scully's. The sight take was nice. 4v4. But sometimes it's about hitting those shots. And Martha, unlucky, the angle advantage was on the side of Catacombs. An 8 to 2 now. It's a complete flip of last game, Veggie. It really is. And. I want to just say once again how surprising it is, not just because of how good Scully's looked on the previous map, but the double duel is set up on attack, and you're only being able to pull two two rounds so far. Like if that's me going into my defense, I am petrified of how that's going to be going. Your duelists haven't found much value. I mean, yes, duelists can be effective on defense. We've seen that in the previous matchup with an Amy on Neon actually getting a load of kills, but you have to just think at times, this is not going to be worth it. It's Yabu peeking around the perfect time and taking out Martha, and that's one of your duelists gone. But they do have a second one, and that is the benefit of the double <laughs> duelist. One's down, <laughs> but we have, we've had first duelist, yes. But what about second duelist? But let's see. No longer going to have access to that dash, so that entry potential is a little bit lowered. And Gundam just spraying through this smoke. A wall of bullets stopping anyone from finding their way through. As Yabu gets another. And look at that movement. It's so clean. Oh, Yabu. One enemy remaining. This is almost the definition of a perfect half for Mouse Plays. They're winning every fight. They're getting the defuses. They're giving up sight when they need to. But they're just cleaning it up they're they're literally like a cleaner they just walk in and get the job done and go and home happy the surprise Last for me is that it, it hasn't even come off the back of like an operator or anything like that like we see eg when they play this kind of similar style of comp they get an operator they look to take these early peaks these early angles and find those opening picks and it essentially makes fracture so much harder to play when the attacking side can't really get that opening space that they're used to and mouse players has just said no we're gonna play heavy retake yabu 20 kills in 11 <laughs> rounds two kills per round almost that's an insane stat it really is absolutely fine but it's i was going to say they've been set up by the team but like it's, it's not even all the time a lot of the time yabu is just killing everyone for the fun of it and having no real impact not not impact sorry no real like force behind it of anyone backing them up it's just a case of i want to kill you get out of my lobby goodbye and scully's just haven't had the answer for it and we are going to see a nice right little there. rotate coming in over to b but mouse players haven't moved a muscle they don't need to there's been no pressure no pressure onto site just yet they are going to start to get an inkling is that always going to stop any push one kill already down Bobby taken out by Maya there. And just like that, Scully's has to run away with their tail between their legs. Lissu trying to find a little bit of a lurk. Instantly smoked off though. 
but dashes out, finds one kill, almost gets a second, but Gundam is just that little bit quicker. And they're, they're looking to fight. They don't even want to stay back. They don't even want to defend. At this point, they're already ready for attack, Veggie. Yep, the, the mentality is switching. They know they're only one round away, so they might as well start. They can throw the rounds if they want. 9 at 2 is a very good score, and Spicy Muffin is looking to add on to this to get the third for Scullies. There's two players left alive for Mouse Plays. The time's starting to dwindle down, but the plant now invested in. There comes a Molly to try and prevent any cross and just hold into that position, but Gundam knows if someone pushes out, they will be mowed down. The peak. Gonna come through. There's no way to isolate a one versus one right now. It's gonna be a crossfire, no matter what. The jiggle, the peak is there, the swing from the other side. And Scully's finds themselves a third round, but it's three Switching enough sides. on the attacking side of Fracture. If it comes back to the, the same answer, I, I just don't think it is. Especially when you've got the double duelist. There's, yes, we spoke about this in the previous map of the never give up, never never let go attitude. But when you're set up so attackingly, you have to feel that unless you're going super aggressive on your defence, which would be surprise me considering we've never seen them be super aggressive on their attacking round, that this should start to build up for mouse plays, especially if they pick up the pistol again, you, you would have to think we're, we're going to be going to map three. And the comeback, if it is to happen, has to start right here. They need to find this opening ground on the side of Scully's. And we spoke about aggression, but it's three people peeking into five. The stun is there, the peek out. So far, it all <laughs> goes the way of mouse plays as a grenade takes out two. And just like that, series might be heading to a game three as Yabu gets a third and they want this game to end as soon as possible yeah they want that map they want Spike to be planted. playing over on Haven if they can you have to fancy how they've looked so far as there's only one that left alive from Scully's but it is Bobby who's won up a lot of these moments before, but that paint shell is just going to knock her back ever so slightly, tries to play off contact with the turret, but Maya's ready and does pick up that headshot and puts mouse play into double figures and three away from the first map. Three. The same round score that right now is possessing and they had to grind for those rounds. Those rare rounds they got were so tough fought, they weren't easy. Whereas Mouse Plays has, has kind of just been making their game, this game their own. Yabu, 23 kills. This honestly looks like a Radiant player smurfing in a silver lobby right now. They Wherever they go, this player finds kills. Mm -hmm. They are just finding value in every little bit of the action that they do and will continue to do so unless Scullies can quickly come up with an answer. And it doesn't look like they have it. They're playing for the double swing here on A main. And it could work if a flash comes in to prevent anything. But right now, nothing really set up apart from a demolition as Gundam mows half a Scully's team down and puts them into a very good position. It's just cattle to the slaughter at this point. It there's there's not really much that Scullies can even do. It seems like mentally maybe they're a bit broken. That pistol round definitely didn't help them. 11 rounds should be going the way of mouse plays. With Bobby, nothing but a ghost and a dream right here. We would have to be asleep to see that ghost. That's not how that works. I'm losing my mind. But <laughs> you know what else is losing? It's Scully's on this map so far as mouse plays get to 11 and 2 away from victory. And to be honest, it's kind of like their namesake because right now all that's left is skeletons. Dead bodies across the floor. As Mouse plays, it, just everything has gone right for them. And this is just such an impressive game from Yabu. We keep mentioning it, but it's just, it's just how insane this player is doing right now. 24 kills in, in almost half of that many rounds is just unheard of. Yeah, especially when the closest to them is 11. It just puts into just... They're literally taking out 
half the team every every round and the stun the utilities we've mentioned it so many times but mouse players just have the correct utility combos for this map they're making everything count they're not pushing tower without a stun and that's exactly why you see players getting caught because they don't have an answer to it they're peeking in positions that are disadvantaged for them and mouse plays looking really good as they just call a quick rotate a has now been abandoned some pressure being kept over on b but it's not going to be enough and this late lurk from gundam could just change everything this was around scullies they need to win this it's their gun round it's their buy round if they go into match point without those rifles their hopes are just gone and mouse plays it's taken a little bit too long to get onto sight but scullies are so weary is this peek out from gundam should just start this site entry, but left. no, it's going to be a rotate back towards B once again. The fake day, they're going B again, and there's so much space claimed for Gundam, but Rika steps up when they need the most. Yeah, and Yabu here on 9 HP with a Spectre. 13 seconds left to go. Left. This is an almost unwinnable positions, but when it's Yabu left alive, you never know, but... Scully's pop up, get the fourth onto the board and keep this match definitely not in touch and distance, but keep themselves away from match point for the very least. And they'll be very thankful the fact that they're able to keep three rifles alive. Gives them a nice buy coming into this next round, but it is going to be a full buy from the side of Mouse Plays. So that is the difficulty here. Is that, that round, Scully's, you're expected to win this one. Not so much in Yabu has access to that ultimate. Yep, the showstopper that could be the end of Scully's match on Fracture, but we'll have to see what comes in. There's a nice little default being set up here from most players not committing anyone to either side. A couple of players waiting to pinch on to B site. And they've quietened the pace down a little bit they were aggressive early on in these early rounds they're trying to see what scullies are going to do see if there's any aggression out from them just playing a little bit more contact trying to gather out as much info as they can but this east side of the map is completely open the a site the a side dish look at all that space that i mean to be fair scullies doesn't even know about but they seem to possess as a peek out from three but it's traded one for one Comes the showstopper coming in, fired, and it's a hit on to Martha, the fellow Rays. And B site is now theirs. Gundam yep. controlling tower, yep. Spike Yabu just planted. can't miss. Every single one of these shots just hitting the mark. They're just cracked, is the answer. <laughs> she once again picking up the kill on Delissa. Doesn't care if there's buildings in the way. We're just going to shoot through them and get the kill regardless. And that flash, enough to start Rika pushing through. Time quickly dwindling away from Scully's on this round. They need to make a play fast if they want to try and stay in this round, but you feel like a save should be on the cards, just play back. You've got no chance of winning now. They would try and take a couple of vandals, but Rika ready to make that call. The blind comes in, is going to take them one, but Yabu connects, looking for the fourth and does pick up the fourth on a kill. And just boosts that average combat store score if anything else yeah observers why are we even watching another pov just get us on just get us on right every single round i just want to see what this player is doing almost 30 kills in 15 rounds veggie yeah how can a player be this consistently good throughout a whole <laughs> map especially after the performance we saw from last game it's a complete switch for mouse plays on Scully's map. It's it's crazy how this has happened for both teams. It's literally night and day. It's, it's been a complete switch. And Yabu is the full centerfold of it. And here we are in Yabu's POV. It's the world that we see. And they are getting ready to ascend onto this site and punish the rest of the team for it. And look at this player. So confident. Is just so willing to take those opening picks and those opening peaks and five members from Scully's find their way on A and there's going to be no one on this B site. Mouse plays, 
they must have been rubbing the crystal ball because they are just predicting the future. They have called the rotate now. They just need to get onto site fast to make it count. The Hellfire going to confirm that no one's in tower and allow the rest of the team to catch up and push. And now you see Yabu going aggressive, looking for the extra space, and it will catch these Scully's players out of a dish if this flash doesn't connect. The stun will, however, flash up next, but you've got up and down covered if the peak comes round. And Yabu looking to get the kill. Doesn't find one, but Kazamaru is there this time to pick it up and Gundam getting the second. But there's Yabu on the score sheet. And it's all over. Win. It's all she wrote. Mouse plays 13 and 4 on Fracture. And it's just, it's that chaotic play that came through from them. As this series seems to be heating up just a little bit, Veggie. So I felt like I had to take the coat off, put on the yeah. summer shirt, put on the sunglasses. Because we're going to be heading into a map 3 next. And a series which we thought might be going all the way of Scully's. Now looks a lot more even. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one to call, and it will, like you say, it all come down to this map three on Haven. And, I mean, it's hard to make a call because what teams are we going to see? Like, are we going to see the, the Scullies from Split, or are we going to see the Scullies from Fracture? And you say the same about Mouse Plays. It depends which form of them turn up, is exactly how this match is going to go, and I'm excited to see how it plays out. Yeah, um, I'm interested because obviously Haven, a map pick that neither of them chose but veggie you gave mvp from that first game on who you thought really popped off you said it was bobby second game who from mouse <laughs> plays i wonder i wonder he's going to be your mvp for that map you know what i think yeah. you may underplay it a little bit but if i if i had to it's, it's hard to pick an individual yeah. so yeah. it re really is but if you dig mm. deep into the figures yeah Kazimaru on five first bloods is pretty big on breach, so you can't you can't overlook that. However, I think there's maybe one player that just shines up a little bit above the rest, and you've got to say it's Yabu, right? It's, I mean, twenty nine and six, almost thirty kills in seventeen rounds is absolutely nasty. And just like that, we're going to be heading over to this map three. Who's going to win? Is it going to be the mouse play side? Or are they going to be caught in a trap in this next game? Make sure you don't go anywhere. Because we're going to be back right after this game. This break. What am I saying? Stress, I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah Switch up, never been a mix up Lessons in my hand I don't wanna miss them Everybody eat, I be on your team Lions to grow weak We you nothing's missing God, I lay in surrender what I'm trying to prove by having an answer Nothing I could do, your love is forever I'm inside your love and love with the pressure That's why I don't need no two, two, threes Yeah, you watching me Shadow on your wings and I've been hiding underneath I can see you lighting my feet up I ain't gonna start living cause you died for my freedom You ain't worried about nothing So I won't worry about nothing Yeah, yeah, yeah 
miss the things you got for me There's beauty in the mess you where I ought to be Why I be so stressed, I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a life free of problems, I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you, yeah I'm away If my faith ever frees up I know you'll be the flame Never would you change Your love is constantly supply So I keep my eyes on you I ain't worried, oh no Hey, switch the colors of your mask From the ones I got attached to I had to let the facts go Ooh, I was feeling down bad But you said you had my back You where I ought to be Why I be so stressed I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a life free of problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah Hello, welcome back. We are ready for, well I'm not ready because I'm still in the middle of my drink. But we're back for series six, map three. So talk to me, Haven. It's a nice map. I know you don't like it, but I love it. It's sad, dude. I'm just waiting to ride the wave of this game, bruh. <laughs> Look, okay. Okay, I've <laughs> what got these bits. Like, what? Look, I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. Look, all I'm saying is I'm farming clips out here. That's that's all I'm doing. So every every intro, you're going to have something different. But I, Haven, what were we talking about? Yeah, Valorant. We're playing here. Well, we're not playing. We're watching Valorant and we're casting it. Who would have let me on a mic? Who knows? Either way, Haven, it's a map I like. Main reason being, three sites means a lot of strategic value. IGLs can really pop off on this map. 
especially defensively because it's where do you allocate your resources. Common misconception, people play 2-1-2, it can be really rough for you because a 5 versus 2 fight on site can be so difficult and normally that B player will kind of play as a pivot for both sides. I'm interested to see what the comps are going to be though because that can have a big impact on how you play this map. Yeah, I think exactly what you've highlighted there is kind of leaning into the fact that this is such a retake heavy map, right? I feel yeah. like any time you talk about Haven, you're talking about the retake ability on it. So you're, you're going to have the Killjoy for your lockdown for retakes. You're going to have your Breach for the Rolling Thunder for retakes. And I feel like those two agents are an absolute must. If you don't have those two, I feel like you're kind of hard throwing and you don't know what you're doing. So we're expecting to see both of them and I would, I'd, I'd like to anticipate for that. Silva, also kind of a pivotal pick, right? You've got your darts and then you've got the Hunter's Fury that you can lean back after for post-plant. Um, and then your controller, maybe you're sitting on Omen or maybe you just decide to mess around and take Viper. I don't know. I'm not one of these teams. And uh, <laughs> there's a good reason for that. But I feel like Omen's your safest pick, right? Um, and then your Julius, you can almost take whoever you want, but it's most likely going to be Jet. I think, for me, what I'm kind of interested in seeing is if we see defensive aggression because it's been something that's kind of been lacking for both these teams in both these games we've seen a little bit of it more on fracture but haven is very much a map where if you don't pick the right site to stack you're just playing retake and some of these sites are so difficult to get back onto haven a for example is sometimes what people talk about as one of the hardest like sites to retake because you have to go through two very small funnels if you're retaking from ct that are just so difficult to get through and i feel like the way to play this map is you've got to gamble a little bit you've got to be a bit more aggressive on defense and take what space you can to post a player up deep and give you that information yeah for sure and um i, th I think you're right that it, it will all come down to who is best on that aggression, especially if you're pushing down C long or if C's been attacked, which is probably one of the most common hit sites on Haven. I feel like C is always the one that people go to for whether it's running up through the long. If you can push out aft, out of A and take space from there, as well as down mid, but down mid gets a little bit dodgy, especially with window being watched and teams pushing through garage anyway. But if you can take that A control and push out as much as possible, then you're, you're certainly putting yourselves in a good position. But here comes the lineups like we thought, and we're seeing an Astra picked. Catacombs sticking it back with Cypher that we've seen from map one. Whereas Scullies are pretty much the exact pick that I, I called and wanted to see. So I've, I was going to say that I feel like most players would do better after how good they were on their, their retakes before, but now I'm back to Team Scullies. Who knows? Who knows? You know, you're flipping back and forth on this game. Mouse plays. I'm going to be on that defensive side first. They do have a comp that's a little bit more situated towards that defense. The rays can offer a lot in terms of the satchels and the nades, just to stall a little bit more. That can also prevent plants. Same with the Astra as well. They have a lot of util that can, one, stall plants, two, hold up some of these chokes. Whereas on the flip side, you know, the Scully squad, they've got that jet. They've got that high progressive comp. They have the Killjoy which can play heavy as an anchor when they go into defense. But it's going to be attack that we have to think about first, as Scullies seems to be hovering more towards mid. Yeah, it's a pretty much standard first round into mid, up C long and through garage and challenge whoever is going to be holding those positions. And this time, it's going to be Catacombs on that Cypher player trying mm. to hold down garage for as long as possible. But the traps will give out a little bit of information. I feel like this is where Cypher becomes a little bit weaker than the opposition's Killjoy pick is you don't have the damage ability when it's at the same time. It's just the, the, the trap for pure info, especially with that camera that's just deleted out the server straight away. Are they going to know there's at least the one player up long? Dark going to prevent a push out from anybody. And there are smokes available. There's already kills on the board. Kazamaru draws first blood in this map. And we see this aggression already. They've gained so much space, so much info. Maya gets another. And you said at the start of the game how you wanted to see some aggression off of maps or sites like A, I should say. And that's exactly what's happened. Most players have taken all this space up by A. So when Scullies decide to try and rotate back, they're in a bit of trouble. And this is how you see them pinched in their own spawn. They've literally spawned trapped. Scullies 
but it doesn't matter as Rika is able to find the head of Kazumaru and that's going to open up a little bit for the Scully's team as they now start to plunder onto A. I'm going to be able to hear this from the side of Mouse Plays. Snakes are going to come through as well. It's going to be full retake protocol here. Still have access to that dart. Astro, I believe, still has some smokes. They're stalling the plant as long as they can. But the bomb is still going to go down. Spike planted. Ready to come in whenever they are waiting to push through CT. The smoke has now dwindled away, but the crossfire set up by Lesu and Rika here, waiting to just shoot and gun down Shadows, anybody that comes in. But Astro Star been placed down, Omen Smoke regenerated in, and Lesu and Rika clean up oh. with a 4k at the end. And I mean, that was a round that it looked like it was all mouse plays at one point. But Rika picked up that first kill at Garage, and then it's just escalated into the rest, and they manage to get themselves back on the board. Yes, it's only a pistol, but it's a very good start to the pistol round. And just straight into the blender there. And that's kind of the issue. If, if your breach is one of the people to die, you look at this comp for mouse plays, you haven't really got much utility to get back onto a site. Satchel's already used, you can't get that space. Smokes didn't really offer much for them there. So it's really important that Kazumara is able to keep some of that util. Oh. As Rika just shoots Yabu out the air. Yep, absolute hunting style. You know that one where they, they shoot like discs into the air and then you shoot it out? That is, that's what that was. Ski shooting? I think that, that might be, yeah, yeah, ski shooting. That is, that is what Rika was preparing for as Lisa picks up the kill onto Kazumara as well. And a site not fully clear. You do have Catacombs sitting up in heaven waiting for the smoke to disappear to then potentially peek out and get some kills ready to drop once the rest of the team come through. And maybe this is one of those where they look to die to bomb. It's a possible angle. I don't see a way of them getting back into sight here. But they are going to try for it. They've got a Bucky in hand <laughs> as Gundam. Going to get taken out. And all alone, Maya is <laughs> just going to stand here with this soul shotgun. Yep, the UAV scrambled, but the heart rate is pouncing. Can this Bucky find any value? And you have to feel like the answer is definitely not. Nobody is going to want to push through that and try and get the kill. They'll just leave them with the Bucky alive for the next round as they push on the site, waiting to die so that they can try and buy into a Vandal. The smart play, good from Scullies to win that round on Flawless and continue into the next round with as much weapon power as possible. And we see a judge now going to be picked up by Kazamaru, expecting them to play some short angle. Maybe going to stun this opening peak for window and then pivot. No, they have, they have swapped over to the Phantom. It's actually Gundam that's going to be playing that judge in Garage. Makes a lot of sense. It does. Has the star ready as well if they choose to smoke that one up and then just play inside that smoke. There's that nice little dart that gives so much info outside of A, but there's going to be no one nearby it. And the star now committed in Gundam playing just outside, ready to judge anybody that thinks about walking through the door, but nobody's going to challenge it. Instead, we're going to see this B hit as Scully's smash their way onto site and shoot through everything to take down Kazumaru, and that's a great start, you have to say, for Scully's on this round. I love the pivot towards B here as... I don't know how Mouse Plays is going to be able to get back in here. Is there so many players? They're just war of attrition right there. They send everybody in. And Mouse Plays, two left alive. It's not going to be enough. Rika hunting around. But the idea to play towards B on bonus, I love it so much because it's close angles. So that weaker weaponry does not matter as much. Yeah, it's just the, the perfect one, especially when you're, like you see, you're, you're playing with spectres, so you're not taking big long range fights. You can just hold into those nice little tight angles and then let the people, let the opposition push into you. And I mean, they, they won their fights, and that's going to force most players back into some some pretty poor buys. And this bucket is like, I swear they just need to no longer be mouse plays and just be bucky plays. <laughs> bucky plays, Gundam, always pulling out that shotty. See if they can make it work towards C. 
Obviously not going to be able to peek long with that weapon, but can maybe maintain back sight if an entry was to try to dedicate some util to get there. But right now, Mouse Plays is just so spread out, and this is where we see the weakness of Haven. If the enemy team can find where you have that single player stacked onto a site, it's so easy for them to just get on site. Cool. It is absolutely pivotal to realise that this is very much an attacking sided map, but some mouse play is not fully out despite being 3 0 down and what could potentially be a fourth year. Not fully out of the running if Gundan can just find something, but Martha's going to peek around at the right time and take that one out, and oh. Catacombs answering back with a lovely share of shot. But the spike planted. does get planted in the post plant now being set up, but look at this plant coming in. From Yabu, One can they find the form of the last here. round? No, they can't. It's Lissu is close by and ready for the swing. Oh, one nice shot already, but the one way. Just gonna cut off any hopes of ever possibly playing that round out. 4 0 oh, now to Mouse, to, to Scully's apologies. Ezrika didn't have a good game last game, but he's trying to make a statement here. Yeah, 10 and 0 on Omen. Jeez, that is, that, that is cold. I think that's time to put your jumper back on you. Oh, you've you've got ready that. for the, the hot temperatures. That. and <laughs> it's, it's back to to chilling on the side of Scully's here. 4-0 and looking very strong as well. And now access to that Odin. Gundam just loves his weapon. I feel like half the rounds in this series we've seen them with that Odin, especially on defense. Spraying through these smokes. Maybe can get a kill through that door, but there's four members now towards C. If Scully's commits to this push, they would be making a big mistake. I feel like they're just going to play patient, and you, you've seen it before. They're, they're not scared to pivot and make a call to go elsewhere and that's exactly what happens they've baited a lot out over on C and now they're just right heading here. over onto A where it's only Cypher left to try and hold this one down get it smoked off but has the camera available should they get much oh, intel and the, tra the Cypher the trap goes up but the cage doesn't find much Gundam thinks about spraying through the smoke but what? isn't going to find much as Martha Where gets the final kill hiding? So I'm now going to reveal these locations. Moment flashes there. Tagged. This is possibly a playable situation, but that ultimate all alone is going to stall and provide so much time for Scully's mouse plays now. Triple stacking in. They're going to follow this drone. It clears close. Swing out here. All three members on this angle as Rika gets one. This player has been so effective in these early rounds. The TP as well, the bait and switch. It's oh. so good. It's so good from Rika right here. And now in a one versus one on site, Maya gets no one. one. Lisu cleans no it up. And just like that, Scullies have stamped we their foot now. Because we are together. Yeah, Don't Rika's fully sent mouse plays to the shop there with that TP. It was absolutely delicious is what i'm going to say I, hasn't it, died yep yeah, it's it's so good like fully mvp so far making sure that yabu is not able to have an impact i mean that, that's zero and five i'm not one to usually highlight when a player is not playing so well but it's hard not to when yabu was i mean i feel i don't feel like it's harsh saying the sole reason the fracture was so good for mouse plays and yet here we are, fully shut down. Scullies have found the answer, and they're starting to just really build momentum. I mean, five nil is a very good start. And Scully's expecting an aggressive play. I just holding, waiting. They know that mouse plays has to has to be aggressive here because they're on weaker economy. Yabu trying to find an opening kill doesn't see anyone window. The counter util is there. It's a battle on all fronts. The mouse plays. It will secure that first blood. And Yabu wants to go again. But Spicy just keeps on shooting. Keeps on gunning. And finds that ahead. It did not want to stop. Regardless of what the traffic light said. Just keep going. 
and you will eventually hit the target and that's exactly what happens as this turns into a four versus three in the favor of scullies and they have access to the site the cypher trap will give that information up there goes the astra smoke as well just left. to try and play it off a little bit slower it's gundam pushing up with the bucket tries to get some damage does oh. get one and picks up the kill as well but can they find the rest they find one it's oh, playable the next it's very playable oh, i see muffin so low veggie a single bullet will be this breach's demise no way they just commit there's no way there's no way that they commit. The first one hits, the second one might as well call Lissu Legolas because they just do not miss those arrows. But there's something we need to address, no? Mm. Something has happened. Rika has died. It's a sad day. And it's I feel sad, like that's a winnable moment day. just for most plays. Game yeah. over. Call you've, it now. You've Matt. killed the raid boss. <laughs> Map three done. Yeah, just <laughs> like that. Mouse plays have rallied together. This is like, this is like you've got you've got one absolute giant just troll that's managing to hold the bridge, and your party kills them together, and all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier. But they only managed to kill Rika once, and they've got to do it quite a few more times to get some rounds on the board. Yep, six 0 right now. The worst that can happen for Skull, you should they manage to to throw away as a tied half, which you, you wouldn't. I mean, you definitely wouldn't be happy with it in this position, but you probably wouldn't be too happy with it at the start of the map either. You want to to at least get eight on your attack, and they're definitely in a position that they can do this. And you, you see the way that they're spreading out this defense. You spoke at the start of how Haven can be one of these maps, so drag out as much as possible. And Yabu getting online with the alt there as well shuts down the the lockdown, but it's enough just to drag some players attentions away from C, which is where this is ultimately going down oh this catacombs the tp past the smoke it's chaos right now no one knows what's going on denies so much vision maya's able to get the one but the bomb does go down Maru coming in and this retake from mouse place is quick but is it quick enough Martha all alone, Martha taken down, and Mouse plays right when they needed it, right when you spoke about it, no matter what, being a six, six half at worst for Scullies. Mouse plays gets around on the board. Yep, and Yabu is online three kills in this round. It's what you want to start seeing. You want to start seeing your star player, your duelist, getting those kills, starting to feed the ego, so to speak. And that just gives you more of the confidence to take more battles, which ultimately is how they're going to get more kills. And kills gets wins. We've established this. I mean, the bomb, <laughs> the bomb going off and the bomb being defused probably gets more wins than kills do. But, you know, kills is a good way to start. It's a good way to achieve those, those goals and those dreams. But please don't let that follow into your real life. Killing people is... It's definitely not advised, but Rika gets Ward Martha and another. And Scully's pushing the tempo, pushing the pace, finding their way up towards this A site. And Mouse plays just when they thought maybe they could gather a bit of momentum, instantly get shut down. Oh, Martha is online. 3k they are leaving it all down to Catacombs. Stuck in CT with only a camera to take a selfie with if they want to, but it doesn't matters heaven control has been taken there's so many on site it's a very much unwinnable position as martha peeks around gets the kill and puts scullies into a winning position now they have got seven so the worst that they can now do as we just said is win the half which you're happy with if you win the half you're happy yeah on haven is to be expected is quite an attack sided map so you're expecting Scullies to at least win out this half, but you need a bit of resistance from Mouse Plays. We saw they can do it in that last round, but it's going to be that save. They still have access to that timeout. Maybe they're going to leave it for the next round so that they can think of a set play. But it's it's so difficult for them because just Come nothing has been working. Yeah, I've, I'm really enjoying that we're, we're getting to see different takes on the attack. We're not seeing that typical jump down, see, dash onto generator and flash at the back. We're getting to see some 
nice adaptions from Scullies here, but Mouse Blade's oh. trying to look to see if they can catch it. Lissu picking up the kill, and the flanks are just not going to be what counts right now as Martha peeks out, gets one, and has the idea that another one could be behind. There's the walk. One enemy remaining. Lissu on the lurk. And then a one versus four. Yabu is oh. able to get one. Spike planted. But they have to do so much to make this work. If it was this fraction map, we'd still say it's possible. But there's no way. It's flashed out. One versus two. Lissu peeks out. And it's just all the way of Scullies. And I feel like props for that round. MVP of that round. While they weren't able to get the kills. Spicy Muffin single-handedly saves them on this mid play that breach ultimate could have been devastating for those two yep. garage players but the stun to come out and counter it saved them that round yeah and it's the, it's the utility that was missing from previous is really showing up on this map and it's something that's maybe practiced a little bit better and a little bit more of we know haven is a map that is quite often a decided map in these series and clearly scullies are very prepared for it Sending it straight up towards window, but Lissu's there. This is waiting for you. It's Kazumaru, there's two members now that they've seen on B. That means A at most has a two versus five fight for you. Maya going to drone out, going to spot some members here. Shock darts coming through as well, but the electricity is not enough. But Gundam in the chaos has hidden in a smoke and has a shotgun, but they aren't able to get a kill. And just like that, we should be looking at nine rounds to Scullies. You would have to fancy it, but don't count this mouse plays team up. There's two of them left pushing through CT, but Martha has knives straight to the skulls. But Maya keeps that back, scans an excellent radar there to yeah. make sure no flank, one's pushing Flank is clear, CT. flank is clear, yeah. yeah. Nobody is behind, can guarantee that, or at least beside you. So now Maya knows it's safe to try and enter onto site to push out of this smoke, but... You feel like Scullies are very well set up for this, know where the player is, just have to anticipate the push for the right time and I mean Maya's health is so low that it's, it literally is an unlosable position for Scullies. And the save this is what we're going to see here, four players left alive, I'm going to back away out of this one. And are we going to see another 9-3 veggie? I mean mouse plays right now, not really online for it but... No. <laughs> I, f I feel like 9 3, 10 2, maybe they're just counting down. We started with a 9 3, then ended up 10 2. Is it going to be 11 1 on this half? One enemy remaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't want to say it because I, I, I don't. And I don't want to see that. I want to see mouse plays get back into this and start to find the flow that we've seen them have on Fracture. And I've got a lot of time for it. But right now, Scullies are just so far ahead on this map that it seems almost impossible. Like, you see just there, Yabu trying to get some early pace and gets shut down. Maya thankfully gets up and gets one trade, but does take a lot of damage from the Hunter's Fury. And then Gundam's just playing in this garage again with the bucket, waiting for anyone to push through. But you have to feel like Scullies are going to be aware of this. It's not the first time this has happened, and it, it probably won't be the last. And it's pretty much been almost every round that we've seen this Bucky yeah. in play to Garage. So they already know that it's such a standard for this Mouse Plays team. And if they spot an opening in B, they're just going to send it towards that site. And in a four versus two retake, without weaponry, you're not fancying the chances of Mouse Plays. Mouse Plays. Yeah, you're not. They are, they are not here to play on this map, at least at this moment in time. When half swap maybe we'll see something else come through but the double swing trying to come through but it's not connecting the flash out for skull muffin is enough to blind out lissu and it's all down to maya who gets taken through as well skull lissu with the 3k on the round and 10 one up for skulls and shout out to the unsung heroes the util players right here this this Breach, Spicy Muffin, these flashes are just so good. They're setting up their team. And yes, it doesn't show on the stats board because they don't get the kills themselves. But they are really, really helping them get these pushes onto site, getting these kills and saving their teammates when they need to. 
And it's it's almost like Spicy Muffins just playing Overwatch this game. Just using the abilities. That's all they really need to do. And <laughs> yeah. the rest of the team is getting the kills. Yeah, they're not even thinking about firing the shots back there. Just holding this, the flash out ready to blind anyone that would push on to that point. And it, it does get the kill. And I think we're finally about to see the standard C push. The Rolling Thunder ready. Jet dash available. Here it comes. But the, the spam could be enough. But... It does miss indeed, and the TP's on top, the dash is on top, Catacombs isolated and Garage CT side. It does fall down, but it's all falling apart so quickly for most players here with this plant, but Yabu could have an impact, but just get spotted out at the wrong time. They don't want it to be this 11 rounds, it's such a hard number to beat, such a hard margin, and Kazamaru makes that first effort towards this retake. Meyer again. Another dart's gonna miss, but it does scan a couple of players right there, so it works out in the end for them. And Bomb's not down yet, Veggie, so it's actually a good situation for Mouse players, as they seem to have just limited the space that Scullies can take, and they found themselves in a winnable situation, but Spicy Muffin! We spoke about not using the abilities, using the gun, now gets a 4K and a clutch to round it off. Switching sides. Nah, no, Spicy Muffin took that personally when you said they were not here to play with guns. They, they literally heard every word of it and went, okay, okay, Snow, if you don't think I know how to play this game and shoot people's heads, just just watch me try and do this. And it comes up huge. The 11-1 is what we've seen. We called it earlier on. And Mouse plays now with their, their upper bracket dreams in hand falling apart quickly. Unless they can win the pistol here and then every round after for a long time. It's going to have to be a rallying call from Mouse Plays, but it is Haven, attack sided map. I've seen bigger comebacks, not at this level, but in my, in my, in, in your bronze games, Veggie, I'm sure this happens a lot. So maybe every time, just maybe Mouse Plays can channel a little bit of that energy and it's going to start with a B push and there's no one here. It's a good start for them. Yeah, it's the, the ideal situation, but they're oh. deciding not to plant, just keep running on to A site, which what? ultimately could end in a lot of destruction, but it doesn't what? matter. It's my and Gundam get the kills, but this is, I, I'm just going to stop talking because I just don't know. It's, it's the bait switch to fake. It's almost like we're watching American football here. We've got Crocodile 4-3 split happening towards A is... As the loop around worm comes through and A site will be claimed and just like that, we said Mouse Plays needs to do something special to get themselves a foothold in this game and this is a good start for that. I love the smoke cutting off on that right hand side, a common spot that's been played which means you can't fully play on the, the trade once the tap comes in but you'll get a little bit of space and there it comes, Mouse Plays getting the second point on board and starting what's about to be a momentous comeback. Everyone's rooting for the underdog. This is the true Rocky story. Nobody thought they could do it, but Mouse Plays here to show that 11 is all Sully's get. Scully's get, sorry. I mean, it's if you look at it statistically, mathematically, it's an amazing second half for Mouse Plays already. They've doubled their round mm -hmm. total, which is yep. it's an astronomical improvement, but... <laughs> They're hoping to carry on that momentum and not just stop on that one round. Phantom online as well, so if they can keep some of these rifles for the next round, gives them a bit of a chance, but a very aggressive mid play. Is it going to pay off as everyone's just sprinted through to see? Going to get caught in garage, but despite getting put down, let's do pick it up one kill on Tamaya. There goes your darts. We're not going to be able to scan ourselves in this half of this round, at least. But Martha swapping out onto guns. Catacombs trying to get on the flank. Does pick up two snow, but tries to take out the camera and gets caught by Bobby. This is a two versus three in favour of Scullies, and you just One have to feel remaining. the need to hold on. Oh no, no HP on Kazamaru either. And just when we thought Mouse Place was maybe going to get a bit of momentum, Scully's just stuffs it in their face. A thrifty. They didn't even have sheriffs. They were classics. And they were able to find some of those kills. And it just all went awry when so many players committed to some of these 1v1s. They were trying to be aggressive and 
it just did not work out for mouse plays as now we're on match point series point and scully's looking to clean this old one up with a full rifle buy yeah i mean you'd have to have to say that the favorites to take this round for sure most players obviously buying up into it as well knowing that they have to buy every single round now they can't afford a save round they can't afford to reset themselves they need to just full send mess the economy up as much as possible every round and take in maximum gunpowder but just playing slow here snow i swear gundam is addicted to this bucket even <laughs> on this yeah. picking this weapon up hasn't found much success of it so far but maybe this round could change all that as look at where Scullies are on the map. They have so much info. They've corralled them towards B. And it seems to be right where Scullies wants them to go. Yabu going to be first on site with the Stinger traded out there from that one. And it's all going the way of Scullies as already this round is all but over. Kazamaru all alone with it all to do. But Martha shuts that one down. And a clean 13-2 is going to send Scullies through this match and sends them into the next round of the upper bracket. The upper semi-final awaits for Scullies. And you have to congratulate them. They looked very iffy on the second map. I, I don't think you would disagree with me, but that, that final map on Haven, I mean, that was that was something else. That was... I'm just going to shake my head because that's, that's all it was. It was just disgusting. And you've got to think, maybe what part of that is, is Yabu kind of losing momentum. You said it, almost yourself, single-handedly, the reason that was such a stomp on Fracture was Yabu constantly getting 3Ks, 4Ks, killing two people around. But then on Haven, had a really slow start, wasn't able to gather the same momentum, and it just looked like it was all the way of Scullies. Yeah, just weren't able to to take the fights that were maybe favouring before, and I feel like on Fracture, able to get a lot of fights that maybe weren't expected and straight-up gunfights, whereas... On this one, it was just it was just all Scullies is the simplest way to put it. And I mean, looking at the scoreboard here, let me just open it up and make it a little bit bigger. Martha, 18 kills and 10 deaths. Rika, who started so strong, 15 and 7 finishes up. Three first bloods for the, the first three players is absolutely nuts. And it's, it's going to be hard to pick an MVP on out of this one specifically with two players on 18 kills and one on 15. But who, who are you going to give me? I don't know, man. I honestly, honestly think that maybe... And I think it might be Spicy Muffin, to be honest. I mean, it's going to be a surprise because yeah. obviously not an impact in frags, but, but the, amount of, yeah, the amount of util that was just so useful for their team in causing them to get those openings was so impressive. But we're going to have to put this team to bed for now. We're going to be watching another set of games. We're just waiting for the lower bracket to finish up. We're going to be watching, I think it's either the winner of Control Electra and Wraith versus the winner of Saltair and Neon Blade. We're not sure who's playing just yet, but make sure you don't go anywhere because we're about to find out after this break. Open we're off here. I, I realised I had my fucking um, beam. Anybody in the city, we can do jobs so they can get you bigger, better things. You can't see that I was at a put in every day and night. 
through the every trick of right, couldn't ever be the main, just to hit them with the fade, when I stick it to the people that have told me that I couldn't, yeah. After all of the years that your mood we were found, I finally learned that it's okay that I'm not white or brown, and though the people looking sideways drive me crazy, you can't take my pride from me, I'm cool with the way God made me, yeah. But the way you react, I can tell that you hatred and tech, you call me dirty, uneducated, illegal, and fat, we're to talk to black lives matter, and I said Latinos do too, and they told me check your white privilege, boy, this is not about you. We gonna make it, ooh, we gonna make it. I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it. Ooh, we gonna make it, ooh, we gonna make it. God had an eye by my side, ain't no way that you can fade it. Listen, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 you can't hold me down. Got grandpa that was German, got grandpa that's a Mexican, but don't you say that round and get correct to we American. Family multicolored from the darker to the fairest skin, and though we share the same blood blows my mind, they still think less of him. Make it fit with the self hate, got to shit for the wounds in the cut deep. So when other people think we got a man, it's our own hearts that are too weak. Sick and the red flags in the bad plate, feel like the tenth one I seen this week. Man, that's the type of thing that made me go crazy, uh, how can this be in America? Still get misidentified, some think that I speak Arabic Heard it all before, from cowl head down to a terrorist The butt of all your jokes, I got my hand up on a bomb trigger But sometimes it get brutal, boy, you just a stupid sin Your ignorance astounds me so much that I can't even get mad But then I think about my cousins who don't have the same privilege I have Like if things are this bad for me, how much worse is it than for them With no white side for them to lean on, gotta give it up to Jesus in the end We gonna make it, gonna make it i kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it Ooh, we gonna make it god had an eye by my side ain't no way that you can fade it listen you can't hold me down you can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah Switch up, never been a mix up Blessings in my hand I don't wanna miss them Everybody eat, I be on your team Lions to grow weak We you nothing's missing God, I lay in surrender What I'm trying to prove You die for my freedom You ain't worried about nothing So I won't worry about nothing Yeah, 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 yeah I ain't gonna miss the things you got for me There's beauty in the mess you were hard to be Why I be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah I'm away If my faith ever frees up I know you'll be the flame Never would you change Your love is constantly supply So I keep my eyes on you I ain't worried, oh no Hey, switch the colors of your mask From the ones I got attached to I had to let the facts go Ooh, I was feeling down bad But you said you had my back 
cover like the tag, whoa. For me, there's beauty in the mess you where I ought to be. Why I be so stressed? I know you're watching me. Cause I don't need a life for your problems, I just need you. And all my worries disappear right when they meet you. I've been on the road, I've been doing shows. Now we in steak, remember sleeping on the floor. We're still in at the gas station when the time's cold. In the kitchen, hot still trying to flip it out the stove. Rockin' fake J's, praying that nobody know. Watch them take my dog away, it was way too hard to stay composed. Fight to see the light of day, all this blood on my clothes. I was tired every day, green light, it's time to go. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. Hundred miles per hour, might crash, cause a good die young. Yeah, the good die young. I don't wanna live life fast or die too young. Die too young. Hundred miles per hour. Crash cause a good die on. Yeah, the good die on. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone. Write my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Write my name in the stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home. Right back where I left because I know my people needed me. Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me. Go down as a legend in my city cause we be the streets. Trying to spread the wealth around the block. No, I can't keep from me. Tell me I should leave. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone. Write my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Write my name in the stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home. Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in stone, write my name in stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home, write my name in stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home.
colors I can only see with you Better with another but I always pick you
marksman ain't ya? I think my heart's in danger. Made me feel like I was safe and sound and switched up and switched off the safety. How you plan? How you plan? Shots you've taken. All the pain was a mess. Somehow there are blanks as you claim getting desperate now. Cause I've found out. Oh, yeah. Oh, feels like you've been using me for talking. But your pistol was concealed from me I should have known that you'd be using me, using me Now I see that you, baby You've been using me for target practice And you better know
it, I'ma give it to you G straight And a mouth beat say I'm not a human being Falling like Kareem, sipping on codeine I lean with it, rock with it, got coke dreams Boom, back, boom in the trap When trap meets house, you get a trap house Got two stacks, throw it at a strip dancer Big booty hoe, said she from Atlanta Black kids call me a cracker, white kids call me a beaner Ain't lunch in school alone cause I didn't fit in with either They told me that I can't ride, did you forget your ethnicity? But looking back from now they couldn't see what God had planned for me Let me get it, let me put it down, one time for anybody out there following their dreams Anybody in the city working through jobs so they can get to bigger better things You can't see that, I was at a put in, every day and night Go to every trick or right, go to every bit of main Just to hit them with the bay when I stick it to the people that I told me that I couldn't, yeah After all of the years of young old people I finally learned that it's okay that I'm not white or brown And though the people looking sideways drive me crazy You can't take my pride from me I'm cool with the way God made me, yeah But the way you react, I can tell that you hatred and tech You call me dirty, uneducated, illegal and fat Went to talk to Black Lives Matter And I said Latinos do too And they told me check your white privilege Boy, this is not about you We gonna make it, ooh, we gonna make it I kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it, ooh, Gonna make it, got that and not by my side. Ain't no way that you can fade it. Listen, you can't hold me down. You can't hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 you can't hold me down. You can hold me down. You, you, you can't hold me down. You, 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 you can't hold me down. Got grandpa that was German, got grandpa that's a Mexican But don't you say that round and get correct to we American Family multicolored from the darker to the fairer skin And though we share the same blood blows my mind and still think less of him They can fit with the self-hate, got to shoot for the wounds that are cut deep So when other people say we got with Danny Man, it's our own hearts that are too weak Sick and federate flags in the bad plate Feel like the tenth one I seen this week Man, that's the type of thing that made me go crazy, uh How can this be America? Still get misidentified, some think that I speak Arabic Heard it all before, from cowl head down to a terrorist The butt of all your jokes, I got my hand up on a bomb trick But sometimes it get brutal, boy, you just a stupid sin Your ignorance astounds me so much that I can't even get mad But then I think about my cousins who don't have the same privilege I have Like if things are this bad for me, how much worse is it than for them With no white side for them to lean on, gotta give it up to Jesus in the end We gonna make it gonna make it i kept my soul no matter how hard that they try to take it Ooh, we gonna make it Ooh, we gonna make it got that and not by my side ain't no way that you can fade it listen you can't hold me down you can hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you can hold me down you 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 can't hold me down you 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 can't hold me down I ain't gonna miss it.
things you got for me There's beauty in the mess you where I ought to be Why be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems, I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you, yeah Switch up, never been a mix-up Blessings in my hand, I don't wanna miss them Everybody eat, I be on your team Lions that grow weak, we you nothing's missing God, I lay in surrender What I'm trying to prove by having an answer Nothing I could do, your love is forever I'm inside your love and love with the pressure That's why I don't need no two, two, threes Yeah, you watching me, shadow and your wings And I've been hiding underneath I can see you lighting my feet up I ain't gonna start living cause you die for my freedom You where I ought to be Why be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah Days turn to seasons Taking time away If my faith ever frees up I know you'll be the flame Never would you change your love is constantly supply So I keep my eyes on you I ain't worried, oh no Hey, switch the colors of your mask From the ones I got attached to I had to let the facts go Ooh, I was feeling down bad But you said you had my back Got me covered like the tag, whoa You where I ought to be Why I be so stressed? I know you're watching me Cause I don't need a light for your problems I just need you And all my worries disappear right when they meet you Yeah on the road i've been doing shows now we ain't steak remember sleeping on the floor we're still at the gas station when the time was cold in the kitchen hospital trying to flip it off the stove rocking fake jays praying that nobody knows watch them take my dog away it was way too hard to stay composed fight to see the light of day all this blood on my clothes i was tired every day green light it's time to go i don't want to live life fast or die too young die too young how did my crowd might crash because a good die young yeah the good die young i don't want to live life fast or die too young die too young how did my problem Crash cause a good die on Yeah, the good die on Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way, I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Cause I'm coming back home Right back where I left because I know my people needed me Diamond in the rough, I don't know what it is they see in me Go down as a legend in my city cause we be the streets Trying to spread the wealth around the block, no I can't keep from me Tell me I should leave Die too young, die too young Hundred miles per hour might crash cause good die young Yeah, but here I come I don't wanna live life fast or die too young Die too young Hundred miles per hour might crash cause good die young Here I come Push it to the limit, I can't go no more Red light, no way I'm coming back home Long dirt road all on my own I'ma be the greatest, write my name in the stone Write my name in the stone Yeah, I'm coming back home Yeah, I'm coming back home Write my name in the stone Cause I'm coming back home Push it to the limit, I can't go no more. Red light, no way, I'm coming back home. 
Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, write my name in stone. Run my name in stone. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Yeah, I'm coming back home. Run my name in stone. Cause I'm coming back home. Cause I'm coming back home. Hello and welcome to the final match of the day. I'm still Veggie Hot Dog. I'm joined by the one and only Snow Spy. We're set for a cracking match. So why don't you tell us all about what we're going to see right now? I'm seeing some very interesting things right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I'm going to question it. I just kind of want to ask why is my first question. The second one is, is, is what does it have to do with all of this? Um, well, it depends what you're referring to, of course, mm. because we are going to see Control Electra versus Neon Blade. I'm assuming that's what the the, the Y yes. question mark is to. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, the, the reason for that is because they're both participating in a series that we're watching today of Birds of Prey Series 6, and they've made it into the upper bracket semi-finals, and, you know, we, we have to highlight something that is very worth <laughs> pointing out, and that is the fact that Neon Blade have not dropped a map yet. They're, they're, they've beaten no opponent 2-0, and then they beat Saltire 2 0 coming in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can bring. And, you know, Control are a, a very dominant team that we've seen before. And they're looking good as well from what I've seen on the, the Wraith game when we were on that break. Um, and I know you were watching, so we, we know yeah. kind of what to expect from them. But yeah. at the same time, let's see what they can do. Yeah. It was that game that I did see of Control, though, I was only really watching kind of loosely as we were on our break. 
it was a very close match in the end. I think they mm-hmm. they they did something like eleven one in the first half, but then somehow Wraith started to pull out a comeback. So control maybe a little bit shaken after that game. We'll have to see how it pulls in this one. Like you said, Neon Blade haven't dropped a single map so far, so it's a bit of the dominant performance from them at the moment. Yeah, I mean it has only been one match. But still, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, give, we'll give them the credit for no. when it's you beating Saltire 2-0. And um, this is the maps so we're going to see. This is actually news to me. So what are we seeing here? Talk to me. I mean, you can see it on your screens. But <laughs> if you aren't using your eyes or you're just listening to the audio because you want to hear the soothing tones of mine and Vezi voices, we've seen the scent ban. We've seen a split ban. First map, the important one, is going to be Bind. I'm excited to see it. It's Neon Blade's map pick, Bind. One that, especially since the new Chamber update, has seen a lot of variety in terms of the comps. I've been watching a lot of Ascension. The main thing that I've seen come back into the meta is actually Chamber, specifically mm-hmm. with the Pacific teams. We've seen Chamber twice um, from both teams on the first match of the day, which you just didn't want to join me for. Yeah. Um, so Kai, Kai said that maybe we could see Chamber, and actually both teams picked that Chamber up and done, done pretty well with that chamber so definitely a, a viable pick and then we go to fracture which is i think we've seen every single match up so far so i don't think we're going to spend too much talking about that because we've seen that we, we kind of know what to expect right yeah fracture decider on lotus i'm excited to see that map once again it's one that always uh you know it's it's one that once again similar to haven is very suited towards the attackers is also one where the IGLs can make a big difference. They can really pull players around the map, and the way they allocate their resources is so important. But harking back to Bind, I am interested to see what happens with these comps. I know, obviously, you said they've seen comps happen before. I wonder if any of them change it up. Have we seen any harbors? Nope, not yet. Ooh, it's, it's I feel like it, it's some yeah, it's something that's starting to be picked up a little bit. Viper Harbor, because especially when you execute over towards that a site you can pretty much split the site in half you can cut off lamps for a while so you don't have to worry about it it's really useful on save rounds specifically to get the bomb down yeah and then i mean maybe we'll see i I just don't fancy it i did kind of tune in i mean uh, it's i'm I'm 50 50 right well i'm not actually i'm probably like 80 20 that we're not going to see see harbor today i'd be pretty confident on it i was trying to tune in a little bit into where you had control playing up against Wraith on Bind, which mm. was the first map of the day, but I didn't quite get to see actually what the agents were on that, but I believe it was Viper with no harbour. Um, so take whatever insight you will from that that you like. Um, the one key thing that I would like to kind of talk about is B2 is part of this control s- squad that we've seen before. We've previously seen her playing under mouse plays and contenders and now into this control org. She's transitioned into sentinel and i believe we might be seeing the duelist come back for bind so that could be something to to keep an eye out on or whether she'll swap back into that sentinel role or flex mostly so there's definitely a lot of frag power on this control team with the rest of the players combined in there as well um but neon blade to me are a little bit of a an unknown source so i'm i'm excited to see what they bring to the table yeah, neon blade gonna have to battle up against uh, against this control lecture squad that has a lot of known players, to be honest, when we talk about it. They're a known quantity in the sense that we know that they're good, we know that they can frag out, and especially, like you said, when you take players that are traditionally duelist players, they swap into other roles, they're still going to keep that that same mechanical skill, but the question is, can they adapt to the role well? I know in that last match that we were just wa- watching, Bichu was on the Viper, so mm-hmm. flexing a little bit in terms of their role, I know Viper plays a bit like a Sentinel, so we'll have to see what they pick up here. Yep, straight into the lock into Raisin. and mm-hmm. Wait, we do? Nope, we don't have a chamber. Nope, we do have a chamber. We don't have a harbour. Do, I'll, oh, sit, I'll settle for that one. Yeah, literally, it's in. Out. I mean, <laughs> the, the harbour was something that I was interested in because it's something that Pacific teams are pulling out, but Brimstone is pretty much always the staple on this map. I would be surprised if we don't see a Viper, though, Veggie. Oh. I feel like Adora just needs to decide if they're going to be going with Harbour or Chamber here. They're just playing with both of our emotional senses here. It's going to be Chamber. It's going to be Chamber. It's going to be Chamber. You feel like it has to be, right? You've already got an omen being hovered. 
the, the Vipers locked in, like you said, there's something that you would be surprised not to see. Meanwhile, on the control side, we have that brimstone that's pretty much, like you said, a lock-in for most agents. I've just It's literally just dawned on me that Neon Blade are all yeah. hovering controllers. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so it took me you know, far too long. The, the outfit is constricting your brain flow a little bit, so you you weren't it quite... It doesn't take much. It yeah, doesn't you take were, much. You weren't quite tuned in, but I'm Choose expecting that brain to lock in. I imagine it will be a Viper, so that Electra has that double controller as well. When you look across pick rates on bind in all of pro play at the moment, there are three must-haves. One is Viper, one is Raze, and one is Sky. And that's pretty much... The, all of those agents have been 90% pick rate. And it looks like we're going to get a dodge, Veggie. Yep. That's... um. Bold move. It's a bold move. Yeah, bold. <laughs> bold strategy, Cotton. It's a bold strategy. Let's see if it pays off. It's mental difference. <laughs> you, you just dodge the map, and then you're like, we don't, we don't play Bind anymore. We're playing a different map. Sorry. Yeah, we, we don't. We just, just move on. Let's, let's forget about this. Let's redo the vetoes. That's all we need to do. <laughs> redo the vetoes. We're like, sick of oh. Bind. But it, they're like me when I forget which map is which, and, I, and I'm like, Bind, which is this one? And I load, yeah. and I'm like, oh, no. Someone just explained to them what Bind is, and they're like, we weren't supposed to pick that map. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a map with the TPs. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> we thought Breeze was in the pool. We saw B and just locked it in. Yeah, but... instantly. That was very interesting. <laughs> in terms of what we were looking at with Compass, though, the interesting part was that, that double duelist that we saw mm -hmm. on, on B2 and Serenity. They played the Jet and the, the Rays. I'm interested yep. to see if they opt for that again, how that's going to work out. Like you said, B2 offers a lot of frog power. Now you have the ability to also help make space and bind. I feel like part of the map is you're kind of dashing into big open spaces when you entry into the site like you think about both sites they're kind of little cubbies you can hide in but it is a big space that's just open in sight so having those double duelists can can help you maintain that space yeah for sure and i think what's key to it as well is also having someone that can flash for the team if yeah. you're following it up with a sky like you mentioned earlier with the the sky flying at the same time as the the paint shells but if, if you can let's say you're attacking on a site if you're flashing back site and then you just double satchel over jet dashes through as well you could get a whole lot of control from that and that fully turns into your advantage of what could be a hard site to get onto yeah you, you could literally literally just fly onto it within a second like an eagle just flying through or a goose you could say yeah or a goose i don't but are goose geese birds of prey yes. they are very aggressive to something they are yeah, yeah. they eat it something though true that but that's like saying a cow is is an animal of prey to grass <laughs> like to something in the world it is it is a something of prey when you grass look at is very context. scared of cows you know yeah. it's grass is an endangered species when the cows are around i mean it's an endangered species when a lot of animals are around but in <laughs> exactly terms of, yeah, in terms of this game though when we talk about farming it's going to be about those alt orbs on bind I feel like this is one of those maps where both the attackers and defenders kind of have equal scope for those alt orbs. A lot of maps you'll see, like Fracture for example, they're very attacker sided. It's very easy for the attackers to get to those orbs to claim that space. Bind is one of those where it's a bit of an equal fight. You look at the one showers, both teams kind of peak that at the same timing, so it's an even <laughs> fight. You look at the one long, kind of a similar situation. If you want to take that orb, you're going to be wide out in the open. So it's, it's one of those where battling for these orbs can be key because these ultimates can be so pivotal, especially something like that Brimstone Orb, which a lot of teams to use to, to clean stuff like lamps, like in tube and backside towards B as well. Yeah, and I think that's why you see a lot of adaption coming with Brimstone for that B long orb that's at the top. Yeah, traditionally, a lot of teams would smoke like sort of the choke point on entering into site, whereas now you're seeing a lot of it very much at the bottom of long with the sky flash following up, which creates that space to take the orb for the defenders, which kind of turns it slightly more into their favours. Whereas, like you said, the one in showers is very much anybody's game because it's it's peakable at the start for pretty much everybody, and it will be for what comes onto that. So, what what else are you looking forward to? While we're still in this tech pause, chamber was seen was hovered, but then not selected. Is there any like proper areas that you could see Chamber being fully viable? Chamber, so when I've seen it be utilised on Bind specifically, and it's mainly by the Pacific teams, because the Pacific teams, they're crackheads. They, they, they lock Chamber because they just want to duel. But the main reason for it is 
The, the trip changes mean that now on attack, you can do the old chamber trip that you used to. You put it on stairs, it watches your flank, and you can pretty much play either through hookah or over towards lamps, depending on which side you want to go. But you have to play a bit closer. You can't go right out to the edge of the map, but you can still place that same trip. On defense, though, a lot of teams are using it as kind of, especially when you get the operator online, a solo anchor. Say we're playing over towards B, you would have the trip in hookah to make sure no one pushes through, and then chamber would peek out long with the op. All of a sudden you've got an entire site locked down, and it means that the rest of the four members could look to gain space on the other side of the map. Okay, insightful. Now, someone I've not spoke about today, Snow, and yeah. that is very viable, and I've probably got the wrong caster on here with me, I'd probably be better bringing the, the, the first one on is Yoru, and it's Bind. So it, I feel like I, it's the right map to bring this topic of conversation up. If I'm going to do it at some point, it has to be Bind, right? Bind Why is do the you map, have to but... do it? Why do you have to do it? There's there's a but... reason the agent is 0% pick rate across the board. There's there's a reason it's... for it, Veggie. <laughs> and it's just because people don't know how to play this game, and the understanding uh, is, is uh, not there. That's, may, that's maybe, why I listen. Maybe it's because his utility is useless <laughs> no, no i feel like when you're talking about it bind is a map <laughs> like you say where yoru can have some usefulness the fakes through the tps the fact that you can rotate really easily i feel like bind was a yoru map if you were going to call any map a yoru map but bind and breeze were kind of the two that people would play them on because you can set up a tp to essentially work like an extra rotator when you're on defense yep. and mm -hmm. You know, you're 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 the Oreo expert. Why are you asking me questions about this, Veggie? I wasn't. You just started talking and no, took it away from enough. me. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. Because <laughs> I knew if you talked, Veggie, you you'd never stop. But I'll give you time. <laughs> We'd have just been no, no. It's fine. Listen, we'll move on into the diagnose this controller Electra lineup here. We've got, like you said, the double duelist with Rays and Jet. Skyflash going to be definitely coming in, and the Brim and a Viper, so double controller without a Sentinel. But as you mentioned earlier, you have that Viper who can sort of backfill into a Sentinel role of sorts. And you have that double controller also on Neon Blade with Viper and Brimstone once again. Only single duelist this time also opting for Cypher. So Cypher's definitely a, a very good pick. I feel like Bind is a, a strong map for the Cypher. I, I do prefer a Killjoy. However, you can get a lot of useful intel out of that Cypher player. I just hope we see the spider web on Hookah. That you can place the trips in a way that it forms an X, and then when someone jumps into it, they just get suspended in the air. It's it's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to see, and especially when you have multiple people that try jump through as well. You just get two people dangling along. Boom, boom, easy headshots. If we see that, I'm gonna get high. You'll be a happy boy. I'm a happy boy anyway because I get to cast alongside you. Oh God, you must be depressed. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I will be if you keep if you keep uh, telling me that I'm not allowed to talk about Yoru. <laughs> <laughs> the rules have been reversed. <laughs> but anyway, we're finally about to get into this matchup as the teams start to get ready for round number one in this semi-final. We have Neon Blade on defense, starting up in control on the attack. Just going to wait for that flash to come through. Just a slight connection, which gives information that there is players here, but not fully pushing through yet. Four players set up on B for Neon Blade, and only the Viper left alone on Site A. Oh, they're locking this down, but the reason why is two of those players are playing long, they're by that teleport. If it's an A hit, instantly they can pivot to help out that site. The flash is coming off at the camera, just stopping anything pushed through. The cage is enough to prevent these double duelists from entering onto site and just force them back ever so slightly. And that could just see, see the call coming out for this A take and Rika picking up the first kill. It calls out for the teammates like you see everyone gathering around, but the TP is now being taken from Neon Blade, trying to catch up with the rest of them. But it's a double TP, so Wait. it's a double fake. It's a oh we got you as they now head on to B site, but the player is still here. That timing, that lurk is just so good. As now the Cypher all alone taken out. Site will be cleared. Two versus one. And this is why I love Bind. You can make the enemy team look silly with these fakes. And Control Electra played that perfectly. 
yeah, waited for the TPs to come through and just went, psych, I'm going elsewhere. And that is enough to bait out so much. But Adora answers back with a kill, but Spike is planted, set up for this post plant. Three members left for control. You have to fancy them to swing through and B and Cake swing at the same time. It picks up the first round and they start strongly. And I really love that slow lurk up through the site kind of predicting that the setup was going to be like that and it's a big risk because you get taken out all of a sudden that round looks a lot more difficult but they're able to find the kill and Riker finds such a good lurk in that round single-handedly winning control Electra that one and I, I like this buy as well. They're keeping two ghosts. It is a bit risky, but it means that if you win this round, you are such a good stead heading into round four. Oh, but it's a good start. But then Serenity answers back. Double kill to take this into four versus three now, and then just instantly calling to move away, knowing that there's more players by B side, but Neon Blade be looking to try and pounce up and see if there's a weapon to grab and use into their favour, but quick clear of lamps is going to be enough to call out that the plant can come down once it makes its way onto site, and then look for as much space as possible, and I feel like that's going to be something that's vital if they can create space, but Kitten tucked up into the smoke, gets a free kill onto Sleepy, and then just backs away. Adora, and then land some of these shots here, the Viper Wall just slowing their progress. They are going to make it past. With the bombs planted back site. Serenity gets another third kill for them. Make it four. Not able to get the ace though. As eight HP and a dream. But it's a one versus one now. And it's a winnable situation. The tap's going to come through. Keiki's going to flash through as well. Peak lands that headshot. And just like that, we thought it was going to be a really clean, really easy round for control. But Neon Blade makes it expensive. They do, and they, they almost win the round. It all starts coming down thanks to Kitten and that smoke just to get the first kill. And then Cake just about winning up in the end there. Could have been dangerous if the spray went slightly different for Kitten. But unfortunately for Neon Blade, it doesn't in control. Take the 2-0. And actually full buy up into this next round as well. And Neon Blade's going to be able to buy. This is what we spoke about saving those two ghosts. It meant that they had the money still for the half armor Vandal. And Neon Blade not going to be expecting this. They might get a bit overzealous looking for these fights and find themselves just getting battled by rifles. It's an adaption that's been taken here, not wanting to fight fully outside on B this time for Neon Blade, thinking that they can commit a little bit more to A and control, just playing it so slow and methodical, not wanting to fully dash and commit anywhere, get that information on where some players are playing and allow the sort of potential aggression to come through from Neon Blade, but not wanting to give anything up, just waiting for the angles. Peak spots two with the cam. They've got 45 seconds left on the clock. Time starting to dwindle, but with those teleports, a pivot is always possible. They've got control of long now. And the execute. Going to start to initiate. But there's already members on site. This could be devastating for this control side if they're not able to win these fights here. Yeah, not able to get anywhere. Adora picks up the first kill. The flash now coming in. It's Kitten and Mizzy pick up kills themselves, tearing apart this control attack on this round. And Mizzy picks up the third kill as well, and Neon Blade on the board, 2-1, looking like a strong defensive hold there. Just a little bit too patient for control, and then all pushing in at the last minute is just able to be swept aside by this Neon Blade side. And there was no space able to be gathered. Those double duelists went in, but they were met by a crossfire. That's why this Cypher is so good, especially towards this B site, but they're switching up the hit now. Cypher's actually going to put the utility onto A, but play B. I love this adaptation here from Neon Blade. Yeah, getting the head of control, but it looks like we could be seeing a fast hit onto A. The Blade Storm it pulled out from Serenity already round number three, and we have the Blades 
ready to pop off. This is huge for the eco round. Taking control of lamps. I like that from both sides. A nice little pinch. But Mizzy, using that ult to take the space back. Is Serenity dropping? Adora picks up a kill. Mizzy picks up another. And this round is falling apart so quickly for control that Riker has to try and find something big in this smoke if they want to continue this round. And their defensive holds are so good on the side of Neon Blade. They are playing these crossfires perfectly. But when this smoke drops, there's going to be a Wild West shootout and Riker wins it. New skin line. Be damned. It's the Neo front, Neon Frontier. Able to land that shot, but it will, it will be all that this control squad gets as it's now 2-2, heading into our next full buy round. Yeah, Neon Blade will be very happy with that. It's the best response that you can ask for to just tie it back up and start to see if they can cement a lead and take that sort of momentum that they've now been gathering. You see they've got the economy starting to build up as well. Got Kat Katina at 5,100 and a couple of players over 4,000 as well, really starting to build the bank. And you have to say they're looking good value for it. Sorry, did you say Katina? It's Katina! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to say the elongated name. Got to do them justice, as like we spoke about before, orbs, they're equal sides, but that brim smoke is pretty much going to cut it off and give that one to Neon Blade for free. As a slow round coming out from control now. We've seen that their aggression can be so good, but maybe the chaos is what Neon Blade is suited towards because these crossfires and these defensive setups have been nullifying any executes that Control have tried to make. Yeah, they're just allowing Control to play into this patient game, knowing that they have the setups, like you say, just able to just... The Neon Blade are, I'm going to say it, controlling the pace of the game. I, I, I promised myself I wasn't going to make the control pun, but it's too late. We've done it. They're controlling the game, and there's one of your spider webs oh, that you're talking about. Oh, the dog just please. misses it. Yes. And it could be the perfect setup for you, so it could be. Oh, please. Please dash out of it. I want to see it. Oh, it's so close, Veggie. I'm so excited. 30 seconds left. <laughs> they haven't spotted it yet. They are going to go, but they miss. Oh, no. They're going to find their way onto site. No one going to be caught by that spider web. But bullets through the smoke are able to kill Keiki. As now a full rotate comes through. Five on four. It's the best. It's a really good situation for Neon, but it's the best situation the control have been in so far. Here up and there's Katana. Picking up that kill on Serenity. Viper's pit is submitted, and Sleepy picks up a kill now. But it's all down to Sleepy, but it doesn't matter. As Say Kitten takes the final blow and puts a 3 2 advantage for Neon Blade. Is Lost the two first two, but now fully in the lead now as well. And has the Viper's Pit should they choose to use it in the next couple of rounds. And it is a bit chaotic on that retake to mm -hmm. say the very least, but at the end of the day, through all the trades, Neon Blade with their numbers advantage were able to win out. And control, we see these site executes work. But Neon Blade were just so good at working together. The way they clear the site, call out the angles, are able to play off of each other. And Control just weren't ready for such a quick, succinct retake. It was essentially like an execute, but in reverse. Yeah, but it's a, a site for what they may be bringing on the attacking side. But for now, Neon Blade very sturdy in this defense. And once again, we're just starting to see Although it's an eco round, a very slow response from Control. Just not wanting to take too much space yet and try and see if they can individualise any fights and take any combat as the Boombots clash together and B drops the 51 HP with the spray through the smoke. And now has to go and try and regroup with the rest of the team. Still has access to those satchels, say, Kitten. Spot one. I thought they weren't going to notice and get the kill there, but it has off. revealed their position. Maybe, maybe Keiki can get a trade off here. Has the dog, has the flash, but that wall is going to deny so much info and give them so much space to work with. Snake bite just denies any entry coming through there without any damage been taken. Crossfires once again being left. set up here. 
and it's 30 seconds no, until this round is over and controller yet to make their way onto site. They are now. Oh, B is shot out of the air and Missy farming these kills down and it's all falling down to Sleepy once again. Oh. Who gets put to bed and Neon Blade 4-2 up. Oh, someone get me some Ditto because that was dirty. We need to clean up after that one. That shot out the air was insane. Just straight up picks them out. Gets another one as well for their time. And Neon Blade is just locking it down right now. And you've got to think, maybe control. They need to do a better job of drawing some rotates. Making Neon Blade use more utility before these site executes. And it's difficult because it feels like they're not leading in with a Sky Flash. So it's just a shooting gallery for this Neon Blade side. Yeah, fully playing in the range. Warming up with these shots and they're, they're making them count right now as the, the dog confirms the one's on site. B uses a showstopper to jump on as well, but not going to find anyone as nobody's home. But the smoke, just to prevent anyone pushing out. Plant now coming in, but Seika in holding on an elbow, trying to spray through the smoke to find some and almost makes contact. But the Seekers and the Flash comes in at once, chasing the players down. This is better aggression. This is really nice. It's a bait and switch as well. They've got two players playing there, but already the site execute is coming through from Neon Blade. It, it might just be a full flawless veggie as they've already taken out four. They're looking to rush down this last one. And just like that, in the matter of seconds, Neon Blade is able to retake the site at will. Yeah, I mean, flawless is literally the definition of that round. It was... It looked like Control were going to get their way in, but what they wanted, they were chasing down some kills, but then, like the flip of a coin, it just fully went into the side of Blade, picking up four fast kills there, and then the last one alive on Sleepy, just chased down and made to punish for any mistakes that Control can make, and you have to feel like maybe a timeout could be of use soon to try and make sure this attack in half is not wasted. Yeah, we haven't seen many timeouts used massively effectively throughout the day today. Some have netted some rounds afterwards, but I feel like if they if control gets beaten on this one, it's six rounds in a row. You have to think about taking that timeout as they're just getting shut down at the start of sight, instantly denied. And it seems like Neon Blade are just always able to guess where control are going to be. Yeah, they're just spot on with their calls and able to win at these gunfights and you can see Riker's trying to make up some space but this cypher trap is just going to be conga lined underneath but it doesn't matter as Mizzy's watching the angle and does take the kill it was knowing this Neon Blade team are just fully aware and are ready for everything and I feel like we haven't seen much use of these teleports I feel like part of the reason people do things like fight up B long, fight down A short, is so that you can use that teleport to rotate to the other site. You can execute more fake plays. But we haven't seen Control really use that a massive amount. And with how far pushed up this Cypher is right here from Neon Blade, they know it has to be A. There's so little time left as well. 22 seconds, now 20. The TP is taken and start to head across the B, but you've Toxin caught one waiting. And you just have to feel like the form say kitten's been on, it would potentially be enough, but B is able to shut that one down. And just space through gets another one. B is trying their best to keep control in this. But it's all falling apart right now. What can Sleepy do? Nothing. We've seen the situation before. And Neon Blade to pick up yet another round. And B somehow full flashed by her teammate, was able to find that kill there. Quite impressive. And finds another one through the smoke, but Neon Blade, they just, they're too quick with it. They're, they're so good at these, these, I mean, retakes are just working so well for them. They don't even feel like they need to battle on site. And when they guess right, they just wipe control out instantly. And I spoke more about those TP plays. We saw one there. They were able to get the bomb down, but these post plants are just not working for them. No, you're absolutely spot on. I think we've seen a little bit of success come when the aggression was pushed up elbow and a little bit on CT, but just 
not enough. And I think we're going to see a double satchel coming out from B here to try and get on to backside. Maybe the paint shells to clear out the back as well. So a lot more aggression is needed just to ensure this team don't get too much through and B finally picking up the kill on to Katana. And the plant will now come down. But it's traded one for one. The positions aren't the strongest right now. They're going to start battling. The smoke gives this Neon Blade side free access to Elbow if they want it. They already have one player through there. And they're ready. This retake. The flash dodge. The judge. It's so tense. It's so close. But Sleepy with a really nice timing gets one. Adora. And just like that, two people left alive and Keiki clutches the round out when they need it most. Yep, so I'm sure that Neon Play don't get on to seven and Control still have a chance of tying up this half if they play the rest of the next three rounds as best as possible. But that, that's more of what they needed. They need to start getting these contact kills and then just being able to hold the site. I think we've seen them default a little bit far down on sort of main too often whereas when they're fighting on site to stop the retake coming in it seems to have worked that time and let's see more of that and it's i feel like the part of the game that is going wrong is these post plants and yep. it's just a little bit of communication calling out where they're retaking from where the members are and looking to play crossfires the same way you would on defense because their site executes in all honesty have been quite good. They've been able to get sight really consistently. They just haven't been able to hold it. This time just stalled in the hooker. The smoke coming in, comboed with the snake bite, has to push them further back. You see B's taking quite a bit of damage, trying to link up with that sky player to get the heal back online. And look, this is some really good positioning here. Once again, the Lurk coming in from Raika and does take out Adora. But are they anticipating Mai to still be here? The Flash came out earlier, which could indicate oh. there's another player. But they've TP'd across to B and have baited the team to rotate. And now Katana has left. It's an easy plant and this post plant needs to be perfect. And they have to figure out a way to play these angles. They've got a nice little crossfire set up. As they push out this smoke, B swings, drawing crossfires, but Blade is just so good at trading each other out. But is it enough as Keiki battles to keep the site under control? And Control do not want to give up this site anymore. And they manage to get that fourth round. They do, and you know what? It's all down to the TP plays that you wanted. They've listened to Coach Snow and made the improvements to just jump through a TP every now and then, and it is working. And I mean, it's so, it's honestly so good because it's its quite a common thing where people will get a kill on a site and then they'll feel like they have to instantly go onto that site. But in reality, you've just drawn rotates over. The enemy team are yep. going to be moving over there because they want to back up their team. And so the TPs on bind give you that easy access to swap over. As we see now, they're going to go towards A once again. This dog is going to lead them in. Should give them lamps control if they so choose to take it. But the showstopper from B gives them sight cleanly. But they haven't found anyone. It's a full retake from Neon Blade once again. Yeah, the showstopper unfortunately not finding anyone. But does clear the space. And now Mizzy starts to fight back for this Neon Blade control of sight. Kitten was waiting for it. The spike doesn't manage to get planted either. And they're going to have to run away. It's B versus the world. And Adora gets the paint shells. It was it was a brutal hunting down in 7-4 now. Control will be looking to finish this half off. I want to say strongly, but it's it's a loss on the half. But if you go in 7-5, if you win, you're then pistol and your bonus. Or your anti-eco, sorry. At least then it's tied up straight away. You, you don't want to really be losing this round. And what we're seeing from Blade right here is just really strong fundamentals. The crossfires are good. They're so patient. They realize that they have time when the bomb goes down. And they're waiting for Control, who are a bit over eager to make a play right now. As this Viper's Pit is going to pretty much shut down, shut down the entirety of Short. There's a Cypher trip in there as well. This is so difficult to navigate. But Control wants to make it happen. Sacred has already got one Serenity. 
manages to find their way onto site and get themselves a kill. But Say Kitten playing in lamps. It's so close, but the shotgun is there. Yep, the Bucky. The continuing trend of today that the Bucky is a supreme weapon and will get kills. And there goes the TP over on to B site and Adora trying to use those satchels to make up as much space as possible in case the flank comes back on. But it's going to be committed over onto B site, the plant now going down. And it's down planted. to Serenity and Sleepy. Can they hold on to this site? And this three versus two retake is about to come in from both sides. And they're making the right decision here. They want to isolate this two versus one. Right now, Initiator split up from the other core members of the team. So May's going to take this fight, get taken out. And just like that, the situation is dicey. But they're just going to defuse. Halved already. One enemy remaining. Gets one. Pros don't fake and it doesn't matter as Mizzy finds that kill onto Serenity. And an 8-4 half for Neon Blade. Switching side. Yeah, you have to say that's a, an impressive half for Neon Blade. Double Duelist once again, not really paying off in the halves that you're expecting them to. But maybe they can be a little bit more aggressive and find more of those angles on the defense as control look to make sure that they don't drop map number one and start to take a lead going in to this next half but neon blade now looking to cement why this was their pick and what they want to do with this bind map and i didn't even i forgot to even take that into account that this is neon blade's mac pick yeah we're I, I'm so used to the other team winning the map pick from what we saw in that last <laughs> yeah. series that the fact that Neon Blade is really showcasing what they want to do on this map is, is really nice to see as Control wants to get aggressive right here, take this orb, out be long and pretty much go for the same hold that Neon Blade did. Farming the orbs, though, like you said. Sky already picking up both of those orbs and now... Going to have to fight for this. So we've got three players left on B site. Riker's stuck in a rock in a hard place, and every bit of utility forcing that player to die. Spike down, B. Oh, they don't notice it. Sleepy gets another one. Nice shot right there as B has a big ask. Double TP. They're fighting already. Maybe it's a bit overzealous, a bit eager. And B's like, guys, we're gonna. We're in a 3v3 and now I'm in a 1v3. Yeah, it's all falling That's apart. Like... The dominoes pushed down. Spike carriers down. Spike down B. Mm, finds one. Looks for the next one, but has a double swing That's to deal with. Standing. Solo HP, but finds it. Finds it. Has the paint shells online. Pushes it round. Oh. But my with the jumping classic snow picks that kill up and Neon Blade take the knife. And raised heart rates from everybody watching right now. Including all these players, as you thought maybe B was going to win that one out. It was close. He's so able to get a few kills there. And just if, if if there's a second longer, if that nade can can bounce off that wall and hit, this round's going the other way. But nine four now. Timeout going to be taken by control. We said they might have needed it in the first half, but they are going to take it now. Reassess what's gone on. Maybe look for an aggressive play in this second round. Of the second half yeah so a question to you now is it's 9-4 right the game is most definitely not over there's still possibilities to to get back into it however do you feel like at 9-4 you should be forcing or you just play the traditional play let let back pre pretty much admit that the round's over and lose that or not obviously you don't want to lose it but in a mindset of losing it or do you just full send it and say look we want as many rounds as possible from now on. We don't want to give you the money advantage. We don't let you get the the momentum going. Let's just send it down. I mean, I'm always a fan of the second round Sheriff buy. You go Sheriff, no armor. You look to maybe find some some nice headshots. And then it means your buy is weaker on the next round. But you still get that half armor Vandals or Phantoms. That's, that's kind of my play for these go-tos. Instead, we see a few shorties. They're going to triple stack Hooker again. Maybe hoping Neon Blade doesn't expect it. But they've been so good and so succinct at using this utility to clear out. And they're just going to creep up. And just like that, it's going to be an A hit. Yep, the pressure is enough. 
to just push it away, but it's the intel that's given out, and you see the whole of this control team just rotating across <laughs> instantly. And then the double back. Yep. Oh, veggie. They don't even need the TPs. <laughs> they don't need the TPs to get away from sight. And Kate has to run across back to try and oh. back up this B site, knowing that the A hit isn't quite being invested into. And Kate and B have a lot of work to do to defend this site. I mean, controller getting their steps in. You, you, you've got to say that much. <laughs> They've run back from B to A, back to B. The other players from A are going to have to come as well. As maybe this is the fight they win. B gets one on B. There's so many Bs, but there's only one control B. Actually, there's two. But we'll, <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's Neon Blade start to get this plan in. And that flips the switch on to control to half to force into this retake. If they can find him, Tana is going to get beaten up a little bit by those paint shells and cake. Takes advantage of the chaos with the classic. It all goes down and control looking good for this retake. If it can take care of Adora who's running out of bullets in all sorts. And control B picking it up the 3k for the round and getting a defuse. And but like we said, around it. It traditionally isn't supposed to be yours. The thrifty comes in and it's a 9-5. We're going to work. Control B making a bold statement right there. Really pushing the pace. Able to find kills in a situation where maybe you think they shouldn't have got it. Classic V Ghost. It's pretty much like the pistol round. And they're able to round this one off at the end. Adora ran out of bullets. And just like that. They only have a couple of Bulldogs on the board, though, so it's not the strongest buy. I feel like they're trying to maybe save their economy a little bit on the side of control. Try to build that up as much as they can. Yeah, just make sure that they can all buy up together, maybe save it in case someone dies. But this is a bit of a more traditional hit on B here, oh but you can see Bai is not <laughs> here. Once that orb runs through everything, has the... The heal available, but chooses not to use it quite yet. As Katana could use a little bit of topping up, but not going to be invested. Maybe wait to see if any more chip damage gets done off anyone else. This oh, control just going. looking to patrol here. It's the conga line. It's the conga line through into elbow. It's Kate. It's one, two, three. Can't get a fourth though. Adora is going to shut that one down, but Riker, the lurk master. Now, on this defensive side, gets taken out. And Adora, again, in another clutch situation. Has the bomb now, but only has 7 HP. Serenity, stalking, looking for where the position could be. But Adora's flipped, walked the whole way around, Snow. They could just go to A if they want. Oh! The peak round, the timing. Adora picks it up and it's flippity flops. They win another round that shouldn't be theirs. Neon Blade said, if you can do it, we can do it too. And they get 10 on the board and Adora putting on an absolute show. And Keiki gets three here. That should, boom, round over. That should be it done. Yeah. And the fact that Adora is the one that finds that kill, then gets a 4k 21 and 8. I mean, we have had some big individual performances and Adora and Mizzy are are making a name for themselves in this game as the MVPs. As B's going in, looking for this early aggression. They're going to gain this space now. And B just keeps running. But isn't able to find that kill. And instantly taken out as already just like that. Another round should be going over to Neon Blade. Yeah, but if Okay, I was going to say, if history's taught us anything, we shouldn't count it out, but Sleepy Peaks a corner and One of my cameras is broken. gets put to bed. And Neon Blade, another step closer to map number one. And you have to say, they're definitely favourites to be progressing right now. Adora is unstoppable at this moment in time. We need to see from control. I love the aggression. I love the, the want to make these plays, but... A little bit more patience would do them some good. We spoke about in the first series that we watched that they needed a bit more aggression. Control have aggression in abundance, but right now, Neon Blade just is expecting it. Look at this map hold. They're defaulting. They're pretty much playing five spread 
just waiting to see who peeks out from control. And so far, nobody's quite wanting to make that that mistake. The spike now being collected and headed over onto A, the transport bus, is taking the rest of the team across. And you see they're still two waiting, and it's, it's going to be an interesting take. You're going to have the dog come in looking for the info as you expect, not seeing anyone up close, and the rest of the team following that dog. They're going to have to have a job with the judge, but it doesn't matter because the showstopper connects. And takes that one down. Seeker's now invested as well. We'll reveal the rest of the team's position. But Sleepy peeks round and gets a kill on my. And that is Planter. Really big kill from Sleepy right there as well. Peek out for some more. As B's taken out. There's still time to TP if they want to. But they need to get that bomb to be able to do it. Riker just pushes through lamps. Finds that kill. And the TPs are going to happen. Control Electra are gonna have to make that very long walk of shame back to the B site. Yep, once again getting the steps up, making sure the 10,000 for the day is achieved. And they will most definitely have to see if they can put in a retake performance. We've seen Neon Blades impressive retakes. Do Control have it in their powers as Mizzy stops everything and it's all down to Rika who does pick up one. Making this a little bit more possible, but currently 19 HP and even less on the bullet side. Goes hunting, exploring, looking for any players before tapping on that spike. But it doesn't matter as Katana is able to pick up the kill and put Neon Blade onto, onto map point. And I don't want to say it, but it feels like this... This difference in rounds might just be insurmountable. And we see here that even when it's going right for control, they find themselves in a three versus three situation. But Neon Blade, they're so patient. They take their time. And they're so good defensively at holding these angles. And that works in such their favor when they have to plant the bomb and then defend it afterwards. They use those same skills we saw on defense to just lock this down. Yeah, Control really lacking the answers on this map so far. The Viper's Pit, just going to stop anyone pushing up B and you feel like you're going to commit a few more players across the A because that should, in theory, force the players away from this B site on the side of the Unblade, but they don't care. Invest in the Brim utility to try and spam this one down. Mizzy just not able to connect with those shots and setting a crossfire up and hook of it, not going to be challenged. Riker uh, did start to peek out. It's going to back away now. The as the rotate is going to be drawn over. And it seems like Control happy to play this retake. They just want to keep control of showers. And already Adora finding their way onto site. And it's completely open. But Control does have a lot of space. A lot of space, but... Not quite got the movement yet left. as Mizzy trying to hide through and gets the kill. The judge isn't going to be good enough this time as it's a 2k and there's smoke. only two left alive for Control now to keep this map alive for them. Make that one. This is not a nice position that Riker's in, so. And it should be all but over. The camera is going to spell Riker's demise. They know exactly where they are. The Seekers as well. This is just rude. Katana wants that final kill. Is going to be able to find it. And just like that, Neon Blade starts with the momentum. And secures themselves their own map pick. Yep, 13-5. Impressive start from this Neon Blade. Ensuring that they still have not dropped a map. And you have to say they're going to look good going into this matchup that we're going to see from the next map. And... Control need to try and find the answer. They need to take the break into adjusting and what they're going wrong. Yes, they are playing with a sub. That's important to recognise that they're not at their full strength. However, you after beating Wraith on Bind, which is one of Wraith's favourites and strongest of maps, mm. you would feel like Control would have had a, a bigger input and impact on that game instead. But like you said, it's a best of three, right? So just because you lose one map doesn't mean it's all over. You've still got plenty of time to get back into it. 
Yeah, and we are going to be moving on to Fracture, which was Control's map pick. So when we look at that map, Veggie, is, is there anything you're expecting to go a little bit differently? Obviously, we saw that Neon Blade, super comfortable on Bind, but Control on Fracture, is it a different dynamic? Honestly, I don't think that much of a different dynamic. I'd still expect to see a double duelist, and I feel like Fracture is also another map where a retake can be really useful. And we know how good Neon Blade's retakes are, so that's something to take into consideration when we move on to Fracture, that if you have like those agents like you're going to potentially be seeing your Breach and your Killjoy, the retakes are very much wide open for Neon Blade to take advantage of. Well, we're going to have to find out very soon because we're going to be heading into map two. But make sure you don't go anywhere because we'll be back right after this break.
It's time for what could potentially be the final map of the day. So we're going to head to Fracture for what Neon Blade will be hoping to close out this series for them. But Control will be looking to control their way back into it and make sure that this goes to map number three. But we were talking during the break that Neon Blade, as you mentioned before, have a really good success rate on this map, don't they? Yeah, Neon Blade is 75% win rate. So, you know, it's not as... It's not as mentalism of a team that have only played four matches but the more insane thing is their attack side win rate 81 percent of rounds they win on attack which not completely out of the ordinary fracture is an attack sided map but 81 percent is a lot of consistent rounds won on attack so definitely for neon blade when we saw that they can play this defense so well they can play off of each other that immensely if their attack is even better than it was in that bind game it's a scary thing for control. Yeah, and you, you have to feel if you, like you said, if you put both of those elements together, they're winning all, not all, but 80% of their attacking rounds, and then they have the ability to retake sites as easily as they did, and as well put together as they did. You, you have to be slightly worried for control, but at the same time, control are a very good outfit. They're experienced. They have the coaches there that can sit at the back and analyze what's went wrong, and then put that in. To, to, to practice and make sure that it doesn't happen again this time. But, I mean, I, d I don't really know what to expect, right? We're, pro we're probably going to see double duelists from both teams, I feel like. Yeah. I, I'm, we'll have to see if we see B on that duelist again. I feel like it had... It did have a decent amount of impact. Like I said before, Control were able to get sites relatively easily. It's just that holding those sites was so difficult for them, which is a good problem to have, I guess. If you're able to consistently get sight, you play those post plants a bit better. 
Maybe I would have liked to see a bit more post-plant aggression from them. They were so aggressive at getting onto the sites. Maybe a few cheeky flashes through the smoke just to make Neon Blade respect you. It's it's one of those concepts when you talk about IGLing kind of in Valorant is it's, it's something EDG did, it's something PRX does. You play hyper-aggressive early on because it makes the enemy team play more passive. And then when you play more passive, it gives you so much more time. Yeah. We are going to see the controller switch up for B playing on to that centre now, really showing that they can play literally whatever they want, whenever they want, and we'll have to see if that's going to pay off, like you said. Only one duelist for controlling the, the two as anticipated for Neon Blade. Mm. Whereas we have Breach on both sides, which is what we absolutely love to see. I'm, I'm always down to see Breach picked in whatever capacity. Reggie, there's an agent yep. been picked that I'm not a fan of. <laughs> yeah, for, for anyone that doesn't know this, Snow went on a, 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 a maybe a mini run on on screen about the sage agent, and um, it was it was very much like level headed and explaining why sage is, isn't a good pick in Snow's head. But what you didn't have to live through was the fifteen minute break of pure and utter rage that came out of this man's mouth. I've never heard someone beat down on an agent so much in my life. <laughs> Look, <laughs> like this. T TLDR. It was specific <laughs> for split, but I can move it over to Fracture as well. The issue is with Sage. If you use your utility at the start of the round, you're essentially a useless agent. Because teams either wait out that wall, or they break the wall, and then you've wasted 400 credits on an ability that does nothing. And if you use <laughs> your slow just... orbs to stop them pushing through, you're then, then essentially an agent which has a 30 health heal for yourself or a hundred health heal for other people but he was no marivaran because people are so good at clicking heads at this level that it's very <laughs> rare that chip damage is going to make that much of an impact <laughs> i've just got that image in my head there's there's no mid to wall this time so they're just going to wall spawn it's fine you can't, you can't, can't rotate through mid if there's no mid and we've walled spawn no that's, you're gonna make me angry you're gonna make me angry yeah. <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying <laughs> I, I think sage is a pick is okay. I just think in situations like this, you see they just send it over the sage wall. They just don't care. Like, it, it doesn't matter to them. And then they break it and go. And you've used 400 credits and already Neon Blade just instantly sprinting through the site. And they found their way on to B essentially for free. Yeah, but this is a really fast and well planned out attack from Neon Blade. And it's what you expected when you're talking about a team that has an 81% win rate on these attacks, but Control answering back now, Riker picking up one and Serenity picking up two, trying to get back into the sleepy in a good position to get one, and does get one, almost gets the third, but Adora gets shut down by Serenity now, and Control start this half off a little bit better, picking up around now, they'll be looking to keep that one going, but like you said, the Sage Wall gets put down so early and it, it just ends up being so pointless. And that's a pistol round as well. That's not even with weaponry that can break it early, but I feel like yep. maybe the caster curse, maybe karma kicked in and Neon Blade, they got onto site, but they were a bit too eager to get the bomb down instantly. Control won out those fights. They found their ones. It was what they needed. We'll have to see now. I feel like to emphasize on this Sage point, I feel like the ability can be very well utilized, but when it's used at the start of a round, it just feels a bit pointless to me. We'll have to see if they can find a little bit more value out of it, but so far it's done its job. It's stopped the, the people that were pushing across on that B side, which was no one getting onto site. But now it might find a little bit more use as these players push up from under and get trapped behind this, and the, the shorties are not really going to be able to break that wall quite easily. Now just wait this one out. Wall will break. They'll be able to head on through. And Mizzy here... This, I believe the single sheriff on this team as wall breaks and it means that now this control side are going to have to watch arcade they still have a trip on the other side watching main and neon blade just they're, they're, they're probing at control's defense to see what they can find 
Yeah, they're just not committing. They're waiting for any potential util to be used, but Control not really wanting to give up too much left. either as this starts to make its way onto on to B, but you've still got the two players sat waiting for this to come up. B and Cake sat ready to pounce, and Cake does get the first one. B gets the second. But Katana is going to get that kill, but there's 10 seconds ten left, seconds so left. it's windling down on the time limit, standing. and this, the spike isn't in their control. They have to go for kills. And, and is and over, right? Yeah, Mizzy sprinting to try get as many kills as possible. Just try make some kind of damage happen onto this control side, as they essentially ended up saving a sheriff because they didn't die at the end of that. And now I'm going to buy up that bookie on what should have been a full by round for the side of Neon Blade. It just all went awry for them. And we see, you know, the more I hate on the Sage, the better the Sage is going to do. It's just the way it works. Mm. It's, it's early doors, though. Let's, let's be fair. It's still very early doors. Let's not get too excited. <laughs> it's still very early doors. It's 2-0 to control just now. As you see, Neon Blade just willing to sit back and be patient. We've seen this before on a previous map, that they're not always going to commit into a fast push, and they'll just allow Control to, to do what they want to do at the start, and then they will dictate the pace. And going over these ropes, knowing that no one's pushed out, they play for these orbs if they can, and start to hit onto this B site that's been set up for. But a lot of space being taken by Control outside of A. Yeah, they are moving forwards. They're going to be able to deduce that it is going to most likely be a B hit, so a rotate. Start to walk on back. The Mizzy being a bit cheeky. The smokes come through as well. The wall's already down. The slow orb's there to stop, but he pushes, but it does not matter as Katana's got one. Gets another just for good measure. Five on three now as the flank is held down by this Cypher. It's not looking good for control in a really tough position with Nowhere near enough weapon power to get themselves back into this Neon Blade. Five players left alive. This is what we've seen on the previous as well. Able to pull out a flawless when it was needed. In control, just sitting down at the bottom of the lane, waiting for a peak to come through, but Mizzy does not care. The centimetre given and taken, and Riker now stunned up. Jumps into the smoke, and Adora finishes that one off, and it's... Neon Blade that fight their way back into this map. And not only that, it's a flawless. So that economy really going to start to pick up now if they can string some rounds together. We see here that I feel like it's... it. This is where the, the Sage issue is going to start to be more prevalent. With a team like Neon Blade that isn't just going to sprint into you. Yes, you can put the wall up, but they're more than willing to wait the first 30 seconds of the round and just go afterwards. We've seen that, and their executes are really good. They're really clean together. We'll have to see how it works with this first buy round, if that really makes a difference. But the wall is going to go towards A main. Still gives them access to that door, though. Yep, and the door is where they'll have to go, unless they spam through this wall, but not wanting to commit to that quite yet. Here comes the flash, jumping out, follows the nade, but does get up there, but it's taken down, but the rest of the team swinging exactly through, and the stun is enough for Mizzy and Mai to capitalise. Bald man mode now activated, reveals the rest of the positions, and that's going to allow for an easy plant and post plant to be set up for. And the plant is wide in the open. It's a good situation for Neon Blades here. But control, still in a three versus three. Not the worst position you can be in. Grenade. As we see May on site. Holding that flash, that stun, ready to fight. Already there's someone back sight. But it's just so clean from Blade. Once again, we see that defensive prowess come through as they're able to just lock that oh site down. Kid. My knees are going to kill after this. Yeah, they have the answers for what they need. And I feel like the, the Cypher ult is absolutely pivotal at that moment to set up for where they want to be playing on that post plant. Mm. It allows them to play so much in the open for, for, like I said, for the plant rather than having to push up the back of default or maybe behind box worried that they're going to get shot. 
and it, it just makes so much space. It means that Mizzy can play back over at Sands afterwards and peek round and get the easy free kills and control not looking. But control now have to try and find a way back into this game once again. They're on the half by with these sheriffs. The full rope. And just sprinting. <laughs> the four members <laughs> rope though. Oh my gosh, they predicted the play. They just they've completely run them around. As as Neon Blade now are gonna make their way over towards B. It should be a free sight. They've managed to play this one almost perfectly to get themselves there. As Mizzy gets one, but is traded out. And Neon Blade, uh, it's almost like they're surprised that they're able to get themselves onto site so easily. Yeah, well, no challenge to stop it. They have their own Thunder available should they use to invest it in. The Aftershock's just going to push some angles slightly away and Forces B out in the open, does manage to get one, but Adora's there for the refrag, and now Showstopper invested, pushed up, and that should be enough to take down Cake, and it is, as Neon Blade get themselves in the lead. And I love the play from Control to there. The pinch could have been so, so effective, but it's almost like, like Mizzy read it in advance, had a trip on each side to stop that pinch coming through, slow down that attack, and then they just rotate over through Arcade and Control were were left looking at the dust that they had left behind. And now Neon Blade, it's almost completely similar to that last game. Control was able yeah. to win the first two rounds and Neon Blade has just been sweeping since. Yeah, it's an exact replication and for Control's sake, we hope that it doesn't continue like that. But for Neon Blade, they'll be oh, no. trying not to throw grenades at themselves <laughs> as they enter onto this set. Maybe getting... Not bored of how easy it is, but wanting to make it a little bit more of a challenge and send one player to go into Control's team to help. But Adora taking it out B and actually Sentinel down, but Sleepy I know exactly still above. We're going to get spotted out now, but does manage to get one, but taken out at the same time. And now this two versus two. Stopped with the aftershot rolling thunder about to be invested. And they're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this one, Snow. There's no risks being stopped. And do they know the bomb's down on site? Did they hear it drop? That's the real question. If they know this round is nice and easy, they just need to hold for this last player. If they don't, it gets so much more sketchy. Still gonna be used. Last player He's standing. gonna peek out and find one. And now, a situation that Control thought they had the advantage of. Thrown right back in their face! Oh, <laughs> Ice in their veins, able to get that fourth round. It's just, it's not acceptable. It's, it's, it's not allowed. It's, no, they, they can't be getting away with things like this. It's an, 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 unwin, an unwinnable situation. Mm -hmm. And yet, Mizzy manages to come out on top and wins the round. It's, my, my brain hurts just now. And how this has gone through, it's just a slight miss error on the peak from control and then Mizzy just able to hit the shots that should never be allowed and Neon Blade inserting their dominance into this map now as well. And they're just... Neon Blade almost taking a page out of Fnatic's book when they play Fracture. They, they go for these heavy five stacks, execute through one side and... Just look to trade off each other. But this could be where this Sage Race combo really has its effectiveness. They can stall so, so well. Smoke going to be used as well. It seems like Neon Blade are just going to let them have that space for now. And just wait it out. Yeah, they've always got the option to rotate back over to A if needed. But Control not wanting to commit to any form of rotate, knowing that that is a possibility. And as you see, Neon Blade just playing around underneath starting to take fights in different angles and surprise this control team from where they could be coming from the serenity just peeking through on arcade still here comes the stun the pace coming in and serenity gets the kill this time peeks around for another one but is going to get taken out by mai and now Raika aftershock to try and clear anyone coming through but katana on solo health gets the kill and so does sake it and and that's four versus two, the same as the scoreline. It's not looking good for control. 
make that three versus one veggie those members traded out and I feel like Sleepy at this point, maybe just going to have to save. It's not worth the risk. Yes, yeah, you might hit some nut shots, but that rifle is so pivotal for your team in this round. Looks like they might go for it anyway. Going to peek out. Possibly a good timing as they get one, but the stun is primed. My. Waiting for Sleepy to come through here. I'm just going to play off of that as Mizzy. Just hitting so many good shots this game. Yep. You felt for a second that maybe we were going to see the reverse of what we'd just seen before coming from Mizzy and maybe another one versus two clutch. But like I said, Mizzy's just so strong today that able to put up such a good performance and really start to build the lead 5-2 now for Neon Blade. Be halfing and being forced into calling this timeout. To make sure that this match does really does not follow the same path as the last one. And it literally has been, as of right now. Control, one pistol, won their second round. And then, since then, have just been swept by Neon Blade. And in that last game, we didn't see the timeout come through. But B, taking the initiative, taking that timeout early now. They want to stop the bleeding, set themselves up for a set play. See what they can make happen on this round. See if something cheeky comes out. Coaches going to be discussing, but Neon Blade. I feel like they've been a team that's been so good at predicting the aggressive plays that Control want to make. Yep. Can they adapt? We will find out, but not this round as it is a full Sheriff and half shield as you, as you like to do quite often. They'll be looking to try and take some heads off and pick up as many weapons as they can to try and turn this one into their favour but if not they'll be able to forward into the next round anyway as Neon Blade just chilling and spawn right now waiting for this aggression that they seem to be waiting every round grenade. it's a grenade combo with the stun is going to come through flashes there as well which sets off that instant protocol of let's rope over let's look to attack from arcade they're expecting the aggression but it's different from control this time they've got two members on the flank looking to lurk behind but mizzy ever so consistent at landing those shots opens up with the first blood and just forces serenity back as well can't peek off of that to try and trade their teammate and now they start to just get the plant down now as well and once again control forced into having to play this retake site but they don't have the weapons to sake it and bows down two and OC Serenity to die and now it's down to Sleeper who's just stood weighing up the options looking for heads finds one but Katana is going to pick up the last and give them the six round and make sure at least they attack in half they don't lose and we do go back onto a buy for this control squad and a stat that we didn't mention earlier is yes neon blades attack percentage is 81 percent but their defense is only 28 percent so they are weaker on defense on this map so hope's still there if you're a control fan for them to pull this one back but neon blade right now is pushing the pace pushing the momentum and they want to get a seventh round on the board yeah, they do not want to let this one slip take full advantage of the momentum while they have it and that wall once again just providing absolutely no use and just being sidestepped over and B actually finds one looks for a second but say getting there to follow that one up and sight just like that is in the hands of Neon Blade but Control answering back finally getting that double kill and taking the fight to Neon Blade. Four players left for control and only two for this Blade side. And Neon Blade might be able to pivot back towards A. Maybe find themselves a bomb plan. But actually no, saying that, bomb's down on site. Yep. They're not going to be able to move back towards A. They have to take these fights if they want to win. But only 7 HP on Mizzy. But that doesn't matter when you know this player can just clap heads if needed. But... Also worth noting that you've got Sea Kitten on very low health as well. It should just be two easy body shots, but does get taken out in the end. Three players left alive for control. That's a better standing. Keep some of that money going into the next round and 
starting to fight back after this time out now. Yeah, six to three. And you did say about the timeout, probably wasn't going to affect that last round. It was just a save, but it did affect this round here. And whatever adaptation they made, maybe it seems to be more of these quick rotates. We saw a lot of members shuffle over towards B and just commit to the fights on site. And they're able to beat out Neon Blade, who seem to not be doing as many fakes as they did on Bind. They're very committed. Once they get themselves towards a site, they are going onto that site. I thought they were going to take the ropes again. I've never seen a team take the ropes as many times as this Neon Blade addicted to the Flying Fox. But the fight gets nice. taken this time by Riker. The double swing is enough to take down Mizzy. And that's the start that this control team will be wanting. Taking down a player that's caused them so many, so many issues. The Serenity answering back once again. But Mai taking care of Cake. And now the plant just needs to start coming in. But Serenity has the showstopper to invest. It does come in. It does connect. Four players left for control, two for Neon Blade. This is looking like a better comeback. And they're trying to hold the Alamo right here. Should be a near impossible task, but we've seen them pull these ones out the bag before. Control. Waiting for that rotate. They have the spike down. The Molly's going to be there. It's one, two for Riker. Third kill of the round. And all of a sudden, that's two back to back for control. And a little bit of momentum for them. Yep, and as you mentioned, they'll, they'll be feeling good with this, you know. 20% win rate, like you said, on the defensive side for Neon Blade. Previously on this map and the, the scope that we can have. You, you'll be happy if you can tie this one up at 6 all, or at least worst case scenario is you're sat on 4. And it's an 8-4. It's, it's definitely a winnable situation, especially when you know that control can do very well on attack and i mean yes you've got two sentinels so you are kind of more defensive focus so to speak but breach is your initiator with your flashes you've got your brimstone smokes and your fast results and pushes there's definitely potential for control to still stay in this but if you'll probably remember from your ranked games you talk about these sentinels how defensive they are sage in and of themselves i feel like can actually find a lot of usefulness on attack very often you'll see them use the wall to pretty much wall themselves towards the site so they use it almost yep. like an extra smoke to be able to deny that info and get through towards site and yes it's spammable but it's a lot harder on defense to really commit to that because if someone swings out of it afterwards while you're reloading it is a death sentence yeah, it's not overly what you want to be doing but neon bleed taking that time out Time to reset and see if they can head into this half with a winning advantage. But Control definitely in a position where they could tie it up fairly easily if they're able to take the fights. But not wanting to push too aggressive. Taking a little bit of space out of B and now pushing under. But that Boombot could have caused a problem. But Serenity is wise enough to stay back and not get caught out. But they're so aware from the players. They're, they're watching the angle, they know, but Serenity gets the first two kills anyway. And the team wants to fight more, but Serenity's just trying to back away. Say, please, let me get out of this fight. We got what we needed. And now a five on three. And Neon Blade, they really don't know what to do, but there's five members hovering over here from control. Let's go! Rolling Thunder invested. Showstopper invested from Adora here as well to try and stop anyone pushing in, but not going to connect. The control really don't gain too much space off of that rolling thunder. The stun's going to come up and block on to Katana and Adora, but the shorty does the work, but Riker doesn't care. Shoots and sprays and gets the fifth round and control Last round in fully the back in this now. No point saving. In control, they managed to regain their footing. This is a match now. This is a close game that we're going to start to see. Nothing like bind again. If they can keep this momentum up for the attack half. Just look at this retake. They are so good at playing together and playing off of each other. It was something that was missing in that bind game. But not only that, Serenity been hitting some big shots in the past couple of rounds to really put control in that advantage. Flash out. Here we go now, stepping into this last round of the half. 
got four alts available, four neon blades, so you'd be expecting to see these being used. The Rolling Thunder being the key one that can cause so much damage to anyone that's holding on to the site. Riker with the jump spots. Very give wide. Some information. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit scared for the nerve edge here. <laughs> and I ran out on the angle. That was, especially when you <laughs> see who was going to be the one taking the shot on the side in the on blade as well. Very sketchy. Yeah, not Come the player that you want to be challenging in this form right now. <laughs> Mizzy. They start to walk back. Pretty much holding that entire north side alone, and we've seen them win a vast amount of opening duels. But can they win this one here? The peek out from Serenity is going to be able to win it out and back away. Meanwhile, the sight take on the other side is coming through. Adora already claiming that space, and the war on all fronts goes the way of Neon Blade, and it will just be another retake. But the all back, they want to go aggressive as they get one, get a second with Blade Katana. Five versus two already. Make that a five versus one. And one member from control, it is sleepy and they are going to be put to sleep. Yep, and then the, the line up just at the end to secure the round. 7-5 for Neon Blade. Not quite the 81% win rate on this attacking half that we were expecting. Not expecting, but we're used to from Neon Blade here. But Control done very well to get back into it. 6-5, like you say, is is close, unfortunately, losing that final round. But listen, we, we say this every time. Two rounds, especially at half time, yeah. is nothing. You win your pistol, no. you win the next round after, and it's, it's game on all of a sudden. And I feel like it already is game on at this point. Fracture, attack-sided map. You have four different avenues to go through. The potential for fakes to draw pressure, to rotate, is so useful for all these teams. And, you know, we've seen that Control have, have made some very good aggressive plays. And they were so good at claiming sight on bind. And if they have that same success rate, it's a lot harder to retake on Fracture, I feel, than it is on bind. Yep, just been slowly pushing up onto this. You're not wanting to make any noise and give away where the position it could be so the Blade can rethink about their positions. But four players set up on A regardless, so if they do choose to push this one, it could be in trouble. Stun lined up for drop. But the satchel is going to be used to get them on, and Adora finds B in amongst that madness outside of A main. But Spike is now down. Here. And that flips the switch and makes Neon Blade forced into this retake. And retakes are something they do so, so well. A clean one from them so far as Sleepy all alone. Bomb isn't even planted for them. They do find the first kill. But the defuse is coming through. Finds oh. a second. Not able to find the third as Say Kitten. It was a risky one. They have no health left. They're bleeding. But they are able to get the round win. Yeah, I mean, that puts them on eight now, because that's that's how it works. So we're going back to counting with AJ. Seven plus one is eight. But you have to say Sleepy looked very likely to win that one in a situation once again where they shouldn't. But Control have to be slightly disappointed with that one. They looked like they had it in their hand, and in a blink of an eye, Neo Blade flipped the switch and had everything under their control. It's the retakes. Neo Blade, I feel like... Yes, I've spoke about how good Control are at getting onto site, but also part and parcel with that is Neon Blade. They're playing for retakes. They're kind of letting this Control side get site because they're so confident in their ability to take the site back. It doesn't matter if they get on and the, the spike is down at the end of the day. Neon Blade confident that they can just walk back on and use their utility well enough to shut down angles, blind off people and start to just basically frag out and that's what's happening here so Spike far down, it's two players three now falling down for control only two left alive and it oh. could go down to one if serenity can avoid those nades but it gets forced in to the back the flash is going to come up it's massacre it's a mad hunt stop so. she's already dead <laughs> it's so actually bullying just so much util used for that one corner that is just abuse and they already know. Missy already knows that's where Sleepy's going to be. This fight is going to be taken. Maybe Sleepy can win it out, but with the stun coming through, they want the knife, but they're not going to be able to get it. As Neon Blade, statement round for them. So they're able to pick that one up and control in a very similar situation to Bind. Let's see if they can pick themselves back up once again. 
Yeah, they're definitely not fully out now. Have the the funds to to buy into this one, so that'll play into their advantage. But there you see three spectres, a marshal, and the ghost being used for neon blade. So katana, you have to be fancying. So if you could lose long angles and try to get an early kill and then able to dash away, and that will be on this V main, but nobody's going to be home quite yet. And just look, fully sending this one down. Maximum pace, but gets caught in the trap, but it does open up A-side. Oh my, this, this could be a slaughterhouse right here. Depends on how well they can hold this site afterwards. The post plants have been the main issue. It's a four person retake from main. <laughs> they are not slowing down the pace. Veggie, they've swapped sides. Veggie, <laughs> <laughs> they've they literally swapped already. It's, it's the wrong half. What are we, what's going on here? But Missy finds a kill with just a ghost and a dream. Okay. <laughs> Able to get one back. It's absolute chaos across the board. The diffusers coming in. Pros don't fake, Veggie. Pros don't fake. The spam oh, isn't no. enough. They're going to get oh. the bomb diffuse. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's take a look at the positive from that. Is that at least three vandals were kept. What? But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, Snow, I don't know. Look, it, PSA, it. PSA right here. If you're pinging bomb, you make sure to do three pings. One on the middle, one on the left, one on the right. So that they know the area they have to spray. If you're pinging directly on the bomb, there's such a wide range of shots right there. And I'm not saying that's what happened right there, but... Oh. Heard it here first. Snow <laughs> says that Control lose their match up to <laughs> actually never clutch up because of pings. <laughs> GG, work on your pings. Yeah, Pavlovsky people... just joined his new ping coach. <laughs> when people talk about ping diff, they're actually talking about the actual in-game pings. <laughs> it's not an internet issue at all as Neon Blade. Just look at this. They're, they're full confidence now and they just, they just don't care. Yeah, three rounds away from securing oh. their place tomorrow in the... the upper finals and, I mean, you have to say they look really good for it. But it's a three versus three. Control have Spike in their possession and starting to make their way back over to A site after making Neon Blade think that they're they're not actually a progression onto A, but jokes on them because they are. And they've managed to spread Neon Blade out just a little bit, which is something that has not often happened. Normally Neon Blade's reads have been so, so good and no actual utility to stop this left. push right here. They do have that breach for the retake. Let's see what they do here. They have to go onto this A-site. Smokes are going to go down. The bomb is going to be planted. But the question is, Veggie. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Okay. Veggie, it's all gone awry! That is a masterclass from Neon Blade. You would never have thought it. There's not enough time for the plant now. They need to win through kills, and Neon Blade are never going to give them that chance. It's Spike gets planted but it's too late and Neon Blade now on to 11. They knew they could give up the space because the ult would cover sight. Oh, it's played to perfection, Snow. And that's... And that's so... That's, that's one of the reasons why Brim is so prevalent on Fracture. It's that ultimate, both on attack and on defence as we saw right there. Such a good play to stall out and control left it with just too little time. They had to commit to the bomb plant. And now 11 to 5. This is reminding me of another map that we played in this very series. But control don't want it to be like that. No, they need to turn the tides and start finding the answers to the quiz that's been asked from them. And can they do it? They're going to need some big performances coming in from some of their key players. And we know they're capable of it. We know what this team can do, having been so impressive in other tournaments and previous showings. But right now, just meeting their match on this Neon Blade side. And Control needs to find a way to claw themselves back into this game or... It's going to be a very somber control, alt, delete, and closing of that Valorant program tonight if they can't find their way back in this. 
The Neon Blade. Once again. God. So content to just retake. Yeah. yeah. Sight being allowed here. The spam coming in and trying to deter the diffuser, but it's not going to. But Cake does get stunned up, but is able to retreat and Here. almost get away with her life. Just tucks in the cubby and the ping comes out to reveal the position. And how is Cake still. No, 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 okay, never mind. <laughs> it finally falls. Katana. Like a team name, Blade itself looking to be sharp, but it does not matter. The defenders instantly just, they just take the bomb again. They just, so, there's so much trust and confidence in their team members that as soon as someone gets the bomb, they just trust that everybody's going to protect them. And it's such a delight to see. And Control now, match point once again for Neon Blade. Control are in the back seat. Neon Blade is pretty much dictating the pace of most of these rounds. And I feel like Control needs to show... A little bit more aggression. They know that they're getting sight for free. So take more space. They're giving you that space. Take a little bit more. Yeah, maybe just sprint onto site. And then, I mean, we've seen it before when they started to try and take into spawn. But it was just unfortunate that no one was there. And then it really played out in their disadvantage. But look at this coming in from Neon Blade. They are playing the aggressors this time. Giving up sight once again. And starting to push into spawn this time, it could find value, but there's no one there. As Neon Blade are on the dish, ready to take names and their own thunder at the ready for when the teammates need it. The peak, it's a double swing, make it a triple swing. It's enough to all oh, hit everybody. That rolling thunder will be rolling them straight out of this game. As all of a sudden, just like that, Neon Blade are going to make it to your winner's Final. Defenders win. It fully deserved, you have to say. You cannot... You just can't say that they don't deserve to be in that position. Two very dominant displays coming in from Neon Blade. It looked at that sort of end of the first half there that Control were bringing it back and going to make this sort of attack inside from them a lot more worth it. But Neon Blade just said, nah, that's... We're we're done. We've we've played all that we want today, and we, we've we've got things to do tonight. Let's let's just get this over with. And I believed in the comeback. I thought maybe yeah. there was that prospect for that map three, but Neon Blade. I mean, whatever weakness they had on their defense before to give them the stats they had has been shored up completely because that defensive half was a massacre. Yeah, the, the retakes have definitely clearly been something I've worked on. We, we knew that coming in from Pines, right? It's... Reggie, if you just if you just play attack on defense, you're always going to be fine if your attacks are cracked. That's all Neon Blade did. They just gave up sight, then played attack on defense. Yeah, like they were like, we, we don't know how to defend. Let's, let's just give them it and then pretend we're the attackers. Yeah, great strat. It works 10 out of 10 times. But, <laughs> I feel like we've done it with most of a series. We spoke a little bit about MVP. Let's speak about this uh, this second game. I feel like I know who your picks are going to be towards, but Veggie, talk me through your decision for who was your most valuable player within this game. Most valuable player. Hmm. So, I mean, uh, you have to look at Mizzy with that combat score of 344. And that's when someone has a combat score like that, you're talking duelist and like a high fragging duelist. But no, yeah. this was on a sentinel. This was on Cypher, the, the least gun slinging operator possible but yeah bringing it out three first bloods 22 kills six assists it, it's fully down to it but it, it is really I, I don't think i can give you one player for this neon blade team i think as a whole unit they were just unstoppable to be honest and i think to be honest if we're going to give props to anyone it's going to be whoever's calling the strats whoever's coaching this team <laughs> because clearly they've set a system in place that works so well for them and we'll have to see if tomorrow a team can look to abuse this because they are they are super willing to give up that site and play retake but it has worked so well for them and they have just really showcased how dominant a team they can be yeah but it's down to tomorrow now because that's all for day one and i'm excited to see day two so make sure you don't you don't not tune in. Make sure you tune in, is what I'm trying to say tomorrow. <laughs> Veggie. <laughs> Veggie's.
make sure that you tune in tomorrow as well because these questions can be asked, but they won't be answered until tomorrow. So make sure that you're here for Birds of Prey number six tomorrow, all day. When it's go time, it ain't no time for that hesitating. I'm about this king to be as and I push a line of this other Satan. I got my hands raised when I praise a God of Israel. He called me a son when the world called me a criminal. And I hear all them subliminals, but they ain't getting no response. My heart's for unity, cause I know that's what my father wants. I got that God for in send me, giving that boy not a chance. I go and preach the gospel where they still letting that line I rock with a remnant regime and my whole team on black ops. When they come to my pops, I'm tunnel vision, cyclops. One day this ride stops and everything that we've ever done and every word that we've ever spoke, it's gonna be known before the sun. We, we only got one life, one savior, one Christ, the one that hung up on the cross with one chance to get it right. We, we only get one life, one savior, one Christ, the one that gave us life for all. So now's your chance to get it right. You are, if you're living in the movement, you wanna praise God. This is how we do it.